X and my name is not just a symbol or a target sign. A spell that attracts all who spit facts on line all the time. Once who drag my name every single day Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? They keep saying You don't have what it takes to carve out your own name Underneath the shadows of gods And I keep waiting for the day never really comes the answer to my name is not just a symbol or a target sign a spell that attracts all who speak facts online all the time the answer to my name is not just a symbol or a target sign a voice that compels all to rebel from all right shackled mind why do they just stand there again from when they fall from the battles I have overcome. We feel it, feel the cope and the seething tone that they make while I stand up, man among gods. And I keep thinking with my mill, shooting ropes in my cold that faces towards the sun. They hate, but I'm sitting comfy with their mom. The X in my name is not just a symbol or a target sign. The spell that attracts all who speak facts online all the time. The X in my name is not just a symbol or a target sign. A voice that compels all to rebel from all that shackled mind. The answer to my name is not just a symbol or a target sign. The spell that attracts all who spit facts online all the time. The answer to my name is not just a symbol or a target sign. A voice that compels all to rebel from or a shadow mind. Until we meet your mom, it's gonna be a tick and nothing hit from my name. You'll see now, watch me not now, watch me now. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello, hello. It is so good to see you all again. Hi there. Larry Banks 78 good to see us. Circuit Dog, welcome back. Roxagon, what's up? Cleaver120, good to see you. Summerstar, hi there. Mid Lantern, hello, welcome. War Penguin, good to see ya. Perry Icefire, good to see you in chat as usual. Welcome. Transgender Gal, what's up? Wingo, good to see ya. Straw Hat Monty 97, what's going on? Fem Demon, hope you're doing well over in YouTube chat. Astronaut Lad, 172, how are you? Lord Rose 97, good to see you as well. Lucky Otter, good to see ya. <clears throat> Tommy Dude, what's up? Good to see ya. Emily Chertos over in YouTube chat, how are you? Galaxy Bomb, I hope you're doing well. Coin Dog, good to see you as well over in YouTube chat. All Existence Itself, hope you're doing well. Sorry to hear your YouTube is shitting itself. The last one, the last and I are not, I think is that how it's pronounced. Um, welcome, welcome. Legion, good to see ya. Absol7701, hello, welcome. The Lancer, good to see ya. Welcome, Decayed Slab, what's up? Grazza Triton, good to see you in chat. Bazooka Horse, hello. Dynamis, welcome. Enceladus, welcome. Good to see you all, welcome. Hopefully you are all having a fantastic day. I hope you guys are. 
How's your days going? What's up, Heavy Gretel? Good to see ya. Did I say hi to you already, TSW Shadow Wolf? I, I don't know if I did, but just in case. I hope you're having a good one. What's up, Tipster? Good to see you, buddy. <clears throat> did I say hi to you as well, Fem Demon? I think I did. Got it. Good, I love your streams. Aw, thank you. I'm glad to hear you're doing well. Did you see Chugga responded? I did! Hold on, that's... I knew there was something I forgot to put on my list. I feel... Is this another Zan W? You guys remember that my take was besides how weird the feet stuff is, this just feels like Chugga Conroy is being led on. This doesn't feel predatory. And I, I got like a fair amount of shit for that. Not like a crazy amount. There was no cancellation or anything, but I had some pushback in chat for sure. Um, I feel a little, I feel a little uh, exonerated for all that, because the consensus seems to be that Chugga Conroy didn't do anything wrong, and Lady Emily just kind of lied. That's uh, yeah. Hmm. Hey, Minimum Bolts. Good to see ya. Good eye, Zandaho. When was the Warhammer segment lined up? Uh, I don't know, like, when in the stream it'll be happening, but it's gonna be, like, at a time where it'll be a fun, chill, chill little vibe. Xander Hall, will we be getting a From Watch party tonight? No From Watch party tonight, but assuming nobody who uh, I want to have there is otherwise engaged, hopefully tomorrow. I think we can probably do it tomorrow. I don't know what Bout's schedule is looking like. Um, but if Heavy Gretel is down, and I think maybe a pillow will be, I'll hit up a pillow, um, then I think tomorrow will be good. I'll ask tonight. Obviously, Heavy Gretel, I think, is here and can let us know if she's good for it tomorrow. But uh, I'll message a pillow tonight, and I'll message um, Balk tonight. Collins on Friday? Yeah, probably. Gretel's a friend of mine. She's in chat right now, Heavy Gretel, with the green check mark. Xander Hall, did you see that Israel is not going to attack Iran and Biden and EU leaders talked him down from retaliating? Uh, Netanyahu? I mean, probably smart. Like, I don't think Biden wants there to be, frankly, any conflict happening that looks like it reflects poorly on him right now. The Biden campaign simply can't afford it. I'll take what you said at the grain of salt because it's just your word, but um, assuming that's true... Uh, that doesn't surprise me. Biden probably does not want American troops on the ground, a war starting, or any conflict going on that reflects badly on him. He just can't afford it. Be like, Biden's doing a great job, but his approval rating does not reflect how great of a job he is doing. Sounds good, Heavy Gretel. Oh yeah, so for tonight, Nyetan is indeed Yahoo! So, um, yeah, Yahoo! I'm gonna pronounce it like that every time. Uh, anyway, uh, I was actually gonna say, instead of from tonight, I was thinking that after segments, if you guys are all good little guys, gals, and end pals, then maybe, maybe I continue my, uh, my playthrough of Fallout New Vegas. Now, here's the thing. My old playthrough, the one where I got to Novak, I think it was, the place of the dinosaur, and then we stopped, that playthrough is unfortunately gone. That save got lost whenever I uninstalled the game to make space. But I reinstalled it, and I spent the last few days just, like, running around a little bit of the map, not really doing much, just installing graphics mods, testing them, entering and exiting buildings until the game crashes, and then... Uh, like, getting, like, un uninstalling mods, fucking with load order, making a new save to try and test if that fixes it, and if it does, I know things are working fine, it's just a bugged save from it being modded, uh, midway through a save. Um, I basically have spent the last, like, three or four days modding the fuck out of the game to get the game looking, not next-gen or anything, but looking like a well-made, graphically, 2010 game, you know? Like, for all the great things New Vegas has going for it, fundamentally, it's general, um, like, it's performance is god-awful. 
just on a base level. Like, if you just boot up New Vegas, it'll crash all the time. There are a lot of reasons for that. Um, a lot of it has to do with, like, a lot of the data is compressed, and so your stuff has to, like, spend resources decompressing that data for, like, textures and audio and stuff like that, which can lead to the RAM going up, and because it's a 32-bit program, it can only max out at a little under 4 gigabytes of RAM, and that's with a modded patch, and so the more data you have being like the more ram the game uses up until four gigabytes the closer you get to a crash and at four it just straight crashes out of out of memory and you cannot increase it um a mod lets you get up to four but by default it's two and uh i also had to use a heap replacer i had to use something that obviously decompresses and re-archives all those files um, in such a way, and decompresses them is another thing I had to do, just to make it so less resources are used. Obviously, NVSC, um, AI Stewie's tweaks. Like I, I can bring up my mod list right now if you guys are interested in it. But I, I've put together quite the fucking mod list for Fallout New Vegas, and I haven't really gotten far in the game. Certainly not. Like I, ha I think I've gotten to the strip maybe, like when I played it before. I, I have a memory of that, but that might have just been a YouTube video. I, I genuinely, my memory of playing it, even though it was on stream and I remember liking it, outside of the opening in the office was, is like kind of a blur. So I've just kind of ran around doing like a couple quests and just seeing if things crash. And I, I'm still pretty blind on the game. Like I don't know much about it other than I know Mr. House, Yes Man, Benny... Um, Caesar, the NCR, I, I, I know like the basics because of cultural osmosis, but I really wanted to get into the game again once I watched the show. And so, if you guys would like to, I would be down to start a fresh playthrough of New Vegas that we, we follow through to the end. I will not delete my, my save with my mods and my, uh, install and everything, trust me. Um, and we are going to play through Vegas, uh, New Vegas, because that was the last game we were playing through. I want to finish it. So, would you guys be down for that today, after segments? Hypers, if you would be down. Yep, rip Matthew Perry. He voiced Benny. He, I think he died of COVID, right? Did, did Matthew Perry die of COVID? Was that what got him? Heart attack. Health and addiction. Bro is addicted to chems? Dog, it's always the hot tubs, man. It's always the hot tubs, saunas, and hot showers that get these celebrities, bro. It's always there. Like... I think what probably does that is hot water. Delancer probably knows. Um, hot water, steam, like just heat in general, makes like your blood pressure drop. And then if you mix low blood pressure from heat and humidity, and like obviously humidity makes it harder to breathe just in general, and then you mix that with drugs, I think that just fucking kills you. And some, if you're just old enough, I think that can just kill you. Like... I think normal people even can just die in a sauna because of low blood pressure, like their blood pressure dropping. It's why like um, it increases BP. Really? Okay, I have it reversed. My bad. I thought it was lowering blood pressure. Well, regardless, I've been, I've been in the shower before where it's like, whew, fucking hell. I need to turn. I need. I I take hot fucking showers, and sometimes I'll like stay under the hot water for too long. And it'll just be like, whoa, I gotta get out of there for a minute. I can feel my heart rate getting too high, you know? Which makes sense. Like, heart rate high, high blood pressure. Your heart rate drops, your blood pressure gets lower. I should have been able to... Should have just intuited that, Delancer. Sorry. You probably cringed at me saying that quite, quite a lot. And when you're high, it's easy to drown in a hot tub. He very well might have just been drunk and, and, and like, drowned. But, yeah, heart attack from, like, higher blood pressure could have led to it. Like, there's a myriad of things. But I feel like it had to have been something to do with the heat. 
because so many celebrities have died in saunas, hot tubs, and um, hot showers and hot baths. Like it's 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 usually like hot water. Like they're they're leisurely, but they don't know that they have to limit themselves. You know, human body can only take so much. It's easy to it's actually scary easy to kill yourself on accident. You know. I usually have cold showers. They're better for you. What I always do is I start my showers hot because I, I want, like, really hot water because I, I consider the hot water partially disinfecting myself. Like, the soap and hot water idea for washing your hands should apply to your whole body, right? That's my thought process. So I use the hottest water my skin can bear um, and, and lather my ass up in soap, and then I, I, I clean myself up and then I, I do the same for my hair, but because hot water is bad for your skin and hair, I then switch it to, like, as cold of water as I can bear <laughs> without, like, being in legitimate discomfort and pain where I can't force myself to stay under it. And then I rinse myself. So, like, I will run you through my way of doing this. So maybe you guys are, like, beauticians or something and tell me I'm doing something wrong, but I feel like I'm doing things right here. I get in the shower, immediately hot water, get myself nice and wet, and I start off by body wash, just like wash my body, rinse, and then I go and I use shampoo with like the scalding hot water once again, um, and, and I rinse that out with the scalding hot water. Then I switch it over to the cold water, and I use a body moisturizing wash, and then I follow that up with conditioner that I like, you know, lather my hair up with real fucking, I mean, you could probably tell that I, I condition my hair up real good. And then I rinse it all out with as cold of water as I can bear. So like my last sort of like once over, like to get the last bit of soap off is cold water. So I don't step out of the shower like hot and sweaty. I feel like you have to be sweating in the shower without realizing it when it's hot water. But if you switch it to cold water, whatever sweat you're having that you're not gonna notice that immediately makes you not clean when you step out of the shower, I feel like that's not gonna be a thing if you take like the last three or five minutes of the shower cold. Plus cold showers are just good for you. Like there, there are health benefits to, to cold water on your muscles and stuff. Um, but yeah. Uh, I hate shampoo. Real stuff is better, is way better. Um, I use, I use shampoo once every three days and conditioner every day is the way I do it. Like, I know that, like, shampoo is bad for your hair, like, it's health, but I know that it also has benefits for, like, breaking up oil and, and stuff like that. Like, you want to use it every once in a while or your hair is not going to be, like, very nice to touch. I feel eventually the oils are going to build up because conditioner just doesn't deal with the oils. Uh, so I, every like two, every third day, it's so like two days in between and then the third day, I'll start with shampoo just to get the oils and stuff broken up and then I'll replenish with conditioner and, and just condition for the next two days to let my hair be soft and healthy, and then I'll blast it with the shampoo again, which always dries it out. Like, the third day of just sh conditioning, my hair is so soft, but then you get, like, a day like today where I, I uh, shampoo, and my hair is, you know, it's soft and voluminous, but it's got, like, sort of a gritty texture to it from the shampoo drying it out. Yeah. Xander Hall, I'm battling a few of my Beyblades and I go to take one out of the out of the pocket and one that's still spinning. Dranbuster catches onto the extreme line and slams into my hand with all its power. Now my hand's bleeding. Oh fuck, that sounds like it hurts. I got hit in the knuckles a few times by Beyblades Bay playing with those as a kid. Oh fucking hell. You know what I really loved? around the same time that Beyblades were a thing when I was younger. These were like kind of just getting to be a legit thing that everybody was talking about and playing. The show was getting to be pretty popular. Bakugan. Nobody I knew gave a fuck about the cards except for their like practical ability to make the Bakugan balls like unfurl. Dude, Bakugan balls might have been the coolest toy ever invented. Bakugan is actually fucking cool. Like, 
collecting those little balls and they all have like their own different colors and patterns and then they unravel into a new interesting shape that you can't even predict just by looking at it like people who had a big bakugan collection they just pull out like a handful of these marble looking things roll them out onto a table full of magnetic cards and they all like stop and then pop open looking like a cool dragon or something bakugan was some sick fucking shit dude Xander Hall, did you have the big one that could combine? Did you have the one that could combine? Oh my god, dude, I forgot about that Graza Triton. Dude, there were pieces that could combine. My friend had one of these. I never had any Bakugan myself, but I, I never really asked for them because I had a friend who just like lent them to me because he had so many that there were ones he had so many duplicates of. He would just be like, yeah, I can have these for like a week. Just take them to school. Make sure you don't break them or lose them and then get them back to me. He was a bit older than I was. Like I was maybe 10 and I think he was like 12 or 13. And so he had like an allowance and cool stuff and a computer. He had a laptop. And so he would take the laptop across the neighborhood to where I was, uh, where I lived, and we would sit on the front, like, stairs of the apartment complex area and just watch YouTube videos on, like, the restaurant across the street's Wi-Fi on the, on the steps. God, good times. Um, but he introduced me to that stuff, and he had one of those sets that could combine. There were Bakugan that, like, the individual ball pieces that popped open could combine into a super Bakugan. And I think they got even bigger than that. I think they made, like, big versions, too. Like, they made ones that were, like, this big, that unrolled, and then they pop out into something, like, pretty large. I think those were meant to be desk ornaments, primarily. Um, I think he had something like that. I remember something like that existing. Maybe I'm making that up, but... I think that's real. Yo, Pepper T 21 hell yeah! Thank you for the $5... Five didgeridoos, I appreciate that. Thank you. Said, fun fact, if you're a female courier with the Black Widow perk, you can have sex with Benny and kill him in his sleep. That's cool. That's actually really fucking cool, Pepper T21. Yeah, Fallout New Vegas is like a real fucking RPG. Like, from what I've heard, the game just lets you ruin your playthrough by making really stupid decisions that just effectively make everything hell. Um... Like, the the game's psychotically an RPG. It's just a world that you can take on non-linearly at any path you choose if you've got the stones for it. So that's that's what I'm excited to, to like learn the the depths of playing New Vegas myself and getting and beating it. God, I can't wait. Are you supposed to do the DLC? I know there's like a bunch of DLCs for it. There's one called Lonesome Road. One called. Um, Dead Money, one called, it's not called Blue Moon, it's called something like that, though. Fuck. There's two more DLCs, there, there's two, there's four DLCs total, I think. What order do you do? Old World Blues, thank you. Um, Old World Blues. And then there's, like, a, a fourth one I don't remember the name of at all, but I know it's the one that adds, like, a whole new map, and you meet, like, Joshua Graham in it and stuff, because I, I know he's, like, a big meme character everyone knows about. Um, I'm excited to play the game and experience it myself. First, you do Dead Money. Second, Honest Hearts. Third, Old World Blues. And fourth, Honest Hearts. So I'm going to guess you meant Lonesome Road second, maybe? You're telling me they made a game version of the Fallout TV show? Crazy. Yeah, it's a game tie-in. They made it 10 years ago. The show's just been really delayed. It's been in development hell for over... Well, not... I said 10 years ago like it's 2020. Uh, 14 years ago. Oh, Lonesome Road's fourth. Okay. Hey, listen, I won't give you shit for a brain fart. It happens to the best of us. Such as myself. I am the best of us. Pepper T21, thank you so much for the extra five dollar dues. I really appreciate that. Very kind of you. Said someone mentioned Beyblade, so I feel compelled to inform you this is canon Beyblade Beyblade lore. I think you're getting ahead of yourself. Donde? What is this? Yeah, your first plan should be getting by us! 
Though you call yourselves bladers, you don't know the real truth about bay blading. There is a tremendous power hidden within bays. Since ancient times, the existence of bays can be found in moments throughout True. history. The power of bay blades have been used to change the course of rivers. That goes crazy. That's a babe. That that is fucking Moses parting the Red Sea with a bay blade. Holy shit. And oceans. They have been used to defeat many armies. <laughs> that goes crazy. Or create huge empires. Huh? I God. Yeah, I mean, if you spun, like, I don't know, like a car-sized Beyblade, could you imagine how much, like, damage that would do? Could you imagine if the U.S. military developed, like, a giant skyscraper-sized facility that just launches car-sized Beyblades? Like, at a very long surface-to-air, uh, or, or not surface-to-air, surface-to-surface kind of, like, range. Like, it would just, like, rip across the landscape, just annihilating everything in its path, destroying... Like, imagine the Ukrainians had the, those, like, and they could just launch them towards Russian positions. It would just rip new trenches into the ground and just destroy everything in its path, you know? You mean this? What is this? The Great Panjandrum was a covert project. So covert, in fact, that until recently- Did I just develop- Did I just invent something that, like, military scientists for the Nazis or something like that took, like, months of, of like, pondering over papers to develop? Did I just come up with that as, like, a high shit post? Very few people knew of its existence. One of those people is Brian Ford, science writer and expert on the crazy weapons of World War II. So, Brian, this sounds absolutely nuts, but the British really took it seriously? It was designed and tested under conditions of amazing secrecy. They put it on a train, and they took it down to a place called Westwood Ho. Now, Westwood Ho is a seaside resort, and they tested it on the open beach. So thousands of people saw all of these supposedly top secret tests. The Nazi secret testing gets underway in September 1943. Yeah, that's the Panjandrum actually makes it to the beach. Kinda similar. Before violently <coughs> lurching off course. Oh my god, it goes into the crowd. The, cameraman. the Panjandrum team almost killing the army cameraman. That's the thing, though. The cameraman never dies. <clears throat> so, like, if I ever have to go into a war zone, I'm going to be getting, like, a GoPro and live streaming that shit because, famously, the cameraman never dies. And so uh, I will basically have plot armor. That we know of? Maybe that's true. Wait, that makes sense. If the cameraman died, we'd never see the movie. So in every movie where the cameraman almost dies, of course they didn't die because that's the survivorship bias. Like the ones who didn't make it out by the, the skin of their teeth, we never got to see their footage. Yeah, it's, it's that one image of the uh, plane diagrams with all the red holes in them. Okay. Thank you, Pepper T21. I appreciate the $5. Let me update the dono goal again. And before we get into segments for the day, which we're about to do because I want to entertain your asses off, chat, um, I want to make a request of you guys. Please! Could you please hit the like button? I would really appreciate it. It helps a lot. Uh, every... <laughs> Every single time you hit that thumbs up button, it uh, pushes my content, my channel, my streams, my VODs, whatever you're watching, in the algorithm, out to more people, and uh, it really does help a lot. It's like uh, twisting YouTube's arm and forcing them to actually like, help my content and help my channel. 
Um, so yeah, consider doing that. And of course, if you got the money for it and you don't need it for anything else, then uh, maybe consider donating, subscribing, or gifting a sub on my website, or financially supporting me through YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, or Patreon. All links down below in the description. Or even buying merch, which is also linked down below in the description. Our merch is pretty cool. One of the shirts is, I was radicalized by Minecraft. I'm thinking of bringing out a new piece of merch. <clears throat> That's like... I, I need to add a little more, like, Xanderhal flair to it, but I want to make a Nothing Ever Happens branded shirt. No one owns that slogan, I'm certain, so we should be good for that, but I want to make a Nothing Ever Happens shirt, or, like, Team Nothing Ever Happens. I think that would be some good merch, but for now, you can get, like, a I Was Radicalized by Minecraft shirt, or a, or an, a Xanderhal booba shirt, or a Xanderhal mug, or a Xanderhal hat. You go check out the the, uh, the 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 comments down below. It's or not comments, the links down below. I really do appreciate it. You need to add a MILF appreciation shirt. Yeah, that would be pretty in brand for me. That's true. Yeah. I got a short meme for you and chat. What's this one? Piece thirty four. Hey Jim. Hey Jimmy. Oh, I'm Carl Weezer. Jimmy, do you want to see Ziggy Azalea's nudes? That is Erica Nagai. Oh, yeah, right, sorry. What are you drawing? A this ball a stretcher. Name. Used as part of cock and ball torture. Oh, yeah, a ball stretcher, huh? Yeah, Jimmy, those kind of hurt. How do they feel on you? Erotic. Carl, oh, would you like to share with Bruh. the rest of the class what you and Jimmy are talking about, Squat? Oh, yeah, okay. So, this is a ball stretcher in section two of cock and ball torture, which fastens around your scrotum and pulls away from your body, and it feels something like this. <laughs> no, Carl, there will be no cock and ball torture in my classroom, Squat. My mom watches these streams. <clears throat> My mom watches these streams, and I just like to wonder what, what, what's going through her mind when she looks at like pieces of Gen Z humor. What goes through her mind when she sees these pieces of Gen Z humor and realizes I was normal? <laughs> uh. Disappointment and concern. True. You can see the brain damage disintegrating in real time. The brain damage disintegrating? Well, yeah, true. I mean, I, I can feel myself getting smarter every time I watch that video. Every time I hear the cock and ball torture encyclopedia, the free encyclopedia, um, or Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, uh, definition, uh, copypasta, I feel I gain an IQ point. What's this? Oh, wow. <laughs> Great. No, okay, we're not we're not we're not We're not meme we're not meme video watching, okay? We're not meme we're not meme video watching today. No no no, no more. No more. No more. No more.
Oh my god, this is a, a fucking giga document, dude. Holy shit. Holy shit. We're gonna find a Donald Trump text to speech. Okay, let's see how this sounds. Okay, let's see how this sounds. Estimated 30 seconds to generate. Are you serious? Oh my god, it generates him saying it. What the fuck? Hello, Xander Hollicks. What the fuck? Hello, Xander Hollicks. Dog, I generated this by typing in a prompt on a random fucking website, dude. Hello, Xanderholics. <laughs> We're so fucked, dude. I'm so excited to be in a courtroom, like, on trial, watching a video, a 4K, like, 144 hertz uh, video of me committing a crime that I did not commit. <laughs> I'm so ready for it. I'm so ready. Oh gods, now all I can think about is the most cursed combo, Sphinx, Cowl, 1 to through 60, Needle, and yeah, the WBO will almost immediately ban it. I have no idea what those words mean. Yo, my nose is awake. It has realized I'm live. It's itching. Shadow Wolf was talking to me? Uh, okay. My bad. My bad. My bad. The fact that this shit is all originated from porn? Th is that what this was made for? That's probably true, yeah. Honestly, like, when you consider the fact that most... Most every technology in the realm of entertainment was basically... Made, popularized, and disseminated because of porn? Yeah. Yeah. If it was the best way to consume porn, it would become the best way to consume all media. Wait, Xander Hall, make Trump say Xander Hall is the best streamer, possibly the greatest streamer. Many people are saying this. Okay, I could do that. Let me open up. <clears throat> I can have Obama say it. I can have Andrew Tate say it. All right, it's gonna take 30 seconds to generate. Do not leave or refresh. I didn't leave. Ugh. Added to free user queue, 30 seconds. AI is working. Do not leave or refresh. Okay. Here's our video. Xander Hell is the best streamer, possibly even the greatest streamer. Many people are saying this. <gasps> Channel trailer material. Xander Hell is the best streamer, possibly even the greatest streamer. Many people are saying this. <laughs> Bring out the scroll. The scrolls ordained it. God, what is up with my, my camera? Like, I have to go from... More gain to less gain to more gain constantly. Make up your mind, camera. I, it's because there's sunlight. The sun's changing in the sky. There's like an eclipse or something. Okay. Okay. All right. Text to speech. We'll just do it with the normal text to speech software. That seems to be the uh, 
Seems to be the best way to do this, because ain't no way I'm reading all of this with my own goddamn lips and throat. I will not be able to talk for the rest of the day if I do that. Who do we want to read to us? Let's have Tony I read to us. I can't wait to see where life takes me in the years to come. Okay, Every yeah, day we'll, go with, we'll go with Tony. Uh, for personal use? For com No, we're, we're, we're doing personal use. Drag and drop your files or type and paste here. Okay, yeah. We're 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 pasting here. Okay. Oh. Well, that's interesting. Uh Oh. Why does why are websites doing this? Why is this a thing that sites can do, blocking your ability to copy text? When did they def when did this become a thing? Because I'm badly badly trying to copy the text of this document to put it in text to speech, but Google Google Docs straight up blocks you from copying text. No steal. Oh my god. That's actually fucking insane. Oh, God, dude. There's no way. We actually straight up have to... I have to read it aloud. It's not... It's uncopyable. The only version of it in which you can highlight the text is magically impossible to copy because it's a Google... Google blocks it. Users on Google can manually disable copy-pasting. I assume on their end, not mine, because I've disabled nothing. Options to download, print, and copy have been disabled on this file. No! No, it's so much! It will be an hour of me reading! Oh, fuck me, dude. Oh, fuck Chugga Conroy for this. Actually, fuck Chugga Conroy for this. Why enable that feature? What is the purpose? What is the goal? I'm now tempted to just say, nope, Chugga Conroy did it. Upload that video and just go on with my day. Farm the viewership. Fuck Chugga Conroy. Fuck you for making your, 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 your response like this. Uh, Yozan, you can get an extension that reads the page. Is that a thing? Fuck, I don't know if I want to download a whole extension for that. Wait for people, wait for Chugga specifically. He did it to stop people from harassing Lady em Emily, etc. That makes no sense, not being able to copy the text, because he posted screen... The way he posted it, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, you could just copy the images, but you wouldn't... The way that he has done it is almost specifically so that you can't copy it to paste it somewhere else. That makes no sense, Dynamis. Ugh. Well, fuck me. I've got to cover this the old-fashioned way. Better take a sip of water. All right. You all know what to do when I say action, right? Three. Two. One. Action. All right, everybody. So we're actually going to be revisiting a story that I last covered, gosh, maybe like three months ago, four months ago now. It's It's been a while at this point. Um, you may be familiar with a very large YouTuber who's beloved by many. Uh, one of those OG been around forever YouTubers named Shugga Conroy. He got in quite a bit of trouble a few months back because he was outed or allegedly outed by multiple women with accusations of being a creepo. And they all put out their own, well, not all of them, but there was like a constant reference to more women with allegations that just were never made public from the parties that did make this public. But the stories that were made public were substantiated with what seemed like, to me at the time, and I got some pushback from my fans for suggesting this, the, the evidence that I saw suggested less so that Chugga Conroy was some kind of predator or weirdo, and more so like Chugga Conroy was being actively led on, and the reason why 
the parties upset at Chugga Conroy were upset was not because they had had their boundaries crossed over or were creeped out or felt like they needed to call out a potential future predator to protect others, but instead were upset that he did not, like, handle the being led on how they would have preferred for him to. I, I, I genuinely... I didn't really detect any predatory behavior there. And I said as much to a small amount of pushback in my chat. Most people, upon seeing what I was seeing, agreed. And so I have to admit, I'm feeling a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit justified here. A little bit exonerated, a little, or whatever the word for it is. Um, a little bit satisfied with the fact that I've been seemingly proven right. Uh, Chugga Conroy just yesterday put out a big document in response to the allegations just a few months later after they came out, and uh, the consensus has been that Chugga Conroy was innocent and has cleared his name. I have not seen or read any of this whatsoever yet, though. I've only heard about it from people who have read it, from my friends and stuff, but I've not seen it myself, so I do want to give it a good read. I tried to copy and paste this text into a text-to-speech reader because it's going to be so much and I'm going to have problems with it eventually. Um, but no dice. He said it so you cannot copy the text and paste it elsewhere. Uh, nightmare, 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 nightmare. Let's start. Hey, everybody. It has been a long time since I last shared anything with you, but I now feel ready to give an update on how I've been doing and clear up speculation on some incidents that have been brought up since my last message. Whenever things blow up online, people make a lot of incorrect assumptions based on not knowing the full story, and often assume the worst possible context. I would like to start by clearing up these misconceptions. I haven't wanted to reveal information about others, but I think at this point it's best that everything is out in the open. I have removed irrelevant personal information as I only want to say, want to say as much as I need to in order to set the record straight. Please do not bother anybody I name here. I do not want others to experience what I went through. I have already asked that people not harass my accusers, and it is disappointing to see this ignored or not respected. I truly don't want anybody to be attacked over this. I'd say at this point, that's quite believable. I'd say in his position, he probably, like, on both ends, just wants this to be over and not, like, a thing that's going on anymore. One of the rough, like, roughest things about being an internet creator who has, like, let's say... Chugga Conroy did legitimately do something wrong here, but it wasn't like a malicious, bad character defining thing. It was more of just an honest mistake um, that wouldn't happen again and is not character defining. Um, it feels as though when you're a content creator, the worst part of that kind of thing when you do something like that is that long after all associated and aggrieved parties have gotten over it and forgotten about it, random people online who are just spectators remember hold on to it and then they keep bringing it up and having discourse about it and so nothing is ever allowed to really be in your past when you're an online creator if the public internet space knows about it it they'll talk about it like it happened yesterday you know like it's just kind of the way the internet works Many people will actually act as though you committed a bad thing the day they learned that it happened. The day they learned that people have accused you of doing that bad thing. The internet's a very funny place. Frankly, the only thing you can do is just push forward. And so that's what I suggested whenever I covered this initially. Like, you should just keep on making content, keep pushing forward, ignore this as best you can. But if people aren't letting, like, if even people who support him aren't letting this just fall to the wayside and become part of the past, then I can see how that would frustrate him because he just doesn't want to think about it anymore. Regarding Maisie, I believe this was the first accuser. Or maybe I think Maisie might actually be um, Chugga Conroy's partner? I'm not sure. Maisie and I dated for 10 years and we were engaged to be married. It fell apart about three years ago now. In every video you've seen us together in, I was her boyfriend and our friends all knew about it. You're probably wondering how this stayed a secret for so long. We both wanted our private lives to be hidden at the beginning. After the engagement, I wanted, I wanted to share it, but Maisie stayed firm that it remained private. 
She was never cleared, or sorry, she was never cleared to me as to why, but I respected her wishes until it was necessary to clear this up. We loved each other, and I thought the world of her, but we had a difficult breakup. Losing her was the hardest thing I'd, have, I'd ever gone through, and I regret how emotional I got ab about it and the way I handled it. That is what happened between us. We would both like to never hear about one another again, and I sympathize with her getting bombarded about my situation after a breakup. The feelings that she expressed go both ways, and I don't wish to be associated with her going forward in any capacity either. As for her cameo video after the breakup, I did that because I believed we were still friends and just taking a break from each other, but once she told me she didn't want them, I stopped. I have strong feelings about the way it was said, but I am asking you nicely to not run away with speculation about her because I know what that feels like, and if you felt bad for enjoying our old videos, don't. I still look back on them fondly and personally assure you that we were happy and having fun in them. The time for that is just over now. So it seems like the Maisie thing was just like people were chasing after... Stop saying Maisie. Is it Maysay? Oh, it's Maysay. I'm sorry. How the... Oh, I'm sorry. M-A-S-A-E. I've never seen that name before in the history of ever in my life, okay? I've never seen that name before. I'm sorry I mispronounced it. I haven't looked at chat the entire time I read that paragraph because I wanted to read it without pausing. I, I know how it's pronounced now, okay? What... It, I don't... Chat. Is it crazy that I've just never heard this name before, or is this a name that is extremely rare? It's pronounced Jif. Okay, whatever. Must say. I guess was Chuka Conroy's ex, who's kind of been dragged into this whole situation with questions and, you know, just pushing and stuff like that, uh, because people want to know about the drama. All right. Here's where things get juicy, I'm pretty sure. Regarding Lady Emily. In 2023... Emily contacted me through a friend who spelled out how, co how our conversations made her feel. I was shocked by it, apologized to her, and to some friends that friends I had said slash done similar things with. It was well received among the people I talked to, and I'd like to say here that I'm sorry to anyone who hasn't heard this from me. I'd hope to tell you on my own terms, this was generally the first time this behavior was met so negatively to my face. At the time, I was told this would not go public as long as I never did it again, which I have not done since. I took it to heart and sought professional help immediately. Wait, what? Hmm. Okay, well, well let's see his characterization of what happened. Because I, I, I was like, did I miss, like, what, what did he say he did that was bad? But this is the Lady Emily reaching out and telling Chugga Conroy that their past interactions had made her feel uncomfortable. I felt like shit for months and was seeing a therapist about it every week. And by the start of January, I felt I was making some great strides and improving. I took Emily's words seriously and was doing my best to take responsibility. But unfortunately, it all ended up going public anyway. It crushed me inside that despite my efforts, Emily and many others would see me as irredeemable. I wanted to spell a few things said about me by Emily. I didn't quote ask her for foot pictures constantly. I asked once if I could see a picture of her wearing the shoes I bought, her, bought for her, which I honestly didn't realize would make her uncomfortable. I've gone through her logs and could find no evidence of that claim that I was constantly asking or that, was, or that it was of her bare feet. I don't think this is a fair summary of our chats. Now, to be fair, I distinctly have scarred into my mind several of the things that this motherfucker said. This dude likes feet. This dude definitely likes feet. The thing is, I don't think he was being inappropriate about it. Like, being into feet isn't like a paraphilia or like a degenerate fetish outside of how gross I find it, you know? Like, it's no different than, like, a guy behaving the same way about tit pics or something, right? 
Like, I just don't think that his behavior was that over the line because there was no overt pushback that indicated he should pull back his flirting. I want to dispel a few things said about me by Emily. Oh yeah, I already read that. My kink doesn't define every aspect of my life. Okay, yeah, he's admitting that he has that kink. Okay, never mind. He's not, he's not lying about the foot kink. He admits it. I bought Emily's shoes because she told me hers were damaged and needed replacing, then told me it was almost her birthday half an hour later. It was a spur of the moment, and I just wanted to help out a friend. I've also made jokes about feet and bought shoes for most of my friends throughout my life, even for people like Tim. Yeah, but, I mean, I'm not saying this is, like, oh, inappropriate or whatever, but I... It's fine if it was sexual. It's fine if that was a sexual conversation. You're, a, It is legal for a man to have a sexual flirtatious conversation with a woman. As long as it is consensual. That is to say, as long as you have reasonable belief, reasonable reason to believe that there's no weirdness going on and you're not, like, being flirty to a non-recipient uh, receiver. You know what I mean? So then we go on to see this sort of engagement that Chugga Conroy posts between the two of them, uh, Lady Emily and uh, Chugga Conroy. Conroy says, nice sneakers. Emily says, lol, thank you. I need new ones, TBH. My everyday pair is starting to see some damage, lol. Conroy says, seems sadly typical due to thin fabric. She says, yeah, the curse of liking shoes that aren't durable. Got them on sale, though, though so for $20, can't complain. Hope you've been doing well. Chugga says, yeah, you, or hey, you, thank you. I just finished editing a video that was nuts to make. The break here is just talking about my video, etc. We've seen those messages, I believe, back when this originally happened. Do you have any goings on other than having holes in your shoes? Not much. Got back from Vancouver last week, visited Blank, and stayed with them. That was a wonderful time. Besides that, it's just been settling back in, playing Zelda, and trying to figure out what my month is going to look like planning-wise. Conroy says, How wonderful that is. I hope you're having a fantastic Pride Month, too. You deserve so much. Emily says, Thank you. It's my birth month, so ho so too, so hopefully it's a good one. Conroy says, Oh, shoot. When's your birthday? Emily says, June 19th. Conroy says, Wow, another Civil Rights Day. God, Conroy comes off as, like, so, like, cringe progressive here, but I, I appreciate it, you know? Like, Chugga Conroy is definitely woke, but it's like, br bro's, like, trying to have that woke riz, you know what I'm saying? Like, like he's trying to riz her up by being, like, knowledgeable about progressive stuff, it feels like. I'm not saying that's what he's doing. It's just, that's kind of how I read it. And that's a little silly. I'm not, I'm not talking shit. I think, I think it's funny, okay? Chugga Conroy says, so, like, do you have a P.O. box? Emily says, not at the moment, no. Conroy says, oh, well, I was going to see if I could partake in birthday niceness. Emily says, oh, well, that's very kind of you. You can't just have my, er, you can just have my address if you want. Puts in her address. I'm sorry. Guys. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna straight up victim blame here, okay? But if a guy is texting you, and he's creeping you out, and you're uncomfortable with him, he's asking you, like, he's already asking for, like, foot stuff here. He's already trying to give her stuff and getting flirty here. If you're willing to respond to that by sending your home address, from a guy's perspective, the fact that you're willing to give him your address seriously indicates that she trusts you and likes you and is not creeped out by you. Yeah, IDK, why should give him her address? It's fucking weird. No, 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 it's not weird. Assuming both parties are just having a normal interaction and nobody is creeped out by the other party there's nothing unusual about that this listen this is only a thing that happens on the internet between content creators twitter posters and people who want to farm clout all right people who decide that a even remotely sexual interaction they had with somebody with a platform was non-consensual in hindsight that 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 is been a surprisingly common amount of uh, allegations as of late. I feel like it really popped off with the Slazo allegations. 
Who remembers that when like Slazo, Slazo was like 17 or something too when this happened and the allegations were towards something that happened when he was like, um, or not, was it Slazo? Yeah, it was Slazo, right? Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, that's bananas. Yeah, it was fucking wild. Slazo was like 17 when all that happened and the allegations were about something he had supposedly done when he was 15 and then it all eventually came out after his career was basically nuked already though. That a bunch of YouTubers, like, I think it was I'm Alex, Kingani, um, Wild Spartans, like, those sort of clouded up 2016 era, like, leafy clone YouTubers, um, some of them are still around today, they all goaded Slazo's high school ex-girlfriend into making false allegations about him from when they dated in high school, and I don't even think he was doing YouTube yet. And then it took him, because, you know, he's a 17-year-old guy, he doesn't expect these, like, career-destroying allegations to just be manufactured by other YouTubers with the, co like, with the collusion of someone he knew in high school um, to, like, end his career. Um, so he ends up responding, and it's, like, gone down in history as the best response to allegations like that ever, because he just definitively disproved the lies um, with evidence. And so that was kind of the big moment where a lot of people kind of realized, I think even on the left, like, oh, shit. Fuck, I mean, sometimes women will just lie about rape or sexual assault to try to ruin usually a guy's life. Um... You know, it's it's not like women do this because they're women and this is a woman thing. It's more of a, our society has certain biases that bad people will take advantage of to fuck over those that they're petty enough against. It, I mean, you've you've been in a relationship before, right? Like, do you really think you've, you've never, or you've seen people in relationships, you really think you've never met somebody petty enough to do that kind of thing? It happens. And so I'm completely open to it happening here, especially on the internet. It is an actual, real concern when it comes to the internet. Not really real life. Not We're not talking like college campuses, com small communities and stuff like that in real life. We're talking about the internet, where there is clout to be involved. Where instead of going to the police or having any like court admissible evidence necessary, you can say a thing happened. And people, because of an ideology, will agree with you, will believe you, support you, and you are guaranteed to get attention on the internet, which is, attention is money online. So, there's a lot of perverse incentives, and the ease to doing these things is so there that it's impossible not to be worried about it. Okay. Oh, well. Didn't expect that. So we're on a dress basis. Haha. -ha. Literally, Chugga Conroy interprets that as like, we're on a dress basis. Well, well, I trust you. You're a friend. Thanks. I've thought of you as a fast friend, too. I'm happy to hear that. Oh, have you been playing Zelda any? Of course. I have about 80 shrines. Um, I think this is in reference to, uh, God, this would be Tears of the Kingdom, right? The most recent one? I'm pretty sure this is in reference to Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, 80 Shrines. Jesus Christ, that game's big. Oh, wow, damn. I don't know how many I have, lol. I have enough for a full stamina bar and 11 hearts. You can see it on the loading screen. Ah, according to this, I've done 54. Good work. Um, if I may be so bold, sneaker size? Bros dropping the dot dot dots. She replies, oh, generally around women's 10, give or take a little, but that's usually what works most often. He replies, nice. And she's like, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, but Tears of the Kingdom, I think it was. Uh, she would encourage my roleplay and jokes about shoes and even consent consented and participated. I checked in multiple times to make sure it was really okay and trusted her with a sensitive part of myself so that she wouldn't feel misled or like I had ulterior motives. I think that's also why I didn't particularly try to hide this. I thought I was being dumb with consenting friends, and at worst, that it was a little embarrassing and my kink was probably one reason I liked the subject. My partner read through what Emily posted and thought the tone was silly, not over the line of what's sexual or romantic for me. 
I'd trust her opinion on that more than my own. I was also evaluated by medical professionals about my shoe talk. Their view was that it was a way to feel close to a friend and an escape in times of high stress and, stra and tragedy. It would resurface whenever things got particularly, particularly bad. I, I don't... I feel like some of this gets like weirdly therapy talk. I, I don't I don't think that's necessary to add. Like I, I feel like you're 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 doing a little too much. You're giving me the hard sell when it's not necessary, which is certainly not like minus any points or anything. It's just like, man, I can imagine the state of genuine stress this dude was in, that this guy feels the need to give me the hard sell on every point. Like, here's evidence, here's my summary, and then here's like extra evidence, or not extra evidence, extra argument, like, why, like, I don't consider, it's like, okay, no, no, you had me at, like, you just proved the idea that she wasn't, like, being reciprocating with, with your advances, you know? Like, you, you're good. You're good, man. We got you. I really feel bad for him, yeah. Yeah, I do too. I was in a spot not too dissimilar to his whenever I had the sex cult allegations. People just lie about you and it's, like, a little rough to deal with. I was, like, what, 19 years old when that happened? Whew! Wasn't fun. Was not, like, quite developed and old enough and ready enough to deal with that level of stress and, like, uh, like people talking about you in that kind of way, you know? Uh, falsely. But, uh, I got through it. I won. Uh, you know, just built different. Simply built different. Turns out the solution to every problem when it comes to online internet drama is, uh, wake up, uh, start your stream, and make content. And, uh, keep uploading. Make good th titles and thumbnails and just keep them going and, uh, uh, you'll be good. You'll be good. This is a rare case where him having autism is a legitimate excuse. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if a decent amount of weird or creepy encounters that women have had with men, I'm not even saying the majority here to be clear, but a decent amount were just a guy who's socially awkward, maybe a bit autistic, not knowing how to handle social interactions very well, attempting to break the ice and failing, and it coming off completely wrong to the other party. This happens over text, this happens in real life from time to time, but usually in real life it's just go on with your day, but if it's like some YouTuber or Twitter poster with a platform who does that, now all of a sudden you have what looks like them being a creep, you know? And it can be used against them. And it seems like that's what happened to Chugga Conroy. <clears throat> so it seems like Chugga Conroy's partner had no problem with the way uh, he was talking to Emily. And I honestly said at the time that the worst thing that Chugga Conroy did was supposedly being unfaithful to his partner. Um, but by the looks of things and by the sounds of things, uh, Trigger Conroy's partner had no problem with it, and frankly, like, that's the person whose standard needs to be met, so I don't have a problem with it. Chugga goes on to say, yeah, YouTube doesn't give sick days. True, yeah, any day you take off, you feel like you're a piece of shit. Hope you don't mind all the foot jokes. I guess I just latched onto that after you told me about it. Um, I'm not sure if it's a sensitive subject for you or anything. She says, nah, it's fine, I don't mind. He replies, oh, okay, I thought about it more, and I was like, ooh, I hope she doesn't have a negative association with that or something. She replies, nah, it's all good. Also, I hope your day has been good. Two exclamation points both times. I'm sorry, if a girl is too... If a girl is too excited to flirt with me... Or too excited to flirt with me. If a girl is too excited to talk to me, I assume it's flirt. I, I, I assume it's flirting. I do. Like, if a, if a girl's, like, really nice to me, but not, like... Oh, she's nice, like, polite, like, normal nice, but, like, excitedly nice. Like, excited to see me and stuff. And that's balancing, like, are they a fan of me or just they know of my content and they're just excited to see me because I'm a, a YouTuber? Or is it just, like, for some reason this girl gets really excited whenever, like, I message her or something and is always messaging me back in all caps with exclamation points or something. Um, that's usually interpreted by me. And I imagine most guys is like, oh, she's into me. We're in. We're in. We're good. We're in. She's totally... Yep. All right. We're in. Listen, men are kind of like dogs. Um, 
in that, like, you kind of just have to be a little nice to us for, like, 30 seconds and we'll fall in love with you. Like, legitimately. Like, if a, if a girl is nice, like, legitimately nice to a guy for, like, 30 seconds, um, much like a dog, we'll fall in love. Yeah, it's, pre it's pretty much... Yeah, men are dogs. Men are dogs. That That is... We're dogs. I don't know what else to tell you. That's so fucking true in IDKY. It is. How many times have you seen a girl before? Like, I'm not, like, not, like, judging somebody by their appearance or anything like that, but you don't really, like, see her as somebody who's, like, eye-catchingly attractive. Like, not somebody whose eyes you just can't take your eyes off of type of person. Eyes. Whose, who's like, face and body you can't take your eyes off of kind of thing. But then, like, you talk to her and she's, like, so outgoing and nice to you. You're like... I think I have a crush on her. You know, have you ever had that that sort of experience? Surprisingly, like the nice guy thing works for women. If there wasn't already interest before, there will be after that. No, men are dogs, not puppies. Yeah, men can be attracted to personality, believe it or not. We're not all, we're not all, we're not complete dogs. We're not completely dogs. We're, we're, we're mostly dog, but we're not entirely dog. Okay. Um, hold on. I have, I have a great post that, that kind of like summarizes, um, however YouTube, however YouTuber needs to behave from here on out, okay? Ever since... The last drama I had due to relationship bullshit, which was the Lonnie shit, I have been a based, non-relationship-having bachelor motherfucker. And it's been so great. <laughs> I forgot how good it was to be able to wake up and just go about my day without a single distraction. I wake up with a headache most mornings. And so just being able to wake up to total silence and just stumble my way to the bathroom in silence to an empty bathroom with no one occupying it or wanting to occupy it and just take my, my morning piss in complete silence and peace. Oh my God. Just the morning alone. It, it feels like freedom, dude. Weird way to say Sigma. I've basically been on my Sigma grind set, is what I'm saying. Um, I've been on my Sigma grind set, yes. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to find... I'm trying to find... Oh yeah, guys, this is gonna be us in a moment. Not in a moment, but... In a couple hours, whenever I finish the rest of our segments for today, this is gonna be us. Even till eternity, my echo that's gonna be us that's gonna be us in a couple hours once we finish up segments we're playing some new vegas hell yeah but uh besides that let me see if i can find this oh scroll wheel scroll wheel please I love scrolling through all the cursed shit that I've saved for the sake of showing on stream. Come on, where is it? 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 It was a good meme. It was a good meme. It was a good meme. It was such a good meme. Where is it? 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 It's a good meme. It's a good meme. I'm basically just scrolling right now through all my likes trying to find this particular meme video. How long ago... How fucking long ago? What the hell? Oh, it's gone. Okay, never mind. I think... 
Yeah, it had to have been deleted. Yay! Another meme that made my my made me laugh like crazy is now lost media. For, I guess the poster was, you know, it makes sense. It's Twitter. Anyone who posts something funny on Twitter is banned within 24 hours. I forgot. Fuck, I forgot. If you post anyone who posts good shit on Twitter that gets views or gets like anywhere in the algorithm enough for you to see it, they're banned within 24 hours for posting something interesting. Um, at the very least, this this account made it. Because I can't show you the meme video in question that applies to the situation, I'll just show you this. Immaculate land. The fields are looking fertile. Thank you, thank you. Ugh. Can we get a cabbage spread? Sure. Where is Gort the Surf? Gort chased a rabbit into the forest. And that was yesterday, so we're hoping the search party finds him today. Fields look dry to me. Well, that's rich, Fergus, because I've heard there's not much fertility in your land or in your loins. <laughs> those are just the rumors. <laughs> Lady Anne, thank you for the sack of grain. <laughs> then why is my surf nominated for surf of the year? Tumford is nominated for Surf of the Year? Well, I suppose Gord has some competition then. <laughs> and may the better Surf win. God. That goes crazy. That is how it would be back then, though. That is what it would be like if we had, just for no reason, we just had cell phone live streaming technology back then. How how crazy of an alternate future would that be? Or like alternate timeline universe where just like humanity starts out somewhere like, let's say 80,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago, like around the, the birth of like human civilization, um... Aliens just come and drop a billion forever lasting, unbreakable, waterproof, forever charged cell phones with like internet connections to everything onto the planet. And you can just straight up live stream, text, social media exists, they've got Twitter. How does human society grow and change from that point? They can't take these things apart because they're indestructible, by the way. So they can really glean no knowledge from them other than... I, I don't even know. That that'd be a crazy timeline. That is a wild stunlock as well. I'm going to have my editor edit all this crazy shit out. Anyway. <laughs> I wasn't able to find the meme, sadly. Chugga Conroy goes on to say, Yeah, being forward with you because I'd rather not keep anything from you and let you make the best decision for you. I am into that, but only with my significant other. I just also like talking about shoes with people because it's also an interest. I talked with my significant other about this when we started dating, and she told me I can talk about shoes with other people because it isn't sexual with my friends. It's just something I enjoy talking about with my friends, too. I know that might be a lot to share, and I'm sorry if it is, but I feel it's best to just be open with people and consider what I'd like to know if I was in their position. Uh, Emily says, no, no, I'm, I'm glad to know. Good to have that openness and common understanding. Seems like things are going on pretty well so far. Chuck Conroy says, thank you. That's very kind of you to see. Or thank you. That's very kind of you to see it that way. I'm always about communication, even if it's about complicated stuff. Because why would you not tell your friends some Im important things if you want to keep them in your life? A lot of people are not so kind about this sort of thing on the internet. Ha uh, sorry to ping again. I just won't be up too much longer and want to finish talking. Ah, oh, no, the, the desperation second ping. Don't do that. I, n I never drop the desperate second ping, okay? Listen, if, if you're messaging her, if you're, if, you're, if you're messaging a girl and it does this, 
where enough time passes between your messages that you create a double message. If you're in the talking phase and you have to do this, you've lost. I, I Like, you, you've basically already lost if you've gotten to the point where you've had to do that. Because if you know how th these, like, programs work, you know why it does that. Time has passed. I think the last message has been seen and read. And then that second message has not been, unless it's sectioned off. That's not a good sign. The next day. Here's what an uncut talk between us looks like as it transitioned into roleplay. Ooh, it's gonna get spicy! Uh, she says, ooh, PS2. What the was the console I remember first really getting into? I feel like I missed a lot of Wii games, TBH. I didn't really get to actually have a Wii. I mean, I kind of had a Wii, but not really. Chugga says, surprising. I felt like everyone had one, usually alongside one of the other two. I never had one. Uh, so, like, I feel for you. I really do. But if you're still coughing and sick, what do you need shoes for? She says, hmm, I mean, yeah, if you want them, go for it. If you want them, go for it. I, I don't know what she means there. Um, that didn't seem like a response to his question. No we. She says, hmm, I mean, yeah, if you want them, go for it. Oh, okay, we're going on. He says, damn, that was easy. She says, I mean, I'm sick. Far be it from me to put up a fight. Uh, he says, is this a trick? She says, why would I trick you? Here are the shoes. They're normal shoes. He says, ack, no. She says, here you go. And they're like a picture of some converse or something, like those laced up like fabric ones, the ones that are like, the, like just imagine like converse type shoes, the ones that are like skater shoes. They're, they're just those. Um, here, I'll even give you another pair too. And then like a cartoon pair of shoes. It's a joke. And then he says, you... You can use these later on for potential boss fights or enemy encounters, she says. He says, oh, fuck off. She says, Lamau. He says, I see you're just putting them back on like nothing happened after tormenting me. You weren't even, you weren't gonna give them up. She says, I'm never gonna give them up. He says, you're asking for it. You're even showing me up at my own shtick. I'm warning you. She says, do your worst. Oh, they're role playing. Okay. I, I was like, I, I wasn't understanding. Like, I didn't see where they transitioned into doing role play. Okay, I'm sorry, dude. But like I feel like these allegations from the start relied on the fact that people obviously find foot stuff weird and creepy, broadly speaking. I agree with that. And like just showing images of him being like flirtatious and engaging in like sexting and she's reciprocating and there is no evidence of her not doing so. <laughs> um, God. Uh, she says, do your worst. He says, okay, fine, fine. Goes over and gives you a hug. She says, ah, double question or double exclamation point. I didn't expect this tactic, double exclamation point. He says, feels nice. Uh, hugs you tighter, but not uncomfortably. She says, yeah, but also, dang, you got me. He says, yep, I got you. Hugs tighter. Now a little uncomfortable. I'm going to teach you a lesson. Sweeps your legs out from under you. And <laughs> Sweeps your legs out from under you and lets go of you as I do. You fall to the floor. I grab into each of your shoes and yank them off, leaving you barefoot. I stand back across the room from you. Ow, gross, does it hurt knowing that's what they really look like? No, 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 you can't do this to me, she says, double and quadruple exclamation point. Like, the, she is literally, Zan, please stop. Nope, she is literally fully into it here. My theory is because if she is, she keeps getting free shoes, okay? Guys, guys. Women, actually. Women who are watching right now. Hypers in chat if you have met other women who would do some weird shit for free shoes. Or especially a non-stop supply of free shoes. Because I know women. I know a lot of women. And they fucking love shoes. 
I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like some sort of dragon complex they have. Like, I don't know if they, they have like some sort of like dwarf, like gold sickness, but for shoes. But like it, every woman I have ever met who has her own living space, if I go and look at her closet, her like the bottom of the closet will just be either a pile, a mountain, or a sea of shoes that are just a fucking pile. Okay? Most of them never get worn. Most of them never get worn. They're for specific occasions. They're like there, there are women will have shoes that are for weddings during June on Mondays. That'll be like a specific pair of shoes they have only to be worn in those circumstances. And then there's a backup pair of shoes for that circumstance too. So I kind of, I kind of, I, I kind of, I kind of get it. I kind of think I, I see where she's coming from here. You know, you know, may, like he, she probably might not have been super into this at the time. Like maybe she found it weird and there is some truth to her allegations, but she doesn't really realize that, oh shit, you can't really retroactively claim discomfort if you pretended to consent at the time to gain something. Like you can't then retroactively say, oh, but I didn't really consent because like that's. It's not how it works. Like, you can't say you consent, but then, like, the other person has to read your mind and then know you don't really. Um, that's not... That's that's a poor, poor communication, which is quite... You know, you need good communication in order for there to be consent. Um, and you can't really blame the other party if, if the other party is just not communicating well, you know? And that seems to be the case here at best for uh, Emily. At worst, she's just lying to try to hurt him for clout, which I don't want to believe. I want to believe that she has a more pure motive than that for this happening, I'll say. Uh, but I, I don't know. It just seems like this was vague posting for likes that blew up into something she did not expect it to become and was not ready to have to substantiate. That's usually how it goes, too, with these types of allegations. Like... It'll be a female streamer or content creator will make some, like, vague posting allegations. People start talking about it and making assumptions. They're fo they're forced to say who they meant. And then, like, from there, people pick everything apart and, like, they aren't able to put together a coherent allegation. And then, like, the response comes out and it usually falls apart. And then you get a bunch of dumb Republicans and conservatives yelling, Me too has gone too far. Hey, Jerry. Most good faith interpretation I have is Emily was made uncomfortable but didn't know how to go about it, so it was mishandled. I, I could see that happening, but damn, like, the the playfulness at which she is, like, engaging with... Seriously, chat, look. Do your worst. Okay, fine. Goes over and gives you a hug. Ah, I didn't expect this tactic. Feels nice. Hugs you tighter but not uncomfortably. Yeah, but also, dang, you got me. Blah, 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 blah. Oh no, you can't do this to me. Oh, silly girl, I'm not done. You won't be getting these back before your doctor's appointment. Enjoy explaining those feet to the doctor, who will undoubtedly be wanting to study them. I turn and run out of the door holding shoes. Eep, bad, bad. You can't be seen like this in public. You need something to hide your feet with, but I took the only two pairs of shoes or socks. She says, no, I will wrap them with blanket, cocoon myself, and run outside after me like that. I can hop. <laughs> like, she is in no... This is not how a woman who is in any way creeped out behaves, either, like, in terms of social signals that should tell you, hmm, maybe I should stop... And then she also said she's totally fine with this explicitly. Like, dog, Xan reading foot roleplay wasn't on my 2024 bingo card. Neither was... It wasn't on mine either. <laughs> Xander Hall, will you react to the Willie Mac video about Dark Viper that came out today? Ooh, that could be good. That could be good. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Potentially. Um, Should I ask, is Willie Mac cool with me reacting to it? I um I should probably DM him. I, I maybe I should check first. I know he just put it out, and as much as like reacting to a video can help, in his Twitter bios it says you can react to his stuff. Okay, I mean like just in like a more like just politeness YouTuber to YouTuber sense. Like, is there like a? Sp I I think maybe I should wait like 
a day or two. I like to wait a day or two for reacting to certain videos because, like, the algorithm needs to boost them naturally. And then after a few days, it helps, um, like, getting reactions to your videos because the vid the algorithm stops recommending it as much after a few days. But then if you if you interject with a reaction in those first few days, you may be taking viewers away. I have seen stats that suggest that, but after a video being a few days old... Um, reacting to it, even a re-upload is effectively taking nothing from the original because the YouTube algorithm wasn't recommending the original much anyway, except for audiences that would have really liked it. Um, videos hit market saturation surprisingly fast. I have an add-on called vidIQ. It lets me track how many views per hour videos get, not just my own, but other videos. You'd be surprised how like a 1.5 million view video from like a year ago gets like two views an hour a year later and like in a year it'll be getting zero views most hours um that's like how nitty gritty the stats are for tracking it so like youtube will truly just leave a video to die like a carcass on the side of the road um like after god a year you know you have to put in work promoting the video externally uh, if you want to get attention to it. But, you know, that, that's a whole... We're talking about a whole other topic. We're talking about a whole other topic. This is the tone of the conversation that led to the roleplay. I think, honestly, that it reads as pretty silly from both of us. I remember when this happened, I was just playing a video game and laughing to myself when she'd add to it because it was all so out there and dumb. I cackled at her sticker star joke. My girlfriend wanted to add that Emily's decision to include personal information about her was greatly upsetting to her. Emily needlessly published the territory my girlfriend lives in. This was not public knowledge and did nothing to prove any point. In Emily's screenshots, I'm open about having a girlfriend and told her my significant other was fine with all of this. Our relationship had no bearing on any of this and never needed to be brought up. I agree. I agree. Like, looking at it now, this is a really good point. Understanding it from this perspective, Lady Emily seems down downright malicious. Like, just down downright malicious. I also want to say that I never lied about how this was resolved privately. In my original statement, I said, quote, When you communicated this to me privately a few months ago, I apologized to you directly and promised I would never repeat this kind of behavior again with anyone else. What kind of behavior, by the way, like, foot like consensual foot role play like t talking to a girl who says yeah i'm cool with this and then like later she says no i'm not cool with it anymore like this sounds like she was blackmailing him like behind the scenes like hey i'm gonna lie about your interactions if you don't like never do anything like this again quote unquote uh like get therapy i guess was one of the conditions and like yeah, she was literally just leading him on. Yeah, I'm I'm fully willing to say it now. I feel like I made my conclusion. She was just leading him on, and now she's lying about him. I guess because they had some kind of falling out. It's getting hard to see her charitably. Same. Consensual foot roleplay was not a sentence I ever wanted to hear. Me either, decayed slav. But unfortunately, my job is to read this kind of shit, and... Uh, I wonder how 10-year-old me would react if, if I just, like, told him, Hey, buddy, do you want to know what you're going to do for money when you grow up? <laughs> am I going to am I gonna be doing porn? Oh, no. Far less respectable. <laughs> Unironically true. Um, I also want to say that I never lied about how this was resolved. Oh, yeah, I read that bit. Um, Chugga Conroy says... Name of friend who Emily reached out to. Talk to me about this. I apologize for everything I did. I will not reach out again. I am sorry. I never claimed we had a conversation about it. I said it was communicated privately, which it was. I don't think a friend uh, being there contradicts that. I don't retract any apology about hurting her or pestering her for a reply. Nothing I've said changes what I did or that I did that. I just felt this important context was left out. This is what I was working with and why I was so comfortable doing this. 
I kept asking if it was okay and kept doing it because she w she said she enjoyed it. I wanted to be open with someone I cared about rather than just assume, and I gave her my word that I wouldn't go into sexual territory for myself. It, uh, sexual territory for myself. It still wasn't a good way to act. I just hope it's understandable how I could think this way. Due to an autism spectrum disability. Ah, uh, I knew it. I knew, I, you want to know what's funny? I called the... I think this dude just has autism. Um, I called that, like, back when I did my original video. Like, this feels like, at, like, best case scenario for Emily. It's just two people who are autistic, like, not sending the right signals and receiving the right signals for the proper, like, understanding to be met. Um, but, no, this actually seems like it's Chugga Conroy, who is, like, genuinely, despite, like, there was no like, autism weirdness here. Like, there's no, like, ah, uh, not understanding a social situation. Somebody implies they're not into something, and that implication isn't picked up on, and they continue forward, and then that person looks like a creep, but it's, like, no. No, like, that's... that That's what I was assuming would be the best-case scenario, but in reality, for Chugga Conroy, the best-case scenario, and seemingly the most likely scenario, is that he went through this, like, all quite well. Like, he, he like, asked for consent. He asked her if she was cool with it. His partner was okay with it. Um, it from everything I've seen so far, it just seems like Lady Emily retroactively revoked consent. Like, the literal red pill retroactively revoked consent meme. Like, ah, yes, I've decided the next day that you raped me. That that meme that the Red Pillars talk about? Like, actually that is what's happened here. Oh, God, I hate the internet so much. And the, and the shitty thing is, this kind of stuff, I, I, need to, I need to emphasize. I need to emphasize this kind of stuff is only the sort of thing that happens on the internet, okay? This is not a thing that is even close to common or, or like, a thing you'll see in the real world, okay? It is very, very rare that this kind of stuff happens in the real world. But online, it's far easier to make a twit longer and lie about a YouTuber than to say, gather evidence and go to the police. So it's just, you know, like what the, the, if you're going to make an allegation like this in real life, you go to the police, you, you take legal action. But if it's online, you make a twit longer, you know? And going to the police is a sign that you're taking it seriously and that you might not be full of shit just from the get-go that's going to filter a lot of people. But when it comes to internet accusations, there is no filter like that. I never claimed we had a conversation about it. I said, oh yeah, sorry, my bad. Um, God, my nose. Why is it itch like that? I, I need to figure out why it does that. I think it's just like... I think it's just... Well, well, mustache hairs tickling my nose. Due to an autism spectrum disability, I struggled with understanding social cues or people's limits. That's what I've been talking about with you guys. I don't hide behind this as a shield from criticism. I've learned to live with it. I learned I couldn't always trust myself to say the right thing or not take things too far due to my inability to see social situations the same way as other people do. Doctors have told me this is what happens with me. Uh, to make up for this weakness, I learned many years ago to be open with people, relying on permission, asking questions, and requesting others to tell me if something becomes too much. This is what I did with Emily, but despite that, she never once communicated that I said anything that made her uncomfortable until she was considering going public. I was confused when she started ignoring my messages. I don't do well with being ignored. It just makes me worry a lot about other, about the other person because I do my, I do best with open communication. When I have nothing to work with, I can't really understand what someone is thinking, and in this case, I thought she liked how it was going. I, it usually leads to me just wishing each day will be the day I get to hear they're okay. I've learned ha now that repeated messages like this can be stressful to others. I did everything she wanted me to do once she told me she didn't like it and told me and took it into my own hands to get mental help and learn more about my issues. It's perfectly fine to revoke consent or decide it's getting to be too much but it but this wasn't told to me it was told to the it was told the opposite of that this isn't a case of i only listened when i got caught i did listen yeah yeah this is really bizarre i 
She just like flipped. Regarding Lolly. Oh god, what an unfortunate name. L A W L Y. La Lee. Or La Lie, maybe. Um there was a chat log shared back in 20, 2010 when I was 19 about this. I'm not... Oh. There was a chat log shared back in 2010 when I was 19 about this. I'm not a pedophile and I'm not a groomer. I was an idiot teenager who made dirty jokes. I had no intentions of doing anything to this person. Quite the opposite, in fact. This post is taking two separate things over a decade apart and showing them together. When I was a teenager, I said lots of dumb things I shouldn't have. I'm 34 years old now and can't stand by anything I may have typed that long ago. I don't think anyone could. What I can do is tell you my intentions. Okay, so we're getting into some interesting shit. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Oh, no. Is this... Oh, no, I remember this. This was the most scathing thing about Chugga Conroy. This was a different drama, though, than the Lady Emily stuff. This was the pedo crush thing, right? I'm not mixing up, like, YouTube dramas, right? This is the guy who said, like, this that's better than pedo crush? I remember having that line in the thumbnail of my video covering that because it was so fucking cursed. Pedo crush? Yeah, that's what, like, this guy, or some YouTuber, maybe not him. I I'm forgetting, like, if this was another YouTube drama I covered or what. Dude, I'm so... Dude, these YouTube dramas about YouTubers being accused of pedophilia and sexual impropriety are so frequent, and they jumble in my head. I, I, I got them all mixed up. I'm all mixed up! Oh, yep, it is the same one. I scrolled down, and yep, it is the same one. That He is the one who said that line. We're gonna get an explanation for that. You ever realize you were hitting your vape from the wrong end? Yeah, it's what I named my sledgehammer too, Pepper T21. Anyway, uh, there was a chat log shared back in 2010, back when he was 19. Um, and this is the one that kind of started the allegations that he was a pedo. To give an idea of how long that chat was, when I was 19, TRG didn't exist. So apparently he was not a YouTuber yet? Or maybe he just didn't have, like, his company yet? I never appeared at a single convention, I hadn't started college, and I still lived at home. I made videos as a hobby and wasn't professional. And I was working on my first Pokemon Let's Play. I don't think something that old should be treated as representative of the person I am now. In any sense, it was too it was so long ago that I learned the contents of this of this log existed when you did. I was extremely hurt to be judged for something from so long ago and that the headline was worded like I assaulted someone. The internet was a different place then and being facetious was everywhere. It was like our escape from censorship and the edgier the better. It was easy to get caught up in the moment and say things I didn't mean when I was that young, too. You need look no further than my terrible old videos for the tasteless things I thought were hilarious at the age, or how my sense of humor was changed, or how internet culture was a, as a whole changed. It might be hard to imagine, but back then, people commonly threw around vulgar language and joked about horrible things like it was nothing. Oh, and lots of slurs, too. Um, God, I'm... <sighs> There are certain lines to this. I don't know if the things that he said necessarily cross that line from, like, old internet edge to, no, this is a sign of, like, actual creepiness. But it's been a while since I covered it. How old is he? How old is he here? He was 19 when this happened. 
Some people were concerned about one part where I said, quote, I am going... I'm going to word that rhymes with grape you and then said something about a video with a cat. This wasn't a serious conversation. It was a popular meme at the time, and I'm sure it was quoting this video. I remember all of my friends quoting it on a daily basis back then. It was like the biggest thing ever. <gasps> oh, yeah. Yeah, like th this video. I, I thought he could be referencing this because it was used... Hey, Cherry, are you in chat? Cherry is the queen of YouTube poops. She loves them. She'll recognize the sound bit. You are a fucking piece of shit! I'm going to rape you! So stupid, old internet. So stupid, old internet. Like, genuinely, old internet was just about, like, how funny yelling and peeking out old audio and video software and hardware was. Like, the fact that all video back then was deep fried meant that, like, angry yelling was extra funny. And so almost all memes and content back then were about angrily yelling the most vulgar thing you could possibly find. The, like, the meme deep frying was a thing naturally back then. Anyway. As for the pedo crush line, I don't even remember saying it. It was 14 years ago. Probably a joke that was topical. Pedo bear was an enormous meme at the time, and jokes, dunk jokes dunking on pedophilia were just what internet humor was then. Lolly equals pedo was a common joke. Well, it's not a joke. It's real. And given her username, an easy one. I definitely learned a long time ago that these sorts of jokes aren't cool and could be hurtful to victims. Society moved on from this time many years ago, as, as I have too. You can see the difference between then and now just by looking at anything I type. Most of the rest of the chat is just boring talk about video games we like. Even given the time, if you still felt like that chat was getting out of hand, I agree with you. In fact, I agreed with that when I was 19. Lolly said she doesn't, uh, Lolly, I hate that that's her name. Lolly said she doesn't know why our chats ended abruptly. I can tell you exactly why. It was because I disliked the direction of these chats and how young she was, and I've told her this numerous times. After a few conversations, I took a step back and realized this could not continue. She would constantly initiate raunchy topics with my 19-year-old self. I was oblivious at first, though it was funny shitposting, uh, thought it was funny shitposting, played off their behavior as a joke, and thought of them as a friend with a dirty sense of humor like many friends I had back then. That makes, that's plausible. That's definitely plausible. And here are the interactions. She says, fine, now I'll possess you forever and talk to you and be all like, I see dead people, and, 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 uh, and make you touch yourself in public, insert evil laughter here. He says, why, why are all the things you do to me sexual? You really do want me? She says, facepalm. I don't, ah, uh, dude, that, that's not a good thing to post, dog. That feels like, that almost feels like he's being flirtatious. Like, that's not a line that he should have said. I, I feel like you shouldn't have said that. I'm gonna be real. That, that doesn't come off good. That doesn't really come off good. 19-year-olds are stupid. That's true, but... Oof. He should... He should disengage. After a little while, things escalated... Or started to escalate, and they sent a sexually explicit gift to my house. It made me realize they weren't being silly. They were romantically interested in me, not the other way around. The whole thing... Oh, sorry, I'll go full screen now. The whole thing made me and my mother uncomfortable, and after del deliberation, I not only rejected them, but cut all contact with them. I actually talk about this in the log they posted, and our contact becomes a lot less frequent after that. You can see that... You can see after this point, we go long periods of time without talking... And I just tell her I'm busy or need to get going. I don't look exactly thrilled about this gift. We're just going to call her she. I'm sorry, but I hate saying her name. She says, Ooh, you got it. He says, was waiting for you. 
Well, sorry, my stalker senses aren't tingling. XD, he says, my mom told me I'm not allowed to wear the shirt, though. Dog, my mom told me I'm not allowed to wear the shirt. <laughs> like, that line goes crazy. I did not speak to this person for another 10 years. I had no intention of ev ever reestablishing contact. 10 years later, they approached me at a convention, and that was how we became friends again. I thought after that long, she was a new person and deserved a second chance. If you need more than just my word that it was joking around and I was the one who stopped it, here's proof. This is me telling the story to them in 2021 and their reaction to it. The ages are slightly off due to fuzzy memory, but this was the event that caused me to cut contact. He says, based on my past rejection of you, I don't think I have to justify that I wouldn't that I wouldn't to you. Ha ha. She says, you rejected me. He says, OK, I was going to save the story for when we were in a call, but I guess this is on topic. Plus, like, it's been weeks. She says, oh, God, what did I do? She says, so that shirt you sent me, my mom found that soon after I got it and asked me why the heck I had something like that. I told her my friend blank sent it to me. She immediately goes, this girl has a crush on you. No doubt about it. I go, oh, well, she's 14. I was 18 at the time. Well, apparently he's wrong here. He was 19 at the time, according to his do document. But he says here that he was 18. Uh, his mom told him that he can't associate with them and that it was dangerous so that he'd better keep his distance. As much as I like spending time with you, I chose to slowly fade out and hope you'd find someone else. That's why I fell out of your life for a few years. She says, oh, this that makes sense. I was going to say I would never have told you I had a crush on you. Ha ha ha. I was big chicken. He said, I knew at least I was pretty sure of it. Once my mom said that, I sort of analyzed a lot of things you'd said and done. It made a lot more sense after that. Dog. Dog. This dude was just like an autistic 19-year-old and some 14-year-old girl who just like was a fan of his like passion project gaming content like struck up a friendship with him and would just be raunchy so he interpreted it as like ah oh, another one of my raunchy friends and then like w like eventually he figures out that she has a crush on him because she sends a shirt to his house and his mom's like this girl likes you and he's like oh well she's 14 and she's like oh you need to not talk to this girl then and then like yeah, th this literally confirms his story here. These messages where he tells this story, by the way, are from 2021. He cut contact once he realized that, like, this was an underage person who had interest in him. He just cut contact of his own volition. At 19, he made that decision. So I, that that's a good sign of that's a sign of good character. I like how these accusations actually got flipped into here is a story that's a sign of good character on Chugga Conroy's part. Yeah, this was back in 2021 that he told this story to her, meaning he had no reason to be lying like to an audience to save his skin. This is years before these allegations came out. This is literally three years ago. He goes on to say, I knew at least I was pretty sure of it. Once my mom said that, blah, blah, blah. Did you think I was a cop or something? Ha ha. He says, I mean, I was pretty sure uh, you were you, but I didn't want to abuse or hurt you with an unfair relationship. So regardless, it was hard. It was a hard no from me at the time. Ha ha ha. Honestly, as an adult, I can appreciate that you set a boundary. He says, I'm glad I was worried you wouldn't like me anymore back then because I was intentionally snubbing you. Dude, going from honestly as an adult, I appreciate that you set a boundary to posting those messages back then, deceptively edited to make him look like a pedophile. That goes fucking wild, man. Holy shit. They, I'm I'm fully settling now, considering that all these accusers are like friends now and they know each other and they work together with putting out these accusations. I think this is a coordinated a character assassination effort. This genuinely these are two different people we've we've uh, gone over here so far. Um, three technically, but of note that are ac accusers too. Um, I genuinely think this is a coordinated multiple person character assassination campaign
they all know each other? Well, they become friends shortly before or after these allegations. Yeah, they, they at least follow each other on Twitter, that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, uh, it goes on to say, I just figured you were busy with life and moved on, haha. She says, I kind of had, or he says, I kind of had that as a passive excuse. I was hitting the big time around then. I've always enjoyed spending time with you, but at those ages, I wasn't going to let something develop on either side. I wanted you to go find other people. You were still a kid and wouldn't have that time again. Another side of this is that I confided in them as a teen about the girl I liked at the time. It's not them. Chugger Conroy says, There's this girl who I think might like me, and I told her something like that last night. I swear to God, she got so risen up from her depression. Ha ha. She says, Is she someone you know personally or just another fan? He says, She started off as a fan. She's hopefully going to this thing in June that I'm going to be at for a few weeks. He says, Pretty much all my friends are begging me to go for her in that time. Ha ha. Uh, she says, You has an online love, eh? And then like, a jealous face he says i don't really know if she likes me or not but i sort of suspect that she might she says most likely yes i mean you're awesome xd god it is so obvious that she was into him like he should not have been talking to her after like the first paragraph of conversation but i get i get he might not have picked up on it but i mean i feel like i'm pretty autistic and i i get that read quite clearly was there humor? Although, to be fair, if it's directed at you, you never pick up on it. Like, I, it, you just never do. Or if you think you do, you're like, do I, though? Do I, though? Do I, though? You know? Like, yeah. It, it, yeah. Obviously, outside of situations like like anything like this, I've had... um. I've had situations where women have shown me their breasts and I've still been like, is she into me though? Is, is she into me? I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I gotta, I have to think about it a while longer. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking as someone who suffered a lot as a child, I have many ground rules involving minors and have taken these sorts of things immensely seriously ever since. Good, good, very good. I read through all of it, and to my surprise, she's the one who initiates the role play. She's the one who pretends to tickle my feet. <laughs> ah! And goes much further than that, too. She was the origin of it, at least in this chat. I don't know if she's where I got the idea from, but it's possible. I guess it's neither here nor there. I didn't know I was into that at 19 anyway. The next point is something I was unsure about publishing for months. I hate that this is relevant. And I would not be sharing this if they didn't post it anonymously. I cut contact with them thinking they just had an innocent crush that needed to stop. It was a lot worse than that. I was disturbed to find they admitted that in those old chats, their goal was to manipulate me into having sex with them. Here are two separate times they told me this story, as well as a time we briefly touched on it. Dog. Dog. I got to read these these messages. If he's not lying here and the evidence suggests what he says it is, this is her admitting to at 14 years old, actively seeking out having sex with him, I guess to get him in trouble. I, 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 bro. This is some full on like, I want a movie starring Chugga Conroy about this entire situation. Like, who's seen that movie Knock Knock? The one starring Keanu Reeves? I think I talked about it on stream once. This reminds me of that a little bit. Like, this absolutely no way this would ever happen scenario. But it's, it's real. <laughs> oh, God. Jesus Christ. Um, no clue, smile, told me younger, told me younger was better, so I thought you'd like me more if I told you my age, I think is what she, yeah, age. Yeah, I would not have gone for a 14-year-old when I was 18, so I can't say I agree with him there. Four years isn't so bad this far in, but at 14, you're still finding a lot of what life is, and I'd see that as predatory. She says, yeah, I, uh, when I was underage, 
I wanted to fuck an older guy so badly, LMFAO. It was just so happened all the all the predators around me were inept as fuck, and I just trolled them for being thirsty, LMAO. He says, oh my god, oof, I'm very thankful you didn't end up with one of these. Uh, holy shit, I can see blank really warped your views. Um, she says he really did. Thankfully, I have zero sexual attraction to people unless I love them. And all the thirsty weirdos didn't do it for me and was am an asshole, so I literally just fucked with them. Uh, he says, man, here I thought you had a harmless childhood crush on me. Didn't know you wanted to fuck me ASAP. Haha. <laughs> she said, I am violently sexual. Smiley face. Removed one message, personal information. But absolutely, I would not have let you do that regardless of how well we got along. Younger me would be disappointed. Current me appreciates it. Oh yeah. And I am as well. I guess it just seemed like an unrelated statement. I also remember uh, you were like really off put by my age. But I was like, I don't see the problem because Blank always talked about younger girls. Oh wait, this is zoomed in. Same, same chat. Okay. Um... It is honestly a miracle no one took advantage of me as a kid. I'll say it is. You're pretty fortunate that way. Like, I want to... Okay, is this the same messages but zoomed in for no reason? Man, I'm so happy you never got hurt back then. So, so happy. RNG, right? You are the luckiest person alive. I think the whole picture here changes everything about their side of those logs. Their framing of events to make me look like the Predator really upset me when I saw this again. Regardless of some jokes on, on a screen, this is the real tragedy I prevented from happening. I refused to be their friends for so much less than their actual motive. It wasn't just me either. They said they targeted multiple other adults for sex. My feelings about this are complicated. It's horrible in so many ways they wanted to use me for underage sex and then frame it like I was preying on them because of some text from 14 years ago. But I also feel for them when I think about how bad their situation probably was. Yeah, she was probably, like, pretty mentally in a bad place, but fuck, dude. Fuck. Just outright admitting she was trying to, like, get him in trouble. Absolutely crazy. Wow. Whew. We are almost done. Page 14 out of 20, guys. As for the modern stuff they showed, that was after more than a decade of no contact. I had only vague rec recollections of what our conversations were like back then, and years into this new friendship, I was asking if, as adults, they wanted a text roleplay but spicy. I was forward about that so they wouldn't think I was I just wanted silly stuff like I remembered us doing. For the record, I was single, and they were fine with me asking. I wasn't in a good headspace when I asked them for roleplay stuff. It was the worst year of my life. I think I just wanted to feel close to someone I cared about in that loneliness. She told me she liked slash missed roleplay, so I thought it natural to ask. Plus, by that point, we'd been friends again for years. It was 12 years since I cut contact. I didn't even remember most of our old talks, and we'd put our awkward past behind us, so any bad implications weren't exactly there for me. Save for the one time they ran into me as an adult, I had only ever known this person online. Nothing else ever happened. This was the first time I'd asked them for anything since learning what I liked. More on that in a second. If Law Lee is reading this, I'm sorry I made you hurt. I don't think what I've said changes that. I mean it. God. It's like my upper lip and my nose. God, I hate it. Though I guess I'm surprised at this. We were friends up until this. I got along... Better as adults, and I was glad to have you in my life without that inappropriate crush. It was basic knowledge to both of us that you were the one who wanted me, and I shut it down. I even apologized last year for asking for roleplay stuff, and you said you forgave me and considered me a true friend. I don't really know what you were thinking. I didn't even attempt. I didn't even remember these chats, so I was genuinely confused by what you'd even be speaking out about when I heard it was you. It hurt a lot to see... You say that you don't know if I ever considered you a real friend. I told you that you were awesome and funny and smart a lot. We we got each other through difficult times. You were a bright spot in my darkest times, and I admired you for it. I spent your birthday I spent your birthday with you. You mattered to me too, so much, 
and we just had a nice conversation about how much we care about each other right before this too. I, d I want you to know that I cried when I wrote this because it was the moment where it really hit me that I'll never speak to you again. The hardest part of all of this was going through our chats to find proof of my intentions. In doing so, I opened a time capsule of a beautiful friendship that doesn't exist anymore and saw the very real ways we helped each other. I wish you talked to me about it. I would have listened. I saw you as a friend for life. Please don't get angry at the person who posted those chat logs. They were looking out for their friend slash my former friend, and it's possible they didn't have this context either. They were being a good friend. Jesus Christ. Dude got, uh... Dude got played. Dude got played. Me at 19? This doesn't seem important. My visit to the mental ward? Okay, this is apparently just evidence of visit to the mental ward. How I've been. I don't need that. I don't, we don't need to see that. Moving forward. We'll read the moving forward bit as like an, a closing bit. But that that's Chugga Conroy's response to the allegations. Um, moving forward. I'd like to make an ode to my friends. Several reached out the night I came from the hospital. They didn't want me to be alone and still believed I was a good person. Heck, I think some of you believed I was more innocent than I did. It took me a while to see this your way. I loved all of you, my friends. Even if you were critical of me, I cannot bring myself to not love you. Some of it was things I already agreed with. Some of it was things I needed to hear. And some of it was telling me this wasn't as bad as I thought. I want to thank my friend, my best friend, Tim slash Nintendo Capri Sun. He handled so many decisions and all of this for me um, when I was not well enough to make them for myself. He cooked for me every day when I wasn't allowed near the knives. I think you really saved me. Please support him with all you can. I didn't say this last time. I'm so sorry for all the heartache and worry I caused my friends and caused you. I worked hard every day to make sure I would never make you feel like this again and could be dependable once more. I really didn't mean to do harm here and feel I've learned about myself in ways I didn't know I needed to. These are positive things. Regardless of my clarifications and context, I definitely still made mistakes and learned lessons as well as learned new things about how my mind works. I don't want to get carried away and make it sound like I'm 100% blameless. I need psychiatric help for my depression and roleplay behavior. I don't know if the roleplay stuff needs psychiatric help, but I mean, I guess it's weird and cringe. I took your criticism of my person seriously and am forever working every day to ensure nothing like this could ever happen again. It will not happen again. I am a fan of numbers, so let me show you. Since privately confronted about this, I saw my therapist six times before anything was made public, completed 11 behavioral health sessions with a psychologist, continuing to do so for the foreseeable future, spent five nights in a mental health ward and have met with my doctors twice since then, read numerous medical articles to understand my conditions better and how to avoid mistakes, have never missed a dosage of four medications and supplements that better regulate my brain activity, have never wanted to roleplay again. I, d I don't know what the point is about the fucking roleplay. I, I, it's just so weird. Um, feel more self-aware and cognizant than at any point in my life up to this point. Thank you. That's all I wanted to say. Please call the Suicide Prevention Hotline in your area if you are struggling right now. It worked for me. Maybe this uh, situation can save a life, and then I can say my pain was worth it. Uh, some of it was definitely cringe. I mean, a lot of it was cringe, to be honest with you, but it was an actually very good response that gave more com compelling evidence than was ever used against him, against his accusers. It feels as though, by the looks of things, he was lied about maliciously for the sake of clout. It doesn't even feel like it was an honest, like, sh these women were genuinely hurt by their interactions and creeped out and felt they needed to speak out. It feels as though they retroactively decided they weren't happy with it later or just lied for the sake of, of clout farming. Pro Jared 2.0. But Pro Jared, like, did cheat on his wife, though, right? It just wasn't with a minor. Um, I don't know. Regardless, I'm curious what you guys think about this story, especially in the comments down below. Please consider dropping some. It takes half a second, and I really am curious to see what you guys think about this situation. Commenting also boosts the video and the algorithm. Lots of engagement is very good for my channel. And of course, drop a like if you haven't already. It also counts as engagement and helps a lot as well, and just takes half a second to do, and is totally free. So for all my content that you drop a like on, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. 
And of course, maybe consider donating, subscribing, or gifting a sub on my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live to support me financially if you've got the money for it and don't need it for anything else. Or support me financially through YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, or Patreon. I also have a merch store linked down below in the description too. And uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to join my Discord as well. It's a great community. Hop in there if you haven't already. All right. How do you guys like that video? God. The whole Chugga Conroy response. My head hurts after that shit. Perry Icefire, thank you for the $5. I really appreciate that. Very based in Pog of you, says, That segment reminds me of a Discord drama I had with a woman who was trying to accuse a member of being a predator. The story changed when I asked for evidence. Ooh, yeah, when stories change when evidence is asked for, it's a bad sign. Thank you for the $5. Pepper T21, thank you for the $5 as well. Very kind of you. Very base, says... Zan, I'm trans femme, but I never cared about shoes, probably because I have to wear whatever fits. Current pair is a size 17, Lamau. Will estrogen cause me to hoard shoes? If so, I'm fucked. Uh, it might. It might. I don't know if estrogen's what makes women do that, but I, I think it might just be a fashion thing. Like, just having a lot of shoes is, is a thing women like to do because it, it allows them to mix and match outfits. Gives them a whole variety of, of extra options for like, outfits they can wear. Ugh. This clip goes hard for me right now? What is this? Maybe, like, a 24-hour mute. Just to be like, hey, this type of behavior, defending this type of stuff is not acceptable here. But maybe you get proven to be in the right by more information coming out and you get to come back and say I told you so. Who knows? I don't wanna I don't wanna like fully ban them, you know? It just feels like a little over the top, right? True. True. See, I'm a reasonable guy. I don't just straight up pull out a sword and behead every person who annoys me on stream. What is this? How humiliating, the Charlotte GOP accidentally mocked a word-for-word -word transcript of Donald Trump's incoherent speech without realizing it was Trump's words. Teaching my first history course of the semester has been rewarding, but I don't know what to do with this student. And it's Donald Trump's speech. Average Trump speech be like, but in other news, that's probably from a student in... Car mech schools led by your mech dems. That's total. That totally tracks. We can't read, or spell, or add, or locate countries on grade level, but we can make sure your feelings aren't hurt during SCL. Uh, yeah, they did. Man, they didn't. They didn't, they didn't read the tweet before they replied. I guess rough. That's a rough scene right there. Got to permaban you for 10 minutes. Okay. Okay, I forgot to write the Chugga Conroy segment down on the scroll, so I'm going to write it on the scroll just to, like, mark it off. Stay mad. All right. Chugga Conroy. Okay. I got a fun segment for us to do next. I couldn't do that on stream. I don't have the room for my arm. It would be a nightmare. It would be a mess, too. Okay.
All right. Everyone, you all know what to do when I say action, right? Three. Two. One. Action. All right, everybody. So if you've been around the block for a while, you're probably familiar with the viral videos that will occasionally drop and go just everywhere from a company called Boston Dynamics. If you're not familiar with them, I'm quite surprised. They're the ones who make those robots, the robot dogs and the robot like people that look like they've got a backpack on. Um, that are like surprisingly capable and advanced looking. You've almost certainly seen videos not too dissimilar to this one. Let me see if I can find a good example. What's their most popular video? Uh, they've got some of the robot dogs. Gosh, they've got a lot of videos that aren't... aren't that crazy for the... Uh, here, this is one of their famous ones, and then this is their most famous one. I'll show you a couple of their most famous videos to give you a bit of an intro to what kind of robots they're making. Now, keep in mind, these robots are years old at this point. These videos are like three or four years old now. So this is what Boston Dynamics had going on almost half a decade ago. You broke my heart. Oh, God. The, the music. Um, I'm going to turn off the music. This is not AI, by the way, or not, um, it is AI. It's not, uh, uh, like CGI. There's no computer generated graphics or fakery happening here. This is a real robot it is walking around on a real surface. I know that a lot of people, um, have been like skeptical, but I mean, Boston Dynamics is, they've got like multi-billion dollar contracts with the government. They ship out their robots to, like, police forces, and um, they've got, like, military contracts. That this just, It's not fake. It's they, These are real. Military officials have seen them. Police officials have seen them. Uh, now, these are, like, actually being produced. Like, this model of robot was being produced for a while for the purpose of being used for, like, manual labor. Like, basically factory work. Because factory work requires bending over, picking things up, uh, and stowing them places. And that's something that's hard to do with, like, a single-purpose robotic design. And so in the case... And then here's the robot dog that the police forces are rolling out. Um, yeah, man. It's kind of... Oh, oh, I've never seen this one before. We've got a new guy. You know what's kind of scary? I feel like if one of these things wanted to hurt you, like it was programmed to kill you, how sure are you that you could disable it before it could severely damage or kill you? Like if it was running at you and it it, it was not going to stop until it, you were dead, how sure are you that you could like destroy it to the point where it can't come after you anymore before it can hurt you? Because I even feel like this model here could probably hurt you very badly just by falling on you. Yeah, it looks durable. Like, you, you'd think you couldn't just rip its arm off. It doesn't look like it's delicate. Like, maybe kicking it off of a cliff would destroy it, but it doesn't look like the kind of thing that can break with your bare hands, you know? Desperately chew the wires? Yeah, you could do that, I suppose. One of their other very famous videos is this one. Hopefully this one doesn't have some annoying-ass music. Like that last one did. Here's a showcase of their dog robot. These are the really famous ones that are pretty much already, like, done and ready to go. Like, police for You will see within the next three years, I bet, these on the street being used by the police if they aren't already. I think they already are. Just not in a lot of places. They're not gonna be, like, patrolling the streets. They're gonna be used for disarming bombs and hostage situations and stuff. Could open a door. They could open a door and let more in. That's terrifying. That could be your front door in the middle of the night, by the way, guys. Imagine that's your front door in the middle of the night. 
One opens it up and then lets the rest in. Dude, that's terrifying. Clever girl. Now, guys, why are we talking about this? Well, yesterday, Boston Dynamics uploaded a video. It quickly went viral with it currently sitting at 35 on trending. And uh, it was a prep for a video they're going to drop or that they did drop today with an announcement, a showcase of a new robot, a new generation of their Atlas model, the person-shaped robot. And oh boy, we're getting close to Terminators, guys. This is the farewell to HD Atlas. This is their final showcase of what the last model of the Atlas robot was capable of doing before they released the video showing the new model that they have released. So this is the old one. The, this is their old, like they're abandoning this design for a better one. This is what it could do. The old inferior design. I don't think I could win in a fight against this thing. Oh. It knows how to take a fall though when it gets up. This is sort of how they they built it up. They've tested it. They've they balanced it. They've trained it for a million different scenarios. Field training, lab training, repetition after repetition, responding to random shit that could fuck up its day. Stress testing. Circumstantial testing. Acrobatics. Stress testing. Stress testing. A lot of stress testing, it seems. Man, it seems like it's got a problem with its kneecaps just fucking exploding. Dude, giving me a lot more respect for the human knee seeing how fast these robots' kneecaps just fucking bust. It knows how to hit a ball. It burns. Oh! Oh! It's bleeding! I, you guys have no ha idea how happy I am that when the robot uprising happens and we shoot the robots, they're gonna bleed. They're gonna bleed orange goo by the looks of it, some kind of coolant. It's so much cooler than the robots bleed. Leads, we can kill it. Yeah, their weaknesses seem to be their legs. We're learning how to fight Skynet. Rocky terrains aren't aren't great for them either. God, the stress I'd be feeling watching it roll down that hill. The stress I'd feel, man. So, the reason they put this video out is as a send-off to this old inferior model. And I think we could always tell that this design could not be the long-term design for robots. Like, come on. Come on. Like, a stubby, non-head. Non like, a weird torso with, like, I guess the arms and legs look cool, but, like, it just doesn't quite look person-like. And it feels like the design, just generally, almost like C-3PO from Star Wars, is just so limited that there's only so much something like this will ever be able to do. Until now. You see, they put out a new video. A 40-second showcase of their new Atlas robot. This is the new Atlas. This is what is replacing that clunky, big, bulky robot. This is its replacement. Are you about to see? Are you about you are are you ready to see the closest to Skynet Terminator bullshit we have in real life? Watch this. This is downright scary. 
That is a robot. Watch how it gets up. Fully articulated, 360 degree everything. No matter how you knock it down, it can rotate to... Oh. It looks like Pathfinder. That's impressive as fuck, though. Guys. Guys, you... Just... I love how it's just the most horrific thing ever. Just some shit straight out of a horror movie. Imagine you walk into a room, you see a robot laying motionless on the ground, and all of a sudden it does this. This video is a threat, yeah. <laughs> there, I added horror sound effects for you. Now you know, like, it, it sounds like the ring monster. Like, you add the horror sound effects and it's just all there. But, okay, in all seriousness, I really love the design of this robot. Like, I'm gonna be real, I never thought I'd see one of the coolest robot designs I've ever seen be a real-life robot design and not something from fiction. Like, this is a really fucking clean and cool-looking robot. You can see a lot of it is scuffed up from testing, but if you look at it, like... Just the texture and, like, the way they picked out the colors and the way it's built. It's got this almost, like, early... Two th you ever... You know, like, the way that, like, old 2000s technology is built to last? Like a Nokia phone or, like, a um a Leapfrog tablet? Like a Leapster, I think they were called? How you could just, like, spike those things to the ground and they don't even, like, budge because they're so solid? That's what this thing looks like. It looks like it's from that era of technology, if it makes sense. Or if that makes sense, you know? Mm-hmm. That makes it scarier. I genuinely, besides this area, that ge that really does look kind of fragile, to be honest with you. Though I imagine it's just a temporary thing. Like, I guarantee you, this kind of head is just a temporary thing. For, like, gathering data and programming. Like, in the future, cameras get better, they'll make it look like a, a head. And it'll have, like, cameras in the eyes, um, and they won't need to do, like, a light ring. The light ring is probably here to illuminate what's in front of it, so it's getting good visual data for navigation. Um, this thing's probably better balanced. It's more the proportions of a human, a slender human, too, so it's going to be able to do acrobatics, balancing, um, and, like, fighting. I wouldn't be surprised if this thing's going to be able to box effectively, like... Dodging faster than a human can and jabbing and crossing faster than a human can. I wouldn't be surprised if within three years it can do that. I want to kill it now. I, I guarantee you these robots can beat the best boxer in the world in a fist fight in five years. I, I guarantee it. The, the AI will study every fight that boxer has done know how they they open and how they fight, predict their open, and they'll get a metal fist to their jaw before they can even react to the fact the robot knew what they were going to do. Yeah, it's going to do full threat level detected. Dude, we're so fucked, man. Like, the developments in robotics and AI at the same time, man... Gen Z, we are doing a watch party of the Terminator movies 1 through 3. And maybe also the Sarah Connor Chronicles um, in my Discord eventually because, like, we might be running out of time. We might be running out of time, guys. Let it run. This shit is dope. Yeah, let it, let it, let it take over the world. Just let them destroy the planet. It's fine. Let, let the robots win. I'm fine with it. I am genuinely excited for, like, seeing like, serving robots around in public. I will genuinely feel like I've made it to the future when I'm walking down the street and I see robots walking around. I guess, like, a Roomba is kind of similar, 
but we're talking actual complicated articulated humanoid robots and one's meant to fulfill tasks and you see them around like some fallout pre-apocalypse stuff you know um anyway i i'm really curious to hear what you guys think about this because on one end i'm genuinely like excited like this is kind of awesome like objectively speaking this is quite awesome but also every single bit of media like this tells you that this is bad and we only really have media to go off of in terms of what to expect from something like this it's model 0012 it's going to be like the the main character of some like story about the the uprising of the machines in the future this is going to be the one that leads them um fuck <laughs> i don't know are you guys excited for this future of robotics that we have ahead of us like i should say this present of robotics we what i need to emphasize to all of you right now is what you're seeing right now as of today is the worst robotics will ever be ever again think about that for a moment what you're seeing right now is the worst robotics will ever be ever ever again it's only more advanced and up from here. That's a scary thought, but it's also an exciting one. All I can say is, no matter how this goes, our future is not going to lack for excitement. Whether we have a full Skynet-style apocalyptic scenario robot takeover, or they end up revolutionizing our society and making it more idyllic and utopia like than ever um we'll have to see regardless i'm curious what you guys think about this situation comment down below if you're watching this as a video or as a vod regardless the uh you know the engagement really helps my channel too so your comments are both fun for me to read and i like doing it that and they also help boost my channel the same is for liking my videos if you drop a thumbs up in my streams videos and vods it boosts my channel in the algorithm pushing it out to more people which really really helps a lot and i appreciate it so thank you to everybody who does that seriously it means a lot to me um, consider donating, subscribing, or gifting a sub if you haven't already and you can afford it uh, and you want to support me like that because it, it really helps. You can do so on my website or support me financially through YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, or Patreon. And uh, don't forget to buy merch if you haven't already and you want to buy some and rep your Xander Hall fandom. And uh, you should also join my fan discord. Totally free. It's a great community. We do watch parties and call-ins. So yeah, please consider joining my discord. It's a great time. But with all that said, Thank you for watching. Besides the potential Terminator Skynet future, what do you guys think of that segment? I feel like it came out pretty good. Good Seggy? Hell yeah. Okay. The Great Scroll. Oh, finally popped my jaw. Got all locked up towards the beginning of the stream. Whew, okay. Okay.
You all know what to do when I say action, right? Three, two, one, action. So, at this point, you're probably pretty aware of the world of Warhammer. It's gotten very popular lately, even with people that aren't super into fantasy, they've at least heard about it. And, uh, it's been touted as this, like, methamphetamine of nerd culture. Not even meth, like, the, the black tar heroin of nerd culture, you know? Like, maybe you're getting into a little bit of Lord of the Rings, like, that, that's some green, you know, that's some, that's a weed, right? Um... But if you're getting into Warhammer, you're getting into, like, heroin-level nerd fandom stuff. Like, Warhammer is the nerd shit that will consume your life, is never-ending, and will make you spend countless thousands of dollars on, like, little plastic... Plastic crack, exactly. Plastic crack. Um... Now, I'm not really, like, a huge Warhammer guy myself. I find the world quite interesting. I've I've taken a, a dip into the lore myself. I definitely find it interesting. Um, but I wouldn't call myself an expert in it by any means, and I wouldn't call myself, like... I wouldn't steal the valor of saying that I'm a fan of Warhammer, you know? I'd say I'm a... I'm an enthusiast. I'm a, I'm a tourist of Warhammer, as the, uh, as the chuds like to call me. And, uh... To give you an idea, those of you guys who don't know much about it, what it's like, I guess I can show you a brief clip from the uh, GameSpot Warhammer the Horus Heresy cinematic trailer. Um, for those that don't know, the Horus Heresy, it's like a big event that happens in the Warhammer universe. Um, most of Warhammer is not just the Space Marines, to be clear. But when people talk about Warhammer, they're mostly talking about the Imperium of Man and, and its Space Marines. So, you know, like, this this cinematic kind of evokes the vibe of the piece of media that we're talking about here if you, uh, if you have not seen it and don't know what we're talking about. It is very over the top in every way, on purpose. I never wanted this. I never wanted to unleash my legions. Together we banished the ignorance of old night. But you betrayed me. You betrayed us all. You stole power from the gods and lied to your sons. Mankind has only one chance to prosper. If you will not seize it, then I will. Yeah. Like the the like if you see like a giant robot mech in the Warhammer universe, you may look at it and be like, oh, this thing's pretty big. You gotta remember this dude's like 20 feet tall or something. So these mechs are the size of like a skyscraper. Their spaceships are massive city-sized cathedrals, like more like mega city-sized cathedrals that float through space. And these mechs are people. Like there is a human brain inside them, like some shit out of Dune. Um, like a lot of Warhammer lore is is taken straight from Dune. So the the Imperium is is basically also the Empire from Dune. In a lot of ways. So let it be war. The machine spirit. So yeah, basically in the future there's only war. And as you can imagine, like, the dude bros who love their escapist, like, hyper-violent masculine fantasy shit they love this they love it and i admit i love it too i think it's pretty cool i think it's pretty cool warhammer fans in the, in the comments will get mad if i stop it here helldivers let the seas boil let the stars fall. Though it's very it's over the top. The last I love it. Of my blood. I will see the galaxy freed once more. And if 
I cannot save it from your failure, Father, then let the galaxy burn. <coughs> Sorry, I was coughing from the coolness. So, um, yeah, this is like a pretty good sample of the tone and vibe of Warhammer. Um, to be honest, that was more exciting and, and awesome than it was like the level of gritty and dark that Warhammer is mostly known for. But regardless, that gives you kind of the vibe. I think you can kind of get why conservatives love it especially, and why so many chuds love Warhammer, and why chuds have become so protective of Warhammer. You have to understand that for a lot of conservatives, Warhammer is seen as, like, the final stand, the final keep of cultural popularity that does not have overtly progressive values dripping from it. Now, even though Warhammer has always been a, a, like a satire of militaristic jingoist fascism, at least they were able to look past it. And Warhammer, with such a large audience of conservatives and the story being such that the Imperium is effectively always the main character of the galaxy all the time, this means it's easy to pretend the writers are writing the story in such a way where you're supposed to root for the Imperium. And that they're the good guys who are like just annihilating the Xeno scum to achieve their natural birthright that is full galactic conquest. So I do think that uh, conservatives view Warhammer as a property, as something that they need to protect, gatekeep, and for all that is holy, keep it from becoming normie friendly. From the normies coming in and changing it or making it more popular outside of their little niche circle where they can feel special about being into something so nerdy, so hardcore nerdy, that a lot of people for a long time were like, what if you asked them if they were into it? Like, you ask somebody who wasn't into nerd stuff, are you into Star Wars? They at least know what Star Wars is. If you ask them like five or six years ago, are you into Warhammer? They'd be like, Warhammer? Like, the weapon? What? I heard about Warhammer for the first time, like, maybe four or five years ago. Like, maybe that's more recent. Well, technically, I heard about it, like, six years ago. But, I mean, it's been around. Don't get me wrong. There were lore channels and stuff, and you heard references to it. But, I mean, it wasn't everywhere like it is even now. And I think we're only at the beginning of its height of popularity that's coming. Like, we've got that upcoming Warhammer show being produced by Henry Cavill. Um, and I think he's going to play the main character. That is going to elevate the show into, or not the show, the uh, property of Warhammer into levels of popularity thought unreachable. Um, it's going to be fucking crazy when the normies get in. The gatekeeping is just not a thing you can do. You can't gatekeep a popular good thing. People are just going to discover it. They're going to like it. They're going to talk about it. And they're going to worm their way into the community. And if not, they're going to become the community. So, <clears throat> as you can imagine... The right got very upset when some recent news came out of the official Warhammer Twitter account. Announcing the full, complete confirmation that the Custodes, who are a group of high-ranking uh, like executors of the uh, Imperium's will, of the Emperor's will, um, the Custodes, or the Custodians, uh, that they have female members. Mind you, the Custodians are, like, bigger and badder than even, like, the iconic Space Marines. Like, down to the point of having, like, a foot of height on them, maybe. Yeah, they're the Emperor's personal bodyguards. Like, they are... They're his guys. They're his dudes. They're, they're like, his top-tier guys. They're his personal picks. So, Games Workshop, I think it is. Not Games Workshop. Is it, um... Yeah, Games Workshop. Um, has confirmed that, uh... uh there are female custodies. And that is something the right is not happy about. And if you're wondering why that upsets them, I mean, well, on one end, there's the people who are just blatantly misogynistic. And on the other hand, you've got the people who think of Warhammer as this. And they think women can't do this. Or it's more effective if it's dudes doing this. 
just for the aesthetic and immersion of hyper masculine grit fantasy, you know? I, I think that a lot of it is, for many Warhammer fans, just women present in certain situations breaks their immersion, immersion even though there are female soldiers in the Imperium. Um, like, when it comes the, to, like, certain parts of the Imperium, they don't like if there's women. Um, so this has been something that they're really upset about. They've tried to cope and say it's, like, a retcon, and that's what they have a problem with, but, like... Warhammer and retcon are basically like the same word at this point. So if that was your problem, then you you'd you'd had a problem sooner. <laughs> so it's like pretty obvious what they actually take issue with even then. But here we're going to be going over somebody's reaction to the Warhammer announcement. Someone who you might not have heard of in a very long time if you've heard of them at all. How many of you guys remember a guy whose nickname on the left is Nazi Thor? But his official name that he goes by is the Golden One. You'll see what he looks like in a moment. There's a reason why people call him Nazi Thor. But let's go ahead and read the uh, read his tweet. I can no longer endorse this heresy with my silence. Has the time come to say for farewell to Games Workshop and Warhammer at Warhammer? The ever-increasing wokeness of the company has reached a critical point. Perhaps this was brought about by malicious actors within the company, or perhaps by sinister outside forces. I noticed that BlackRock is a shareholder in Games Workshop. That's the Sweet Baby Inc. stuff, the, uh, the, the Gamergate 2 thing. Um, I have been a fan of Warhammer for over 20 years. My first fantasy, then the Horus Heresy in Warhammer 40k. So it pains me greatly to see this development. I can imagine that it also pains many within Games Workshop to be bullied by external forces like this. To be forced to butcher their own lore, and to see longtime fans leave in frustration. It cannot be easy for someone who actually likes the company and the hobby. Literally just women exist is, is what they have an issue with here. I somewhat doubt that the ones pushing the woke agenda care about Warhammer. It's all about a political message. Sad stuff. I am hoping for a redemption arc. Ah, uh, yes, the redemption arc of women bad. Realize that women are bad. That is your redemption arc you must go on. But I am probably hoping for too much in that regard. And then he attaches a nine-minute video we will not be watching all of, fucking obviously. I'll speed it up a little bit so we can get through it a little faster, but... Um, you're about to find out why he's called Nazi Thor. Uh, for those that don't know, this guy's like an open anti-Semite and white supremacist. Like, this guy JQs very openly. He describes himself as a Nazi. Um, he is, like, he's openly a race realist and against any form of immigration or race mixing, that kind of thing. So, yeah. But he does look like Thor. He is buff as shit and quite attractive, so... Of all the conservatives online, you can't really give this guy any shit for his appearance. Like, most of them you can, you know? Like, like most conservatives you see online, it's like, holy shit, you are a actual parody the way you look, saying the things you're saying. This guy, though, it's like, I mean, fuck, I can't, I can't really say shit, can I? All right, let's hear him whine about his, uh, his plastic crack having women in it. Has the time come to say farewell to Games Workshop? Now, perhaps you aren't familiar with... I'm really curious. What are conservatives going to fall back on that isn't woke now? Like, because conservatives really, really pushed the idea for a long time that Warhammer was the last bastion of anti-wokeness. So what media is going to become the thing they're going to gatekeep now? Is it going to become Harry Potter or something? Like, I don't know. That's not a deep enough lore universe to satiate them like warhammer is a big property that is overtly in their view conservative and popular but now that they know it's woke where are they gonna go what's their final fallback point gonna be culturally is there anything they could try to claim at this point anything popular anime but anime is is pretty woke like, anime, anime can't not suggest that a female character is a lesbian or bisexual. They can't not do that once. 
Like, you know it's probably just to appease, like, horny men, usually. But, like, it's always there. And that that counts, you know? That's pretty progressive. You've got episodes of, like, One Piece and, like, other animes from, like, the 90s and 80s and early 2000s depicting trans people positively. Like, anime is just... Like, Japan is, like, hyper-conservative in ways... And then also hyper progressive in certain ways. Like, what is considered the sort of list of values you have as a hyper conservative and the list of values you have to have as a hyper progressive in Japan is just not the same as in America, right? Like, immigration and race stuff are basically the same and line up pretty well. But when it comes to stuff like LGBT rights and whatnot, uh, secularism, th- that that's where things get a little muddy. In terms of what do the hyper conservatives and what do the like more progressive people believe? Games Workshop. Perhaps you aren't familiar with the Horus Heresy with Warhammer 4K. Even if you aren't, I would still encourage you to listen to my profound insight in this video because, as we are all appreciators of Hermetic wisdom, we know that as above, so below. So you can use this example to to analyze other similar happenings. So basically, I'm not going to go into all too much detail here because we're going to get to the point relatively quickly. So anyway, Warhammer. 40k, warmer fantasy, even the old world, it's gone increasingly woke over the last few years. And now, why is this, you might ask? And you can see many examples of this. So when they revamped the old world... Do I even need to argue against the idea that it's gotten woke? Like, I could just say, like, oh, no, it hasn't gotten woke. You're just, like, it's on your head. You're just freaking out over nothing. But, okay, sure, let's say it has gotten woke, whatever the fuck you guys mean when you say woke. How is that bad? It seems like when you guys say woke, you mean, like, representation has been shoehorned in or just is there. Like, you'll say it's that when representation is shoehorned in with some committee designed, like, we need to do this so that people will have this response um, type of thing. But, like, no matter what, regardless of what the evidence is, if there's minorities in a piece of media, it's called shoehorned in. Like, people call it and say it's shoehorned regardless. So... If the argument is that having minority representation is woke, we haven't really heard an argument for why that's bad. I can make an argument for why that's good. Even if I see the argument that Warhammer has gotten more woke, I can argue why it's good. How many young women who like Warhammer and are going to get into Warhammer as it gets more popular are going to see the female custodians and be like, oh shit. There are women in, in the Imperium who are like these jacked up top of the fucking com- chain of command right under the Emperor, um, like badass giga transhuman like space warriors. I want to like start lifting weights and get big. Like imagine you've got like some, I don't know, 13 year old girl who discovers Warhammer and finds about out about the female custodians. And she's like, I must become that. I go to the gym tomorrow and, and, like, by the time she's 20, she's, like, just ripped as fuck, inspired by the... Custo- Obviously, this is an extreme example, but what I'm pointing to is very real data that suggests that the representation of my marginalized groups, whether it be women, uh, racial minorities, uh, gender minorities, or um, uh, sexual minorities, like gay and trans people, etc., in media helps to melt away anxieties, bigotries, and stereotypes about those groups to an almost similar degree as having friends of those groups in real life. That representation matters, and the younger that representation is introduced, the less likely you are to have those negative beliefs about those groups because you don't have ignorance. You don't have... They're not like a thing that is weird or different to you, so you're not going to just make up things and have fear and and you know fear of the unknown type stuff but at the same time i think this guy knows that this guy's like an open nazi and J Cure. i think that this guy and a lot of conservatives who complain about wokeness know that and i think that's why they're complaining about wokeness i think it's less so that they are bothered by the presence of these characters, principally speaking, I mean, I'm sure it bothers them to a degree, but I think what really bothers them is that the implementation of characters from these groups that they don't like means other people, even younger people, are going to have potentially racist or bigoted biases 
melt away upon being exposed to these representations and thus they're going to have less people who are primed to agree with them in the future politically i think they know that this representation this wokeness is a good thing for these marginalized groups and that's exactly why they argue against it which i was excited for to begin with but then they started immediately the first new novel showing bretonian female knights and we'll get into this in a in a minute as well with female representation because it's absolutely not what it's about but first things first why it's not what it's about okay if it's not about women being represented then I don't know why this is suddenly the thing that made you mad at Warhammer because Warhammer has had loads and loads of contradiction contradictions and um retcons and changes over the years. It is famous for it. Famous for this. Warhammer is famous for this. The real Warhammer lore YouTubers, I watched some lore YouTubers on Warhammer that are the real shit motherfuckers. These are the guys who like pull out their old dusty 1990s night or an early 2000s Warhammer books to like that are about lore to find old fucking lore stuff for their videos to cross reference it with the wiki and current stuff. So it's like the these guys will tell you in an instant, yes, Warhammer lore has never been consistent, and this is by nature, and simply just a a, a relic of the fact that Warhammer is a multi-person universe, you know? There are many, many people working to make the universe of Warhammer. It has a bunch of authors. Many of them are just, like, super into one period of time within, like, the Imperium, and like, or they're just super into, like the necrons or something and so they just write about them like there are different periods of time there are huge events there are single planets where during a span of like five out of forty thousand years of storytelling you've got like 10 books worth of story to tell like that is how huge of a universe it is and it's a bunch of people working together to write that story and so yeah there have been many other changes before this. The idea that it's totally not about the um about it being women is fucking wild to me. The idea that they would try to claim that. Hold on. Does the Golden One try to claim he's not a Nazi anymore? Is, is, did he try to put the mask on? Because I remember back in 2016, he was like, openly he was a Nazi and, and with JQ. But maybe that's changed now. Maybe he put the mask on and he just does, like, pseudo right-wing culture war content these days. You know, when I covered that Brandon Herrera video of him, like, uh, in the Confederate flag shirt, talking about, like, he was working for that Confederate Heritage Society and talking about the War of Northern Aggression and stuff, the Brandon Herrera fans raided the fuck out of that video. They, it's the most dislikes I've had on a video in a long time. And all the comments are like, he made a joke once and he said a thing back when he was a teenager. You really got him. Man, You no wonder BreadTube is dying. It was like something along those lines. And it's like, why won't, why won't any of these commenters say what he says in those videos? Like reiterate it or defend what he said? Why is it always he made a joke? Or he said a thing when he was 19. I just wanted to reply to the, to each one like, what did he say? Repeat what he said. I, I almost just want to copy paste, repeat what he said to each one. Because like a lot of these content creators, you got to understand, their fans, if they knew the, the YouTuber they're watching was far right, their fans would not support them. And so their fans are huffing, huffing a lot of copium in order to believe that the person they're watching is not even conservative in some cases. So as a progressive YouTuber, you have to start by establishing the YouTuber that you're covering is a conservative at all. Because in my case, I have Brandon Herrera fans in that video comment section insisting Brandon Herrera isn't even a conservative. Like, these... YouTubers are very effective at giving their normie, centrist, and even left-leaning fans copium that will make them downright aggressive to people who call out their politics. 
I called the quartering a Nazi with Nazi sponsors on Twitter. Some dipshit did that to me where they said, so drinking coffee makes you a Nazi now, lol. Yeah, they'll never, like, state themselves what you are saying is the thing that makes them a Nazi. Because if they repeat it out loud, then they have to say out loud the thing that is objectively that bad like imagine if those commenters had to like outright commented okay just because he wore a shirt with the confederate flag on it and worked for a confederate heritage society where he produced a video telling people to join that confederate heritage heritage society sitting next to a statue of a confederate general and called it the war of northern aggression and like just because he did that does not mean he liked the confederacy like they couldn't like if they wrote all that out it would be the most ridiculous comment ever it would look like a joke comment but instead they had to word it as just because he said some things when he was a teenager it's like what were those things though what were those things but yeah people will legitimately die on the spear to defend the most obvious nazi evidence of their favorite youtuber is games workshop Broken ideology? It's no ideology, minimum volts. No ideology is what it is. Suddenly going woke or suddenly over the last few years. Yes, one would think that it's to cater to left-wing extremists and the left-wing extremists, they probably flatter themselves by believing so themselves. But we can look at- I don't think so. The major- I, I think that like based on what I've seen, especially of people who work at Games Workshop that I follow on Twitter, is that they just like are progressive leaning and they write their own stories that have their own like implications and they get like canonized and like yeah that's just kind of how it works the same tends to go for like progressives in gaming um like usually there's like a lot of people who are progressive on the team and that like has an effect on the choices they make um if it was a team of conservatives do you really think that the conservative game devs would just say okay master we will do what you say to like the people the money men upstairs telling them to make a woke game and then make the game woke like is that do they think that's a thing that's happening or do they think maybe the artists behind this stuff are themselves progressive it's just so bizarre you know what i mean anyway shareholders in games workshop and then we see a certain company, BlackRock. Now, what does BlackRock do? You might ask. Yes. Oh they my have God! A it's Sweet Baby, place, which rewards companies for being Sweet essentially Baby Inc. woke. Sweet Baby Inc. is back. Use that terminology. When I say woke, I mean extreme leftist. You can use whichever term you want. So when I say leftist in this sense, I don't mean someone who's concerned with working. Minimum volts. We are not here to listen to a fan's opinion on this. We are here to make fun of conservatives getting upset about this. Okay, this is not a Warhammer fan segment. Class rights or anything like that. We're talking about degeneracy, basically. So there is. It's got a really good message. Okay. All right. You, you usually recommend good stuff. I'll I'll give it a shot. We'll. We'll we'll hear. A good Warhammer fan's opinion on this because I don't know jack shit about Warhammer in the grand scheme of things. This guy definitely knows more than I do. Hey. How's it going? It's like 10 p.m. right now. It's probably not the best idea to do all this, but. I've been asked 9,000 times about the custodian thing, so I guess I'll, I'll just rattle through all the things and so I can, like, have a place to point chat, like a video. Ask me these damn questions. I can just be like, here, watch this and, and go away. Female custodians, thoughts. It's fine. It really makes no difference. You know, it's a giant 10-foot-tall person in power armor, regardless whether that has an S-H-E or an H-E, genuinely doesn't matter. It, it affects the game in no way whatsoever, nor really the universe. It's, it's nothing. It's cool. It really doesn't. Like, to be clear as well, the custodians, even though they're in a pretty important position, they don't do much. That's the thing. Um... The Emperor has spent the last, like, long time as a hussed out maybe corpse with some latent, latent psychic power kind of in it still, for sure, for like, t yeah, 10,000 years. So the Custodians have just kind of been chilling, like just guarding this really important guy on a really important throne in a really important place. Um... Yeah. The custodies were handmade by the emperor. There's no reason they can't be women. 
I mean, it, it would make sense if there were some women, right? Like, wouldn't the emperor realistically view... Like, like the, the emperor's ideology makes sense for him to have chosen women to have been custodies. Because the emperor's ideology is not that of the Imperium. The entire idea of the Imperium is that they, they took the ideology of a super-based awesome guy and warped it and, and perverted it into a religion, which is the thing that he was against. It's an analogy for, like, Christians perverting Jesus' messaging, if anything. Like, Jesus says, love thy neighbor, and now modern-day Christians, like, advocate for murdering gay people and trans people. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, Warhammer has, from the start, like, the creator of the Imperium and the story of Warhammer from the start has talked about it being a satire of conservatism and conservative, like, uh, glorification of war and stuff like that. It, it was also itself, much like Starship Troopers, a bit of a tongue-in-cheek parody of uh, uh, of the original Heinlein Starship Troopers, the idea of it in many ways. Um, yeah. Like, the right just isn't good at picking up on satire, and we're just sort of in this age of the right, like, def dying to defend that their piece of media they like isn't satire making fun of them. And then the me the creators of the media come out and say, yeah, we're making fun of you, and they get super angry and disown the media. What are they going to fall back on now? Like, Call of Duty, maybe? Are we going to go back to, like, Call of Duty being the conservative game? How are they going to do that? Isn't, like, aren't there, like, skins that are black women for Call of Duty now? Like, the right can't have anything these days. Can't have shit in the alt-right. <laughs> anyway. I really am, uh... I, I really am curious what you guys think of this whole thing. Like, do you think the right are going to just, like, abandon all forms of nerd media and shame nerd media now like are they going to try to pull the jock card and they're going to be like hmm we're the right we don't like nerd media and video games and tabletop stuff that's for woke people and nerds we, we like working out and fighting and shooting guns like are they just going to like go to being that that would go hard as fuck if they abandoned nerd culture and just became like the rough and gruff like we'll take guns from them too guns are next Regardless, though, I, I hope that's what happens. I'm curious what you guys think. Comment down below what you think. I like reading your comments, and your comments boost the videos and the channel, so it really helps a lot if you do. You can also leave a like to help me out. It really does help, regardless of whether you're watching live, watching a um, VOD, or watching an upload after it goes out on its own. And, of course... Please consider supporting me by donating, subscribing, or gifting a sub on my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live, or supporting me financially through YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, or Patreon. With all that said, regardless of how you enjoyed, thank you for watching. Don't forget to join my Discord or buy merch either. It really helps. Thank you. Alrighty. How do you guys like that segment? I feel like it came out pretty good. All right. I am very quickly going to use the restroom, and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to read the donos that have come in, and then I'm going to do the next segment. And then, for the last, like, I don't know, hour, two hours of the stream, I'm going to start a new save of Fallout New Vegas to properly really play through it. I've finally gotten visual mods set up, the game is stable. I had a couple crashes in my testing, but it was very sparse and completely manageable. Like, let me just relaunch the game really quick. Okay, we'll handle this again if the game crashes, like, in 30 minutes to an hour. It's really manageable. Xanderhal, Vosh made a really good point on this argument, how real fans like the fact that there is more representation and more accessibility. And I was going to bring... No, no, no. Anyone who's a real fan of any piece of media does not want... Have you guys seen me try to gatekeep from from you guys 
Do you guys doubt how much of a fan of that I am? No, I become a fan of something, and I think most people do, and they immediately want to get more people into it, you know? So yeah, I've, I, like, I've gotten a lot of you into that show. Question mark? F? Wait, is stream dead? What's going on? Def and a and F, what? What's going on? Excellent connection. What's going on? My internet's fine. That must be YouTube. That's got to have been YouTube doing some fuckery. That must be YouTube. That's... Yeah. That was YouTube. Just refresh. Refresh. That wasn't my end. That wasn't my stream. That wasn't OBS. That wasn't my computer. That was YouTube having a mini stroke. I didn't drop any frames. Um, no one's internet went to shit because it was m everyone's internet. Um, if, if that was the case. It was definitely just a YouTube error for a moment. But yeah, I'll be right back. I'm going to do our last segment of the day, and then we're going to play some Fallout New Vegas. I've got tons of visual mods set up. The game looks downright beautiful. I'm finally satisfied with how it looks. I've got it looking like a well-made graphically game from 2010 rather than like a really, really rough-looking game from 2010. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I'm excited to finally play through it and for you guys to see it. I started playing it a while ago. We never really got that far into it because I just got distracted by real life stuff. But now that things have settled down, it's time to finally finish that game. Lots of Gooner mods set up. No Gooner mods, actually. In fact, I can before I go to the bathroom, I'll read you my mod list. I will read you my mod list just for... Just for your information, you guys will be able to refer to this uh, clip in the stream whenever you're like, Oh, what mod list? What mods is Zan using? I want my game to look as good as Zan's. His game looks so good. All right. So, I have the Yuki Chigai unofficial patch. NVTF, New Vegas Tick Fix. iStewie's AI tweaks and engine fixes. Pip-Boy 2500A, the arm-mounted Pip-Boy. JIPLN NVSC plugin, Johnny Guitar NVSC, the mod configuration menu, UIO, user interface organizer, New Vegas Redesign 2, 2 revised, a little more lamp light mod, KNVSC animation plugin, Jam, just assorted mods, weapon mesh improvement mod, weapon retexture project, two bears high fiving, wasteland flora and terrain overhaul, New Vegas enhanced camera, enhanced blood textures for New Vegas, populated casinos, the Some Guy series, Russell, anniversary animation pack, anniversary animation pack, general bug fix, climate control NVSC, desert natural weathers, Brave New World, Awesome Staggering, Vanilla UI Plus, Clean Vanilla HUD, Consistent Pip-Boy Icons, Pop-Up Message Icons, Impact, Hall of Equipment, Vanilla Hair No Shine, Simple Open Strip, Simple Open Freeside, Player Voice Set Project, Improved Lighting Shaders, Companion Dress Up, Another Footstep sound mo Sounds Mod, NMC's Texture Pack for New Vegas, Poco Bueno Texture Pack, Desert Natural Realism Weathers, Functional Post Game Ending, MG's Neat Clutter Retextures, EXC tex Effect Textures Enhanced, Laser Weapon Iron Sights, Fixed ESMs, FNV Mod Limit, All Non-DLC Clothing Retexture 2K, All DLC Clothing Retexture 2K, the Living Desert, Travelers, Patrols, Consequences, incre Increased Population, and more. Ojo Bueno texture, texture Pack, Diagonal Movement, and High Res Eyes Replacer. So that is uh, a very bare bones mod list, I think. Uh, no, I used Mod Organizer. Uh, I did not use Vortex. I, Vortex, I used Mod Organizer. And full credit to Balthazar for helping me set this up. I do not know how to mod shit. Balthazar set this up uh, and, and walked me through it. And uh, if it weren't for Balth, I would probably have torn all my hair out trying to do this. Um, but, uh, yeah. Bare bones! Yeah. This is, uh, the bare minimum to get Fallout New Vegas both running and looking visually, uh, not like vomit. 
Sam, I also use mod organizer. Yeah, it's because you've got a huge cock. That's just, um, yeah, it's what, that's what people with huge cocks do. They use mod organizer to mod Fallout New Vegas. Um, only only the, the average size cock havers use Vortex. Anyway, I'll be right back. Uh, I, I, I'm going to take the big urination and grab a water from upstairs, and then we're going to wrap up our, our last segment of the day, and then we're going to play Fallout New Vegas. And hopefully you guys will be able to see the game looking more beautiful than you've ever seen it before. Because, uh, I mean, I put a lot of work into modding this game. I hope, I hope you guys find it very pretty. Um, I feel like I've overhauled damn near every texture in the game. The lighting's been overhauled. Um, interiors are overhauled. Like, there's more NPCs just inhabiting the world. For Their, their clothing's been overhauled. There's people, just more people. So, like, things don't look empty when they're not supposed to look empty. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'll be right back. Be patient while I'm gone. <clears throat> I burped. I've returned. I have returned, my friends. Hello, hello, hello. So good to see all of you. I think I'm going to side with the NCR, to be honest with you. They're not perfect. In fact, they're quite awful in many ways, from what I've heard. But, I mean... The Legion exists, you know? Like, there's it's not, it's not just what is best for me, it's what's best for the Mojave, you know? And the rest of the Wasteland. My character, I want to play a good guy courier on my first playthrough um, of the game. So I am going to play a good guy courier um, that's like siding with the not perfect but best option available that is the NCR that can bring order and like stability to many many people um independent Mojave not good for the Mojave probably not no no like what and and Mr. House just controls Vegas and then the rest of it's just gangs and like no like if, if it's an independent Mojave it's not gonna be for long Caesar will come the Legion will just take it it can't be independent. 
Independent is no house. Oh. You can do yeah, I guess you can do that. Okay. Listen, no spoilers. Don't tell me too much. Don't wanna don't tell me too much, but that's boring. Well, okay, listen. I'm gonna play what feels right to me in the moment. I don't know what choices are gonna feel best in the moment. I'm going to see how things unfold and try to play my courier as a good guy for my first playthrough. I will play through the game in the future if you guys enjoy me playing Fallout New Vegas that much. I will do a second playthrough where we do bad courier, where we slight, like side against with the Legion and we just take out innocent people, make evil decisions, rob people, take out NCR base camps, blow people up, um, and just go full murder mode at, like route, you know? Or maybe good courier, bad courier, and then murder playthrough. Maybe we do that. I don't know. Yes, man ending is canon by the show. I don't know if that's possible. I, I, I don't know if that's even possible considering the state of the wasteland in the show, but maybe. I don't know. I hope we get to see the Kings in season two of the Fallout show. I hope, like, Lucy just pulls up in New Vegas and they're just like, Oh, hey there, girl. What you doing? Oh, man, you lo you're looking pretty fine. You know? Just, just go for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we're, I'm, I'm a member of the Kings. You know? I'm hoping we see the great cons. Maybe. It depends. They're going to have to canonize an ending for Fallout New Vegas with season two of the show. They're going to have to lean into that full full send. There is no canon victor of Vegas yet. No one's... There's no canon vi like person who has it. Yeah. Man, my jaw keeps locking up. I hate it. I hate this red thing. I spit on you. Man, I love smiling friends. That new episode went hard as fuck. Gwimbley is the goat. Anyway, LarryBanks78, thank you so much for the $5 donation. I really appreciate it. Very based of you. Says, Major Kill and Bricky had the best videos in the subject, and they talked about how the lore of Warhammer constantly changes over the years, and as Games Workshop made it that way for the most part. Yeah, I mean, it's always been like that because of the nature of what it is is a multi, like, person generated story. Like, you, you just can't have everything be consistent and not have there be mistakes. So, yeah. Um,. I mean, if you think of them as mistakes, they're just inconsistencies and retcons, but that's what happens. Do you even like Warhammer? <laughs> I don't I don't know. Anyway. I saw One Piece 34. Pretty cool. I feel like Keanu Reeves can actually pull off the uh, the cool guy voice without it being cringy, you know? Like, Shadow talks a bit like this. But I feel like Keanu Reeves can talk like that, and we know it's Keanu Reeves, so, like, it doesn't sound cringe, you know? Like, it won't be cringe because we know it's Keanu, basically. He can pull it off. Dizzle McFizzle, thank you so much for the $10. I really appreciate that. Says, here's some cheddar for the dope segments. Also, that Fallout show is great. Yes, it was. Thank you for the cheddar. I really appreciate that. It means so much to me. It really does help, too. Thank you. Um, will he cock the AR like a shotgun, though? I sure hope he does. Just grabs the fucking, uh, like, muzzle, or was it the, uh, the handguard or whatever it's called? And just goes, it's fucking AR. God, so stupid. It's so fucking dumb. Why'd they do that? Why'd they make that decision? I can't get a minute man to work after I give the... I have no idea what you said because the heart thing like covers it up. I'm sorry, Emily Chertos. Xander Hall, something relevant to what you just said about the GOP and Jesus. I'm sure you've seen this before. What's this? Truly, I say unto you, whoever welcomes one of these little ones in my name might be letting in a murderer or a drug. 
Let's get her to a detention center. Republican you know, Jesus. So figure out what's going on. I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. And behold, now I'm all lazy and entitled. You shouldn't have done that. Do unto others as you suspect they might want to do unto you. What is a man profited if he gain the whole world but this lose so his real. soul? A lot, he has profited a lot. One soul for the whole world, that is an amazing deal. Why do you look at the speck of dust in your brother's eye but ignore the plank in your own? Because of her emails. emails. Yes. If a man strikes you on the right cheek, Turn to him and shoot him. That is the law. If you want to be perfect, go. Sell all the possessions that you have and give the money to a solid mutual fund. By this, they will know that you are my disciples. That you say, Merry Christmas! Christ Christmas! That's my name in there and I put it in there because I wanted it in there so we could all celebrate Big Boy Jesus' birthday time! Okay? Okay! Rabbi! Rabbi! Surely you can heal me! My child, of course I could. But who would pay for it? Well, I don't understand. I don't have any money. Yes, just... it is a sad story. But it does not make me responsible. It is super duper not my easy problem. for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. The richer, the better, really. I feel like the GOP should make their official tagline, it's not my problem. That, that would be so fucking accurate. Maybe get a solid gold house, just to be sure. Love your neighbor as yourself. Unless you are better than your neighbor. Then tell them that they're weird and you do not want to bake them a cake. You have heard it said, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say to you, any man who looks upon a woman with lust in his heart should go ahead and do what he's gotta do. Lord, your followers grow hungry and we have only this fish and bread. Oh, sweet. Oh, sweet. Real. God, that video is good. That's actually really good. I like that a lot. That was really, really fucking funny. Here, really quick, let me check my messages really fast. I'm sure... I'm sure my mom has messaged me. Uh, my mom is horrified by my reading of the Chugga Conroy article. She gave me live live commentary of, of her just being absolutely horrified at at me reading the Chugga Conroy article. The uh the the document. My mom said to me once that she never expected that, like, she would learn about horrific things from me as opposed to the other way around, you know? Like, like when she, she, she found out about, like, eating ass, and that's a thing our generation does. Like, she says that all the time, like, your generation eats ass. And, and like, she, and she's horrified by that. Like, um, yeah, that happens somewhat regularly through my stream. She, she's like, Alex, you're traumatizing me again. I'll just get that message. <laughs> she watches my stream when I make really raunchy jokes. Ah, oh, damn. I blinked out my vape. It's out of battery. I gotta go get that other one. Hold on. I'll be right back. Emergency, emergency vape. I waited a little too long to order new vapes, and so I ran out days ago, and I still have to wait till tomorrow for the new ones to arrive, so I'm basically just, just vaping fumes of small bits of nicotine, and mostly just burning cotton, I have to imagine. What's left in these things does not taste good, and it doesn't satisfy the nicotine craving much, but it's all I got. Until tomorrow when my new ones arrive.
Ugh. Tastes stale. Like they go bad or something. Anyway. <clears throat> Too often. The All right. One sec, chat. Got to prepare something. Monster energy. It's taking up room. It's a surprise. A surprise. Okay. Oh, a surprise? A surprise? Yes. Okay. Everyone, you all know what to do when I say action, right? Three, two, one, action. So, I know a lot of you guys watch me, and I know a lot of you guys, based on my comments, are not really big fans of guns, which is kind of where I diverge a lot from my own audience, because I myself am a very big fan of guns. In fact, here, here's my Glock 19 right here. Ignore that it's got some some grime in the uh, slide striations there. It's I haven't cleaned it in a hot minute because I haven't shot it in a hot minute, okay? Um, anyway, I love my guns. And I live in a very cucked, very left-leaning state where they have banned a fuckload of gun stuff. Down to the point where if I want to get, like, something that feels like a rifle that can go bang, bang, bang without having to cycle around with a bolt, I have to get, like, a conversion kit that's $350 I can slot this thing into. Where, like, th this grip... Here, I guess I have to hold it like this. This grip would be what you hold on to and this trigger and trigger guard would still be what you're like pulling and, and this barrel and everything is still what you're shooting through and this chamber is still what you're using but a whole thing is on is around it that is now like giving you a lot more leverage it allows you to hold it it basically turns it into a carbine into like a short barrel nine millimeter carbine and so i might get one of those it seems super cool and pretty much the only option when you're in a state where they've done assault weapons bans that, that just are extremely overreaching. Like, they are over the top. Like, I mean, banning every rifle that can go bang, bang, bang without a bolt that you have to, like, manually cycle around through. It blows. It really fucking blows. Which is why you might be surprised that I am happy Biden is about to restrict what some gun enthusiasts may call gun rights federally. You see, you might have heard of something called the gun show loophole. I'm willing to bet that like 90% of you in chat or more don't even know what it means though. So I'll explain. In America, in order to distribute firearms for profit, you need to be what is called a licensed FFL, or at least selling firearms in a large quantity for profit. I think there's a certain limit where you can just be a guy and do this, which is what we're about to get to in a moment. And a licensed FFL is basically a licensed firearms dealer, right? And when you are a licensed FFL, you are at risk of losing that license if you do not do a very particular legally required uh, series of steps required to like before selling someone a gun if you break these steps or someone who bought a gun from you th like going through those steps then proceeds to commit a crime and it's found that you did not go through those steps thoroughly enough or did something wrong you may be held liable 
or you very well might just lose your license, best case scenario. So there's a very strong incentive from licensed FFLs to actually legitimately follow through and make sure they're not selling a gun to a criminal or someone who is going to do something bad, at least based on the evidence and reasonable like background checks and assumption you have there, right? And so with that known, as you can imagine, there's not a lot of cases where people legally buy a gun and then they use it for a crime. Not super common. However, there is a common scenario that does fall into that category. And that are guns per that are guns that are purchased with the gun show loophole and then used in crimes. You see, the gun show loophole is not really a loophole so much as it is just the law as it is written. You've probably heard of gun shows in America. There are basically like a comic book convention, but for guns. Gun enthusiasts go there and they bring their guns. There are kiosks with a bunch of guns like sitting out for people to buy. Obviously, they are being sold by registered FFLs, so they're like having to go through the process and everything in order to sell their guns to people. However, if you go to a gun show, everybody else at that gun show who's a visitor most likely is also bringing guns, or at the very least, money. And what is not illegal and what does not currently require any form of licensing is two dudes in the parking lot outside, emphasis on outside of the gun show, because this is illegal already at the gun show itself. This always happens outside in the parking lot, like nearby in the, the premises, but not on it. Um, they just get together and they come to terms for selling a firearm between each other and maybe they do a trade or they do a sale and no one's ever the wiser. There's not even a legal precedent required for them to keep like a bill of sale or a uh, evidence or proof or like a paper trail of where this gun went because it was a private sale and the gun was already legally owned. That is how our current, yeah, it's like grinder for Republicans and their guns, exactly. Um, that is the gun show loophole. It is essentially taking advantage of the fact that individuals are allowed to trade, uh, inherit downwards, or sell their, their small quantities of guns for a small profit, or no profit at all. And this exists for good reason, because let's say you die or you are terminally ill and you want to leave your guns to like your grandkids or your like nephew or something like that, you know? Like they're an adult, they own guns, and it's like, okay, well I want my guns to go to the next oldest person in the family who's into guns. They'll take good care of them. They'll stay in the family. Um, that shouldn't require a bunch of paperwork, presumably. I don't know. Maybe it should. Uh, I'm actually curious what people in the comments section think of that idea. Um, but what Biden wants to do is close the gun show loophole, essentially making it so if you want to legally distribute or sell firearms for a profit, you have to be a licensed FFL. Now, if you're wondering why this is important and why I support this, um, I'm a legal gun owner and I don't like when guns are used to break the law, basically. I don't like when legally acquired guns are used to break the law and certainly not in the case of committing horrible atrocities. That uh, doesn't make me very happy. I'd actually seen an article about this. Can I find it? Can I find it? Apparently not. Well, my bad. Basically, I'll summarize it. There was this guy who was like the manager of an airport who was caught having sold 500 or something along those lines, like hundreds of guns legally using the gun show loophole because of the fact that like he didn't have to become a registered FFL, he was just like over time selling so many small quantities of guns that he was just making tons of money and selling loads of guns over time. He took advantage of the loophole and several of the guns he ended up selling were used in murders down the road. They were tracked back to him. One was used for a crime like near the Canadian border or like in Canada. And another was used, like, in Mexico by the cartel to commit a murder. So it's like, whew, 
Our guns get around. We export a lot of guns. Like, many of Mexico's guns that they have that are being used in crimes are illegal guns exported from north of the border down to Mexico from America. We're the ones giving them the guns. Uh, so, you know, it's honestly a fair trade. You know, we give them guns, we receive people. People are a resource, as Negan has taught us. I hope you all know. I hope you all know the, the important lessons taught by Negan. Anyway... There's a reason why I'm in favor of this. Biden closing this loophole means less ammo that hyper anti-gun people can use against gun rights existing. And me being able to own a gun for protection and, well, let's be real, not really so much for protection because that that's very much like the worst case scenario when I hope never happens and one that's very unlikely, mostly for fun. Most people who, who say the words, why do you need a blank have never shot a gun before because that they would never make that argument if they've shot a gun before. They would very quickly realize it's not a ne necessarily a matter of needing. It's a matter of, wow, marksmanship is fun. Wow, wait, 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 what do you mean I can't shoot the ones that go bang, 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 bang? Why? They banned those guns? What? I thought they just banned the guns that go brrrr. I, I didn't know they banned the ones that go bang, 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 bang. I wanted to shoot one of those. Ah, oh, fuck. That, that kind of sucks. Like, I guarantee you most anti-gun people, if they went to a range in America, would have that experience. They'd want to shoot, like, a certain kind of gun, realize it's illegal, and be like, wait, why is that illegal? They'd be like, oh, because this ban, that it banned all this list of guns. They'd be like, oh. Oh, I didn't know that these policies went so far. I think a lot of gun people would be disappointed when shooting guns once they realized how much those bans affect the guns that you can shoot and how much fun you can have once they get hooked because everybody always gets hooked regardless um let's see biden do some base shit in regards to gun reform this is the kind of gun reform i like to see administration is announcing a new rule aimed at closing what's known as the gun show loophole the administration says it's cracking down on the definition of what it means to be engaged in the business of selling firearms whether it's online at a gun show or at a brick and mortar store the rule now authorizes the ATF to require anyone selling guns. I, I can't get these. This is an AR-15. Can't get these in uh, Washington. They're, they're grandfathered in. So like the far right militias up in the mountains, they have like dozens of these and enough ammo to fill like a tanker ship. So if they ever want to do like a day of the rope and kill all the mi minorities and women and gay people, they've got everything they need. But um, besides the guns grandfathered in, um, that the conservatives all have. You can't buy AR-15s or anything that this gun, for example, what this gun does is every time I pull this trigger, I'm not going to because it's loaded. It's loaded and one's in the chamber. Um, every time I pull the trigger, it goes bang. If my finger goes fast enough, I can make it go brrrr if my finger goes fast enough. Uh, it can't though. Um, as fast as my finger can press this trigger, this gun will fire until it's out of ammo. Uh, or jams, which it doesn't really jam. It's pretty. It's a pretty reliable gun. Um, and so any gun that is like a rifle that can do that, banned in Washington. When they say assault weapons ban, that's what they mean. Any gun that can go, that is not a handgun, I should say, or a shotgun, that can go bang, 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 like fire each time you pull the trigger without some sort of like, bullshit you have to do with your other hand to cycle another round and then fire again like that's what they mean when they say assault weapons ban it doesn't apply to pistols usually thankfully but it will one day i know it's the slippery slope argument but i mean they started by banning the ones that go brr, and now it's the ones that go bang 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 what's next you know it's gonna be the little ones that go bang 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 and then it'll be the big ones that go bang Bang, bang, because a lot of progressives, a lot of anti-gun types want guns banned full stop. Like most of them don't even believe in like hunting being a valid thing to do or like sport shooting or marksmanship being a valid thing or reason to own a gun. I mean, look at a lot of European countries and Canada with a lot of them. 
you got to give a reason for why you want to own a gun, and it has to be because you you feel your life is in danger and you have evidence, which is kind of ridiculous. Like, ah, oh, yes, I want a gun because I believe I might need to use it on someone soon. That's the opposite of, of like, the culture around guns in America. Like, they won't sell you a gun if you suggest you might use it on someone, even for self-defense soon. They Like, they sell you a gun, they're, they're going to be asking you, like, you're going to be shooting steel targets or you're going to be shooting paper? Like, they expect you to just be taking it to the range and having fun with it. Don't even bring up the topic of shooting people in the gun store. Like, they don't want to hear about that shit. They do not want to, they don't want to even joke about that shit. To com commercially, that is, to register. Frankly, our gun culture in America is just not centered around it and do background checks on gun sales. The White House says this will prevent people from falsely claiming that guns are a part of a personal collection and exempt from running a background check on a buyer. The director of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and Explosives, Steve Dettelback, is here now with more on that. Steve, thanks for your time today. You know, the attorney general is calling this one of the most significant gun regulations in decades. How will these keep guns out of the wrong hands? Well, I mean, the way that the majority of legally acquired guns used in crimes were gotten was through the gun show loophole statistically. So this is immediately going to cut down on a massive stat of legally bought guns being used in crimes. When the left can point to, here's a bunch of legally bought guns that were used in crimes, that's an argument they get to use to sway people emotionally out of, with fear towards even harsher gun restrictions. This is a good policy. This is one that's just going to make American gun ownership safer. It's not taking anyone's guns away. It's not banning what guns you can have. Those are the gun those are the restrictions I don't like. It's just making your ownership of guns and the way you get them more strict and safer. That I'm okay with. That means less legally acquired guns being used in crimes and less justification to take our guns away. Well, thanks for having me. So fundamentally, this is about a large group of people uh, who are just simply not complying with the law. Uh, the law says that if you're... Well, they are. They are complying with the law. The law is not written in such a way that includes what they are doing as a crime. What they are doing is in, against the spirit of the law, but not the word of it. So it can't be like that you can't go after them unless they've been a, tied to another crime. What Biden is doing is including what they are doing into the wording of the law as being illegal, not just against the spirit of it. But gun enthusiasts in America are all about finding loopholes. They love their loopholes. The Glock conversion kit I was just talking about is an example of one of those loopholes. Um, there's always something, you know, gun enthusiasts and, like guns are such an American thing that finding ways to get around the bans will become part of a American gun culture faster than you can blink your eye. You're engaged in the business of dealing firearms. You know, your motivation is profit that you have to have a license. Licensed firearms dealers then are required to do a whole bunch of things to protect the public. They run background checks before they sell firearms. Uh, they sell firearms with serial numbers so that cops can trace guns used in murders and shootings. Uh, they uh, cooperate with ATF when they identify firearms trafficking. So, so what do you do if you can't pass a back? They also have like judgment that they have judgment calls they can make individually, like a licensed FFL. Like I said before, if you come into a gun store and you're talking about getting your first gun and you're like, yeah, I think my neighbor, like, I think there's some guy in my neighborhood. He's, he's kind of weird. I worry he's going to break into the house in the night and, and, and try to hurt me. So uh, I'm getting this gun. So if he comes in, I can fucking lay his ass out. 90% of gun store owners are going to ask you to leave once you say that or anything like too close to that. Like if you say something like, I want to feel safe or I want to be ready for the best case scenario to protect myself, you'll probably be fine. But I would not even bring up the topic of potentially using a firearm a gun store owner is selling you to like that you think it might be soon be used against a person they will not want to sell it to you um it's just not something that they're going to want to do a license ffl because there's so much liability you've just admitted to them there um and they have the final call on whether they can say leave my store or sell you a gun and it's their ass you know background check if you're a felon 
Uh, if for some reason you're not allowed to have a gun under law, what do you do? You go to the black market. And we've seen over the, the last years uh, that that amount of firearms that's being funneled to, to killers and gang members and felons. The problem is that the gun show loophole isn't the black market. The black market is underground illegal gun selling correct like it, it doesn't the black market like calling something a black market implies that it's illegal right that like if it was known about by authorities it would immediately be shut down the gun show loophole is called a loophole for a reason it's not like all these gun people have been breaking the law and no one's done anything about it this whole time it's that they've been breaking the spirit of the law because the law wasn't written in such a way to include what they're doing. And now that's changing, which is important because now what they're doing is beginning is going to become black market trading of guns and simply doing that will be a crime that if the police find out about, they can take action. Is there a way to serialize old weapons? Uh, yeah, the ATF or I, I, I think it's the ATF. Um, they're the ones who put the serial numbers on, right? I've got like three spa places where my serial number is on my gun. I've got it. Boop, 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 boop. It's under my barrel towards the front of the gun. They put it on my chamber. And I think they put it somewhere else too, like on the grip somewhere. Oh, yeah, they just put it on the slide right below the chamber. It's in three places on my gun. I've got three whole places where they put my serial number on my gun. So uh yeah. Yeah, it's uh it's uh, it's abundant. They 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 put it on a lot of spots in this gun. Through that black market, through people who are dealing firearms without a license has grown and grown and grown. So what we're doing here today is we're saying in as plain terms again, that under Congress's law, the law that Congress passed, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, that if you need a license because you're dealing firearms for profit, engaging in that business. If you need a license, you need a license. There never has been, and there is not some exception based on where you're sitting when you're breaking the law or what social media platform you use when you're breaking the law. The law is the law and everybody has to comply. And by the way, it's totally unfair to the thousands and thousands of law abiding firearms dealers out. True. It's unfair to us, like, law-abiding, by-the-books firearm owners and firearms dealers, the licensed FFLs. Um, it's unfair to all the law-abiding, by-the-books gun people who have to receive the bad reputation incurred by the actions of the bad apples. It, it sucks. We love guns because it's a hobby that's fun, and we desperately want more people who are currently... Their, their gun politics are motivated by fear and lack of experience with guns to just try it and experience shooting a gun. Realize that there's more to the hobby than this fantasy about using it for killing somebody or the fact that they're lethal. The fact that they're actually really fun to shoot, like getting good at them and like hitting bullseyes and like tightening your groupings. It's like not just the idea that, oh, I'm lethal now. That's not why it feels good or why it's fun. It's genuinely fun like th i feel like comparing it to archery is the best thing like when you point to something that's not been politicized like guns and say don't you think archery is fun like learning how to become an accurate archer like isn't there fun in that to you like when you think about that concept like starting out you're shit at archery you keep practicing and eventually you can like nail a bullseye and you impress people with your aim and your accuracy and and you can do like tricks and you know like that idea, the getting better at a hand-eye coordination sport is an appealing thing. That's part of the hobby of gun ownership. And I feel like a lot of anti-gun people don't even understand that. It's not something you can just hear and understand. It's something you have to feel and then you'll just get it, right? Like, you can't explain why a food that's really tasty is tasty to somebody until they've tried it and know for themselves how good it is, right? It's kind of like that. It's also a tool. Guns can be used for sports. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I consider guns more of a sport thing than a, like, killing tool, in my opinion. 
because most of my experience in real life with guns is a, a sport that they're they're for sports they're for going to the range and having fun shooting paper sometimes onions and sometimes steel plates out there who are obeying the law who are running background checks that this black market aimed at arming felons that are hurting people is out there competing with them and not playing by the same rules as Congress said. Now, Steve, the NRA says background checks don't stop criminals from getting guns. So what's your response to that and to critics who claim that federal... Bullshit. Background checks stop criminals from getting guns through legal means. If it is illegal to provide a criminal uh, who is already offended with a firearm, then there is liability on the person who sells the gun. There is a massive wall and barrier for legal acquirement of firearms for criminals and bad actors or people who have a criminal past. And thus, there is less ammo. Like, the NRA should not be against policies like this. I think the only reason they're against it is, like, that's their brand. I'm with you, Xander. I'm also a lefty gun owner, and common sense gun safety doesn't scare me either. Yeah, like, I think, like, gun safety reform is really good. Like, we should have safe storage laws, for example. Like, it should just be an instant felony to have, like, a non-secured gun in your house when you've got children. I think it might be already. If not, it should be. Just an instant felony. Like, instant 20-year minimum. Regulations like this violate the Second Amendment. This doesn't violate the Second Amendment. This It specifically says in black and white in the provision that this doesn't implicate anybody's Second Amendment rights. Uh, and it also is true that the many, many, many licensed dealers who are currently obeying the law, right, they're out there in tens of thousands of numbers available for people to make lawful purchases. Uh, the notion that background checks doesn't stop anybody from getting firearms is totally contrary to the data. Since the background check uh, has been implemented in the in the 90s dude watching these videos of guys just like eagerly trying out their new ar-15s just seeing how they like sit in their hands like just aiming down the sights and stuff just getting to know their new gun makes me fucking seethe so much i i'm seething i'm literally coping and seething right now this like one of these days i'll be able to afford that 350 glock dollar glock conversion kit and i'll be able to feel Kind of like I have a rifle. Millions and millions of firearm sales have been stopped uh, by the running of background checks. And let me say one other thing. Every time somebody proposes a way, every time Congress passes a law or considers a law that's going to save lives, uh, I hear people say, well, this won't solve the whole problem. Well, that's not the right test to be using. There are only two tests True. we should be using. One is it. Yeah, no, it's all about harm reduction. Like you don't. You don't just say, no, I'm not going to clean my house right now, even though you only have, like, five minutes before you leave the house. Like, you should spend the last five minutes before you leave the house cleaning some stuff so you come home to a slightly cleaner house and you can finish the rest of it later. Like, don't put it off because you don't have time to do all of it now. Like, the idea is that you slowly chip away at a problem, and if you can make a problem be less bad right now um, or in the short term so that it can be made even less bad in the long term... Uh, then you should do that. It's not like there shouldn't there's not some magical single gun policy or just or, or policy across the board that just magically fixes gun crime. For one, as long as guns are going to be widely available in America, which is a given due to the fact that even if we cut off all if we Thanos snapped all gun manufacturers right now, we wouldn't we wouldn't have the gun problem solved in this century. Um the guns outnumber people by like nearly a dozen to one. So it's it's quite substantial how many guns there are in this country. In fact, we're like leaking guns into Mexico and Canada and it's not even making a dent. You know, it's not even a drop in the ocean of guns we have in this country. So the illegal guns are out there. The legal guns are out there. Um, the idea of trying to just ban gun ownership and Gestapo like knocks on everyone's doors and flips their houses over looking for gu guns i just don't think is a good idea um i think that enforcing the safest possible gun culture in america possible is uh is a good thing for example uh switzerland i think it is is it switzerland i'm pretty sure it's switzerland has like a really strong pro-gun culture they've got like famous shooting ranges in the mountains that 
are like scientifically developed in such a way where you shoot over a busy highway, but the way they built the mounds is such that you could never arc a round into the cars on the highway. It's impossible because like the trajectory you would have to shoot at to do it, like you can't do it from the shooting positions. So like you'll literally be driving down that highway and you don't know it, but there are like anything ranging from 762 and 556 to 50 BMG rounds flying 20 feet above your car and then like soaring into the cliffside another 100 feet away. And there are multiple ranges like that in Switzerland. Their gun culture is so strong that they have made it so safe that it's dangerous, you know? Like, that level of so safe that it can look dangerous, but it's totally safe. That is what their gun culture is, is like there, and I love that for them. I want that for America. I really do. I'm really curious what you guys think about this. I think this is a pretty colossal Biden W, obviously. I think even... Um, you know, the lefties that typically disagree with me all the time will agree with that because they typically don't like guns because they disagree with me all the time. And, uh, you know, this, this is a, this is a gun reform policy. So, you know, I, I think this is a colossal universal W. I think many people will agree on this one. So I'm curious to see what your thoughts are down below in the comments. Not only do I love reading your comments, but it also boosts my videos and my channel whenever you guys do comment. So I really appreciate it. Also, if you want to help me out, you consider dropping a like. Every single thumbs up does the same. So commenting and liking obviously doubles that shit up. It really helps. And of course, if you haven't already, consider subscribing or the bell icon so you get more like notifications from my videos and you find out when I go live or upload. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, donate, or gift a sub if you haven't already and you've got the money for it. It really helps a lot in terms of keeping a roof over my head and my lights on and my internet bill paid. And, um... If you, of course, want to support me elsewhere, you can do so through YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, and Patreon. You can also buy merch, and don't forget, it's totally free. Consider joining my fan Discord, where we do pretty consistent watch parties, call-in streams, and all sorts of cool fan events. So, consider joining my Discord. It's super fun. And I hope you enjoyed. Alrighty, guys. What do you think of that segment? I feel like it came out pretty good. It's hip to fuck bees, is what you said. Okay. Okay. That's enough of, that's enough of you for today. Alright. Where's the Warhammer? I already did that segment, Big Dick, Big Dick Bandit. I did that earlier. You'll have to, like, clip through the stream to find it. All right, any pistol recommendations for home defense? So here's what you're going to want. If you must get a pistol, if you must get a pistol for home defense, I would not recommend a pistol for home defense, to be very clear. The only reason I have this for home defense is because it's better for, like, the range, and it's just my, like, fuck, I need a gun for home defense. I, I guess, like, this is my gun, so I'll use this if I have to. This is not what I would go for if I had better options. Or any other option, really. A handgun is not a good home defense weapon. A handgun is an out-of-home defense weapon if it is ever used for defense. Or a last resort. Um, handguns, good for concealed carrying. Like, if you've got, like, um, like a pelvis carrier, like or, or, like, one that goes in your back, just any form of inside-the-waistband carrier, I have one. Um, it's around here somewhere. It's right here. Here's my holster. As you can see, goes in pretty snugly. There you go. Pretty good. It, it, it these things clip onto my uh, waistband, onto my belt, and the whole thing, except for these clips, go inside my waistband, inside my pants, and just this bit comes out um, over the uh, the like rim of my pants, and then my shirt just covers the handle and everything and so if a situation ever happens it's just as simple as like one hand pulling my shirt up a little bit reaching in putting my hand around the grip and it comes right out but it's really 
like it's really snug in here. Like I can shake this, I can bounce it up and down, I can woo, woo It's in there pretty good. But yeah. Level two retention. Yeah, suck my dick, Nasdaq. I like level two retention. I don't care what anyone says. Level two retention is fine. It's fine. It's fine. If something happens, I need to be able to quick draw. Come on. It's fine. It's fine. Also, I'm cheap, Nasdaq. Listen, I, I, listen, listen, level three retention holsters, they get a little more complicated. The price gets a little higher. I, when I bought that holster, I'd already dropped $650 on my Glock. And on top of that, another, like, 50 fucking dollars on the case. And then my mom wanted a gun. And I had to pay for it for some reason. And her case. And the locks for it because we had to fly. So it had to go through TSA, which requires certain locks in a certain case. And so I had to pay for her $50 case. And her $250 dog shit Ruger EC9S that is... Oh, it's so bad. It's such a bad gun. I think I could probably go get it, but it's in the case. It's upstairs. Oh my god, it's so fucking bad. Oh, she left it here. She left it here when, when she went to California, back to California, because she just couldn't, she didn't want to fly with it because it was too stressful. Um, it's such a bad gun. I, I refuse to shoot it. I'd rather she shoot me with it than be forced to shoot it myself. Um, <laughs> like, it's, it's sharp. It, like, every angle on the thing is, like, specifically machine cut to be as sharp as possible. If you've shot a Ruger EC9S, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just a miserable fucking gun. Um, yeah. He paid MSRP for his Glock. Uh, you're damn right I did. You're damn... I might have paid a little cheaper than 650 It It was less... It was more expensive back then. Glocks were typically going for 700 back then. I think I got it like 50 bucks cheaper than usual. I got it a, at a Rural King. I got it like a bit cheaper. Yeah, Rugers are a mixed bag. It was the most budget Ruger you could get. My mom's trading it back in, like back to the same store. Gonna trade it back in and be like, um, can I get that back as credit and then put that into buying like a different gun? And hopefully she gets a Glock 19 like I did. Or even better, maybe she gets a shotgun. If I convince her, if I can convince her to get a 12 gauge shotgun instead. And you can get a nice 12 gauge shotgun for 250 bucks, by the way. Um, if I can convince her to get a 12 gauge shotgun, then we're 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 good. And that's what she needs too. She wants a she wants a home defense gun. She's like scared of something happening because she's you know a woman, and so she wants like a home defense gun, and that's a shotgun, not a handgun. I like my Ruger MK Mark II as a target pistol, but I wouldn't want to carry one or have to have it for home defense. Yeah. Mossberg 88 for $200. Can't go wrong with it. Yep. Yeah. $200 range is really where shotguns get good. Anything beyond like $300 and you're getting into diminishing returns unless you're going for like a 15 or 250,000 or 250 Two thousand five hundred dollar, um, uh, like auto shotgun or one of those like crazy fucking like I I forget what it's called. It's like in hell in hell divers. It's the uh, pump. Yeah, like a Benelli. Thank you. Get a Desert Eagle. I wouldn't double up on pistols just yet, guys. If any, if I ever get another pistol, next pistol I get will be a revolver. And it's going to be a, a full-on Colt Python. And I might just connect, collect all the snakes after that, for all I know. I really like big iron guns, you know? Um, but I, I thought about getting a revolver as my first handgun, but, like, Jesus Christ, imagine, like, trying to conceal carry that. A Glock was the right choice. Um, but I'm going to get a shotgun next. I'm just going to get, like, probably, probably a Mossberg 88, to be honest with you. Um, two hundred dollars, not too expensive. A good gun for shooting clays and for home defense. Um, and you know, I'll have my shotgun. I need to have a shotgun. It's that's the gun for home defense. And uh, once I have my shotgun, then I can be creative with gun buying. 
but this is a while ahead. I've got a gun. I'm happy with it. I have fun at the range with it. When I go, when my friends say, hey, you want to go to the range? I'm like, yep, let me bring my gun, and I'm all good. I've got my ammo. I've got my gun. I can cover my own fun. And, uh, you know, outside of that, any future gun purchases are, are going to be gratuitous purchases that I don't have the money for currently. I'm much more focused on other things, like the quail arc, for instance. Instance. Yeah, I love my 88. Hell yeah, Spongy. Alexia, thank you so much for the tier one sub. I really appreciate that. Thank you for the $5. Very kind and based of you. Very pog. I love that for you. Thank you. I hope you appreciate your tier one sub. Let me update the dono goal really fast. And then, guys, oh boy, oh boy, you know what time it is. It's time for Fallout New Vagina. Get it? The joke is about how uh, trans women that make up a large like large proportion of uh, Fallout New Vegas fans, they they get bottom surgery and then they have a new vagina. So it's Fallout New Vagina. <laughs> it's a clever joke. It's, it's multi-layered. To be fair, you have to have an IQ level of at least 160 in order to understand the humor of Xander Hall. You see, you have to have at least uh, Intelligence 10 to understand my humor. All right. Okay. I got everything set up for Fallout New Vegas in a moment, so I'm going to go use the restroom very quickly. And then we're going to go for it. Do a shotgun build for this playthrough. That's not what we're going to do. Um, we're going to go for, like, real guns. Like, that's going to be our, our build. Like, I'm going to go for real guns. Um, but I'm going to go for, like, cowboy guns, revolvers, some shotguns, maybe. I might, I might make use of shotguns for sure in certain situations. Um, and, uh, like, revolvers and stuff. And the occasional use of, like, the 9mm handgun, stuff like that. I, I can't tell what stuff is supposed to be vanilla and what stuff is modded, to be honest. I think the 9mm handgun, the um, 1911, is is vanilla. Um, but I've got mods that overhaul every texture in the game, pretty much. Like, you guys might... I'm sure some of you in chat will be big enough Fallout New Vegas fans that you'll spot certain textures and be like, oh, that's vanilla. Um, but for me, the game looks almost fully retextured, pretty much. And on top of that, new lighting, new everything. Anyway, I'm going to go use the restroom. I'll be right back. And it's time for us to start Fallout New Vegas. In fact, while I'm in the restroom, I'm going to make an announcement. Um, my mom just messaged me saying she loves her gun. It's super compact and all the edges are super smooth. That's part of the reason she picked it. I'm sorry, but I felt my fingers cutting open as I pulled the slide back to clear the chamber on it. Oh, God. Enabling and disabling the safety on it is like a, it's a three-step process, dude. My gun doesn't have a safety. The safety is between your ears, is what my uncle always said about Glocks, and uh, it couldn't couldn't be more true. All right, add everyone. Yo. I finished segments, and now I am starting my proper blind playthrough of Fallout New Vegas. I spent the last four days with... Balth helping me mod the fuck out of it to run and look beautiful. So come watch. And I think I'll include a screenshot of how I've made my game look. Just for a little perspective, you guys can check the Discord and see what kind of graphics I'm talking about of what I've achieved um, with my modding endeavors. One second. Bruh.
Okay. All right, I just posted an announcement in the Discord, and if you check the Discord announcement section, you'll be able to get a look at, like, how the game's looking with the mods that I've installed. I feel like I've made it look quite pretty. Like, I, I feel like I've done some damn good work modding this shit and getting it solid. Um, anyway, I am going to go use the restroom. I will be right back, and we'll be starting Fallout New Vegas. Be patient. New Vegas time. It's time for New Vegas. Now remember guys, I am still mostly blind on this game, so... Outside of what happens after Novak, I don't really know much. Outside of, like, memes. So try not to spoil anything. On accident. I, I imagine some of you might, like, it wouldn't be on purpose, it would just be an accident, I feel, for most of you. Um, however... I will occasionally ask you guys for help, and feel free to, um, you know, meet me at the level of whatever I ask for, right? Like, if I ask, what will happen if I make this choice, non-rhetorically, like, if I'm, at, if I'm like, chat, what will happen if I make this choice, I legitimately want to know. I want to know the consequences of the choice so I can choose accordingly, but if I don't ask that, don't tell me, because I want to see my consequences happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, get, the backseat gaming needs to be consensual, indeed. Um, we are making sure he's using Wild Wasteland, right? I will not be using Wild Wasteland. Balth told me what that was. Balth also let me have access to forbidden knowledge on how to make a really good base level character. Um, and that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a really good base level character. Okay. Launching K or NVSE. Fallout New Vegas is launching. Bum ba ba bum. Bum ba 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 bum. Zan, you are now Google. Cool. Okay, one second. There's a couple things I gotta do. Cobalt Swiftpaw, thank you so much for the tier two sub. How many months is that, by the way? I don't want to undercredit you. Hope you enjoy that tier two sub. Said you said these vapes are nicotine. Have you ever considered switching to pod systems like Caliburn? They're cheaper and less wasteful. Pod systems. I'll have to look into that. I'm not really a, a vape pod guy. I hear those are like actually worse for you than just normal vapes somehow. So I don't know. I'll look into it. But thank you for the tier two sub. Just one month. Ah, oh, thank you for the ten dollars. It's very based in pog of you. It helps a lot. Seriously, it means a lot to me. Let me update the dono goal really quick. To reflect it, thank you kindly. And then, yeah. Let's get into Fallout New Vegas. Why don't we? All right. There's no way they're worse. I'm referring to the ones where you buy coils slash pods and fill it with your own juice. Oh, those, yeah. No, I am going to get back into those, but honestly, maybe not. 
Like, it's such a big purchase to get one of those vape mods that I don't know if that's necessary when, like, in the relatively near future, I already plan on quitting. You know, I've already moved. It's just a matter of, like, saving up and getting a good backlog of content for the next few months um, so I can, like, take a good week or two off streaming without too much of a hit to my channel and just go through nicotine withdrawal the whole time and quit, like, cold turkey. It has to be cold turkey. I have to be able to count days since I've had nicotine, in, like, entire, and just suffer through the first, like, three to five days badly and then, like, make it to two weeks, and at that point, I think I'm good. After two weeks, I should have kicked it, mostly. Sounds good. Quitting is the goal. Uh, whatever helps you get there. Thanks, Cobalt Swiftwell. Sp spending money on a new vape mod will not help me get there, though. So, yeah, it's basically that. Get the patch, man. You know, don't give me advice on this right now. We're, we're starting Fallout New Vegas. You guys calm your little, your little booties down. Calm your little booties down. All right. Let's uh, see. Here's my Fallout mod manager. But now I'm going to switch to game capture. I'm going to switch to Fallout New Vegas. I'm going to switch the game audio to Fallout New Vegas. Okay. I'll make the game a little quieter, like, on the audio thing, but I'm gonna change the volume of the game itself to make things a little quieter, too, because I know things are loud. I know you can't see the game right now, it's because I have it tabbed out. Fallout New Vegas is that that kind of game where if you tab out of it at all, it closes it. Like, it, like it minimizes completely, but here we go. Yay! Look! Look! But no, seriously, I can, I can demonstrate it here. If I tab out right now, yeah, you can see it just completely... It, well, actually, no, it continues to show. Even if I switch to this? Oh, uh, yep, see, there you go. Yeah, so even when I switch to that, it does it. It's really weird. I think there is a mod that fixes that, though. I think there is a mod that fixes that. Really quick, I'm just deleting the test saves I made for testing these mods. So now we should be... One sec... We should be all set to go now. So I'm gonna go ahead and make us a new, a new save. It has begun. This intro is really good. I've watched it a lot on YouTube. This casino's real, in real life, it's called Strat. You can see it for like miles around it in Vegas. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to watch, or not to watch, to get this guy's fucking armor. I want that. I want that. You motherfuckers better be my guide on how to get that armor. There it is. Vegas. These guys are like the, Ro the Roman Legion LARPers that keep slaves. That's me! Why am I dressed like a farmer, though? War. Like, why is the why is War Courier Six changes. dressed that way? When atomic fire consumed the earth, those who survived did so in great underground vaults. When they opened, their inhabitants set out across the ruins of the old world to build new societies, establishing villages, forming tribes. Listen to Ron Perlman, everyone. As decades passed, what had been the American Southwest united beneath the flag of the new California Republic. I stand. Dedicated to old world values of democracy and the rule of law. I love them. I As stand the Republic them. grew, so did its needs. 
Scouts spread east, seeking territory and wealth in the dry and merciless expanse of the Mojave Desert. They returned with tales of a city untouched by the warheads that had scorched the rest of the world, and How's a the great volume? wall spanning the Colorado River. The NCR mobilized its army and sent it east to occupy Hoover Dam and restore it to working condition. But across the Colorado, another society had arisen under a different flag. A vast army of slaves forged from the conquest of 86 tribes, Caesar's Legion. Four years have passed since the Republic held the dam, just barely, against the Legion's onslaught. The Legion did not retreat. I love how this game takes American across landmarks the river, and makes them like strength. battles. Campfires burn. Like Training drums beat. Through it all, the New Vegas Strip has stayed open for business, under the control of its mysterious overseer, Mr. House, and his army of rehabilitated tribals and police robots. You are a courier, hired by the Mojave Express to deliver a package to the New Vegas Strip. What seemed like a simple delivery job has taken a turn for the worse. All right. Yeah, this is the game the transgenders play. You got what you were after, so pay up. You're this game. In the rain, if I beat Pally. this game and I'm still cis, then I'll know <laughs> I'm cis. Waking up over here. You guys can't call me an egg anymore if I beat this and I'm still cis. Time to cash out. Will you get it over with? Rip Maybe this guy's cons voice kill actor. people without looking them in the face. But I ain't a fink. Dig. You've made your last delivery, kid. Sorry, you got. I think that's the MacGuffin. The From where you're kneeling, must seem like an 18 karat run of bad luck. Truth, Truth is, is, the, the game, game was, rigged was rigged from, from, from the start. start. Everyone knows the meme. Isn't it canon that he shot us in the head twice? That wasn't just one getting shot in the head once. He shot us in the head twice, and we survive. That's real? It's not a joke? Okay. I hear people talk about it, and I can't tell if they're joking or not. Okay, we're about to get a lot of stuff from DLC shit. Oh boy. Yeah, whenever I made a new save to test these mods, I had to click through all this, guys. Tribal pay. Yep, yep. I have all the stuff. I have the ultimate You're everything weak. edition. How about that? Oh. Whoa, easy there. Easy. You've been out cold a couple of days now. Why don't you just relax a second? Get your bearings. Let's see what the damage is. How about your name? Can you tell me your name? Uh, we are not Courier, no. I think we're gonna make myself for this. Also, look at these, these graphics. Like I said, I actually feel like I did some good work here. Like, it's not next gen or anything like that, but like, look at how this room looks on default New Vegas and compare it to this, what you're seeing now. World of difference. World of difference. Fallout 4 graphics? No, not that good, but... It's it's an improvement for sure. I've me and Balth did a lot of modding to this game. We had to like wipe the board clean quite a few times. It, it's been a lot. I've got 40 hours in this game just testing mods. Okay. None of them are content mods by the way. They're just like vanilla enhancement mods for like graphics and some quality of life stuff. So, um no worry about any mods harshing my first time experience and ruining it. Like, I will effectively have the same experience as you. The game will just look prettier, which effectively simulates how you would have felt playing the game for the first time if you're an older person who played it back in the day. Um, okay. Xander is good. Huh. I can't say it's what I'd have picked for you, but if that's your name, that's your name. I'm Doc Mitchell. Welcome to Good Springs. Now, I hope you don't mind, but I had to go rooting around there in your noggin to pull all the bits of lead out. 
I take pride in my needlework, but you'd better tell me if I left anything out of place. I shall. All right, character creation time. Deal. I'm gonna be fast about this because I had to make a lot of characters testing, like making new saves to test this, like test the mods. So we'll we'll be quick about this. Uh, we are ca Caucasian. Caucasian. Um, what's a good starter? Starter meme. I feel like this is a good starting place. This is Fallout New Vegas. No amount of modding I can do can make the character creation um, interesting. I'm gonna be honest. This genuinely just looks close enough to being me that I'm fine with it. I'm just gonna change the hair, I think. Maybe. Is that the hair that I already like? I don't know. Eye color, I'll change. I'll, I'll take it to hazel, because that's my real eye color. Tone? Uh, oh. Oh my gosh. I'm pretty pale. I'll make myself a bit paler. Although I feel like in-game that might translate to being more pale than I really am. I feel like that's how pale I'll really be. Like, once I'm in-game, I'll look lighter, I think. Um, flushed? Am I very flushed? No. Nah. There's, like, blue light on me, so it's impossible to tell. Um, maybe a little. Maybe, maybe a little. Flush demo? Yeah. Okay. Now hair. Hairstyle? This is the big one. Tunnel snake. Obviously. We never could ever go with choosing anything else. Now, um, pompadour? Ironically enough, I'm not too far off from that at the moment. Uh, Sarge. Waster. This is honestly me on most days. Balding. Th th this would be me if I had worse genetics. Buzzsaw. This would be me if I just decided I had enough of my hair one day. Uh. Hmm. Smooth wave. This is the one. This is the one, chat. Nah, tell me this isn't the one. Tell me this isn't the one. This is the fucking one, dude. Now I look like Andy Dufresne. What the fuck? Andy Dufresne. I'd like to say Andy Dufresne did, was able to fight off those prison rapists. That's what I would like to say. Um, okay. Uh, pretty dark hair. That's about right, right? Yeah, yeah, about right, yeah. Facial hair. I think... Yeah. Yeah. What do you say, guys? I'd say it's as close to Xander Hall I can make on the Fallout New Vegas engine. Other than, like, really fucking with facial features and, and getting into, into scary territory. I don't like spending a lot of time in character creators unless I know... If I really put the time in, I can pretty much make myself. Like, the the Metal Gear Solid Five character creator was so good, I spent hours in that and practically made myself. And then got a mod that let me, like, skin, like, reskin Snake to be my skin, like, custom character. So my char- my char- like, Snake in the cutscenes was me. Like, my face. Like, it was scary how close I was able to get. So that was a really cool experience playing through Metal Gear Solid 5 as myself, pretty much. That was fun. Uh, like cutscenes and all, because they're real time. So yeah, it was really neat. Anyway, with all that said, uh, I think that's it. Are you sure you want to be this character? Yes, yes I do. Well, I got most of it right anyway. Stuff that mattered. Has war okay. changed? Not yet. No sense keeping you in bed anymore. Let's see if we can get you on your feet. Good. Why don't nice. you walk down to the end of the room? Over by that vigor tester machine there. Take it slow now. It ain't a race. Alrighty. Bro's gonna test my vigor. Blood bag. Medex. Take. Sunset sp sarsaparilla. Take. None of this is stealing, I guess. We're, we're just okay to take all this for no reason. I'm guessing it's because, like, oh, you start out, you're supposed to loot the first place you can actually walk around. Ooh, doctor's bag. Yoink. Ophthalmoscope? That's not real. That's not a real thing. I refuse to believe that. 
That's liberal propaganda. Ooh, looking good so far. Yoink! Yoink! Go ahead and give the vigor tester a try. Yoink! We'll yoink! Right yoink! If you get back all your faculties. Yeah, you're okay, man. Just, just chill out. I'm, I'm doing important work right now. I, I promise. I'm doing real important work. Ooh! Ooh! Ooh, sweet caps. Sweet, delicious caps. Gourd seeds? Sure. That looks like food. Sunset sarsaparilla. Ammo. Let's go. Radex rebound? Is that a drug? I think that is. Cram! Stim pack, bobby pin. Do I want to take dirty water? I guess I could sell it if it's not. Like, I guess it radiates you, but I could sell it. Like, dirty water has got to sell for something, I feel. Can't just be junk if it's water. Boil it? Oh, yeah, maybe I can boil it. Um, ooh, cigarettes, lots of cigarettes. Whoa, a lot of cigarettes, okay. Holy shit, wait, what? It's, okay, it's a crime to sleep in his bed, but he's fine with me taking everything he owns. I get that it's his boundaries, but... Those are some interesting boundaries he's got when it comes to his guests, I must say. Abraxo. I know that can be used for some crafting stuff, Balth told me, but I don't feel like carrying it right now. I don't have a lot of, like, room. <laughs> you know? Crispy squirrel bits, dirty water, iguana bits. Wasteland omelet. Make yourself at home to a whole different level, true. You wouldn't think a doctor would have so many cigarettes, but who am I to say anything? You do as the doctor says, not as they do, okay? You do as they say, not as they do. Okay. Let's go test our vigor, I guess. Did we get everything? Nothing in here I need to <clears throat> borrow? <gasps> yes. Okay. Have I borrowed everything? Is there anything here I need to borrow? Guys, I'm not stealing. I'm borrowing. Okay? It's called long-term borrowing. If you weren't so woke, you'd know about this. We can chat later. The sooner you finish these tests, the sooner you can get out of here. All right. I'm going to quick save just in case, because this game can crash. It's known for it. It's not unheard of. Whew! Okay. All right. Here's what we're going to do with this, all right? We've got five points to spend. Balth told me a pretty good build to go for. Because, like, you level up and you get to allocate points into these things, kind of. Um, stats associated with them. So, like, it's not like you're stuck with what you got, right? So I think I'm going to go with Barrel Chested just for a decent inventory weight boost right off the bat. Um, I feel like that'll help a bit. You know, just a little extra inventory weight is nice. Um, I'm not going to go melee, so I'm not going to go send it super high. But I like the inventory weight. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a very good. Um, perception. Explosives, lockpicking, energy weapons, accuracy, and compass range. Honestly, I can drop... Nah, I'll, I'll keep it at Wary Trout. That's a good perception level. Endurance. This is a big one. I'm gonna go tough as nails. I think that's what Balth told me is good. Perception kind of useless, not gonna lie. Perception is unironically useless. Wait, really? Fully useless? Alright, I'll go with Death Bat then. We're going like some psycho meta build here, what the fuck? Okay, I'll go tough as nails for endurance. Um, it is not, oh no. I always bring one or two attributes to three or four so I can have multiple things at eight or one or nine or ten. Point buying, it's like D&D. Yeah, yeah, it is. This is a real RPG, this game. This game is a real RPG. Doesn't perception help with spotting mines? What? 
This game of serums? Oh, it's got all sorts of serums and juices and goos and, and, and effluviums. I would drop perception to like three. Okay, so we'll go, we'll be a squinting newt for our perception. That sounds good. Endurance, tough as nails is solid. Charisma. What what am I doing charisma, Balth? What do you what do you think here? I want like a good solid starter character. I know I should max out intelligence for, for big XP gains, though. I need to max out intelligence big time. This is talking and bartering, yeah. Companion nerve. Ooh. I didn't know there was something like for one, companions, and two, your companions have nerve. Interesting. The meta for Charisma is 1. Charisma can be pretty OP, actually. But the meta is 1. I assume because you can increase barter and speech, right? Charisma affects basically nothing. But barter and speech are big. Like, barter and speech checks are like... Half this game's speech checks. You know, aren't they? I assume you can up them, but don't you want them to be high at the start? I always go for Charisma of 7. Items will get you to the max effectiveness without easily... Amount easily on accident. Well, I don't want to sequence break anything here. Remember, I'm not trying to sequence break. I'm trying to have a solid character for, like, a normal... Intended playthrough of the game, if that makes sense. <coughs> Xanderhal, that just affects your base, which you can boost with tag skills or taking the skilled trait. <clears throat> okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. I'm going to drop this down to, like... <laughs> I guess we'll drop it down to one. Sure. One... Char this is literally real-life my charisma. This is my Riz. Intelligence. All the way to ten. Omniscient intelligence. Our science? Baller. Our repair? Baller. Medicine? Baller. Maximum skill points. We should also get more XP, right? Do we get more XP f because our intelligence is high? Or is it just we get more skill points when we do level up? Regardless, worth. If both is the case, then super worth. More skill points? Okay, so yeah, I just get more skill points for my XP, not more XP. I thought you got more XP. My bad. Still, worth. Worth. Agility. Guns? I'm doing a guns build, remember. Should I go for cat-like, maybe? Or is this just, like, a nothing trait? Bow. Bow. I would pick luck up to seven and agility to six. Six agility. And seven luck. Okay. Six strength, three perception, seven endurance, one riz, ten intelligence, six agility, and seven luck. Lucky number seven. That works. I'm special. All right, let's do it. Look at that. Maybe them bullets done your brain some good. Hell well, yeah. I know your vitals are good, but that don't mean them bullets didn't leave you nuttered and a bighorn or dropping. What do you say you take a seat in my couch and we go through a couple of questions? See if your dogs are still barking. From what I've seen, this game goes from being like hilariously, like the voice acting is hilariously woody and like bad-ish, but not, but in a really charming way to, like, insanely good. Like, the, the voice acting range in this game is wild. Like, you'll meet a character and it's like, oh, this is fantastic voice acting. Sometimes the voice acting's amazing from clips I've seen. And sometimes it's like, hello there. I am a ranger for the NCR. Is there anything you would like to talk about today? And it's like, oh. Okay. All right. I'm gonna say a word. I want you to say the first thing that comes to mind. Dog. Feed. House. Uh, shelter. Night. Uh, sleep. Bandit. Crush. Light. Beam. 
mother. Jeans. It also okay. rhymes. Now I got a few statements. I want you to tell me how much they sound like something you'd say. First one. Conflict just ain't in my nature. This straw uh, disagree. I ain't given to relying on others for support. Uh disagree. I'm always fixing to be the center of attention. I'm a YouTuber, so yeah, I have to agree to that. I'm slow to embrace new ideas. Strongly agree. I suck at learning new I things. I charge in to deal with my problems head on. Uh, sure, yeah. Fairly. Almost done here. What do you say you have a look at this? Tell me what you see. I... I don't really see anything there, to be honest. I don't see any of these things. I'll say an angry two-headed ant, I guess. I don't know wh where. I... Okay, I don't know. A chemical... A broken... Sh I don't... Okay, yeah. Angry two at a Okay. Ant. How about this one? That's a ship at sea. Last one. We literally installed a mod. I know you guys can't see it so well because my camera is covering it, but we got a mod specifically for this option. Uh, this option is not there by default, but it is literally two bears high-fiving. I don't know how that's not in the game as an option by default that is what it is and uh yeah well that's all she wrote i don't have nothing to compare it to so maybe you'd better just have a look at the results see if it all seems right to you okay what should i spec into here balf what do i put my three points into Balth is not here. Balth has left us. Well, what kind of skills do you want to do? Um, okay. I, I down the, like, as I go, I plan to max. I want to have high sneak because I need to be able to sneak around. All those stealth boys are a thing. Maybe I don't need that because stealth boys just turn you invisible. So I may not need a high sneak to do, like, basic stuff. I can up it as I go if I need to. Speech needs to be high for speech checks. Science needs to be high for terminals and shit. Um, I don't know if repair is super important. I can up that passively. I'm not going melee. Medicine, I feel like I can up passively. It's just sort of how much you heal from stuff. Uh, lock picking needs to go up for literally picking saves and locks. I need to be able to do that. Guns, I need to up like at least passively to get like stuff up. Repair is very important. Okay. Um, explosives I need for skill checks and all sorts of things. Uh, I'm not going energy weapons, so this is not a big deal. And barter I need for certain checks. So I honestly feel like I probably want to go speech, barter, lockpick. What do you think, Bouth? Speech, barter, repair, lockpick, and speech? You think instead of barter, I go repair? Okay. That, that seems decent. Works for me. All right, I'm gonna finalize it. Here we go. Before I turn you loose, I need one more thing from you. I got a form for you to fill out so I can get a sense of your medical history. How's the Just volume? Just formality. Ain't like I expect to find you got a family history of getting shot in the head. Like you can hear the music isn't too loud above the characters or my voice and the voices are loud enough to hear you're not having to strain or anything we're not going wild wasteland i know what that is it's like hardcore mode or some crazy remix shit um we're not going wild wasteland grab skilled yes yeah, skilled is big skilled is big and what did you recommend before it was like skilled and small frame right because most of these are really bad. Small frame, yep. Yeah, okay, I remembered. Yeah, so skilled and small frame are what we're going with. Hell yeah. Yeah, we got twink build, guys. Twink build! See, it's just like me in real life. Although my frame's actually quite large. It's just the everything around it that's not. 
Um, anyway, let's start. I think we got it. All right, I guess that about does it. Come with me, I'll see you out. Hoarder gives you more inventory space, but penalizes you if you're not near your maximum inventory space literally all the time, which is like, what's the point of that? That's literally like a trick point, isn't it? Like, isn't that literally like, you're too, like, you're stupid if you take that? Because, like, think about it for five seconds. Here, these are yours. Was all you had on you when you was brought in. I hope you don't mind, but I gave the note a look. I thought it might help me find a next of kin, but it was just something about a platinum chip. The platinum well, ship. Well, if you're heading back out there, you ought to have this. They call it a Pip Boy. I grew up in one of them vaults they made before the war. We Vault all got leather. one. Ain't much use to me now, but you might want such a thing after what you've been through. I know what it's like having something taken from you. And put this on too, so the locals don't pick on you for lacking modesty. Never was much my style anyway. Aw. Thanks for patching me up, Doc. Uh, don't mention it. It's what I'm here for. You should talk to Sunny Smiles before you leave town. She can help you learn to fend for yourself in the desert. She'll likely be at the saloon. I reckon some of the other folks at the saloon might be able to help you out too. And the metal fella, Victor, who pulled you out of your grave. Anyway, you ever get hurt out there, you come right back. I'll fix you up. But try not to get killed anymore. Hardcore mode? No. No, we're not doing hardcore. I like how it's no. Recommended. Hell yeah. We're free. We're free to go into the world. At this point, pretty much, like, the game just lets you go and, like, do whatever the fuck you want. I don't need this ma- I, I don't need tutorials, motherfucker. I've played Fallout games before, just not this one. Um, okay. I honestly think my go-to weapon right now... Holy shit. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the 9mm pistol. And then... I know. I know what apparel is. Ooh. Value by weight is 16 to 47. So is this better? Lightweight leather armor? It seems it is better. Cool. Alrighty. Do I have a cowboy hat? Guys, I need to get a cowboy hat. At all costs, we must acquire a cowboy hat. Alright. Before I leave this place... I'm gonna quick save. Before I leave this place, I'm gonna talk to him. I think he has more dialogue. I expect you'll be wanting to go outside after being cooped up for so long, but if you have any questions, I'll answer what I can. Uh, I'm not hurt. I need medical? No, I don't. Tell me about yourself, Doc. Well, I already told you I came from a vault. After that, I was a traveling doctor for a spell. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Most folks out here ain't educated, so people with medical know-how are hard to come by. I found Pocket that I rules. could help a lot of people with what I knew, and that was all right with me. Eventually, I went back and married my childhood sweetheart, and that was the end of my traveling days. Didn't miss it none then. Still don't. Nice. Medicine 30. Ooh, I've already got a high enough le medicine level for a skill check. Isn't it customary for a doctor to prescribe follow-up medication? Dog. Holy shit. This is an RPG. This goes crazy. Well, Doc, isn't it customary for a doctor to prescribe follow-up medication? Of course. You've been through a lot. It ain't much, Give me but drugs. These will do you right if the pain flares up. That's crazy! Free stim packs and XP! Dude, this game. Oh, this game's already off to a good start for me. Holy shit. Uh, you said before you had something taken from you. Well, ain't we all, right? That was a long time ago. I don't pay it much mind anymore. What town is this? This here's Good Springs, named after the water we got here, just down the road to the southeast. Good Springs Source, they call it. 
It's a quiet town, and that's how we like it. We don't go looking for trouble, though occasionally it sees fit to come looking for us. The hilarious thing is, guys, Good Springs is real. Like, the layout of it is accurate. Easy Pete, who hangs out outside the saloon, is real, based on a real guy. Um, I think it's called, like, it's called, like, the Prospector Saloon in-game, and it's called, like, the... It's called something else in real life, but it's close to that name. And it's the same building, same everything, and they host a Fallout fan event there. I really want to go to it. It's a Fallout New Vegas fan event. The Good Spring Cemetery on the hill where the Courier, um, Courier 6 gets shot in the head. Um, that's real. Um, it's, like, up on a hill, and there's, like, the graves and stuff. Um, on top of that, the layout of the map of New Vegas is literally the real layout of Nevada and the Mojave Desert around Vegas. I looked at a map of the game, and then I overlaid it, like, looking side to side on both monitors at, a, at Google Maps. You can go from Good Springs, follow the road down to the, um... The pass, the mountain pass, where, like, the NCR is set up with that big statue, if you remember. Um, that mountain pass area is, like, right on the border of, like, California and um, uh, uh, Nevada. The town in between, I can't remember the name of, is, is like, real. And that's the border town. I think it's Nipton or, or Novak or something. Nipton or Novak. And then if you go out east... You eventually get to, it's either Nipton or Novak there, head out even further and you get to like Nelson, even further Boulder City, uh, Hoover Dam is obviously where it is geographically in Vegas, like the entire map, all of the labels match up perfectly with real towns and cities. The only thing that's different here is the size, like the map is not the size of the real area of Nevada. But the layout, geography, and, like, positioning of where everything is, like, the order you go to things, the physical landscape and what is represented is pretty much fully accurate, just scaled down. And I fucking love that. It means in real life, I can go on a road trip where I go around the entire ring that makes up this map and visit these places in real life. I think the DLCs go into, like, I know one of them goes to, like, the Grand Canyon or something, that's one I'm excited for, like the Grand Canyon in this game. Regardless, um, sorry to, to stunlock so much, but you know I'm excited to play this game. I've been very excited to finally play it. You know, I've been modding the fuck out of it for days, troubleshooting, trying to get it to work, get it to look this fucking pretty, um, and and now I can finally play it, and you guys get to watch, and I want to talk about it. You know. Plus, the show was so good. That final ending shot of the show made me immediately install New Vegas. What else can I tell you, or what else can you tell me about Good Springs? Well, there's a general store just up the road run by a fella Maybe named Summer Chet. Star. He don't got nothing fancy, but he's got your basics covered. If you're looking to wet your whistle, just past Chet's is the Prospector Saloon. The bartender there, Trudy, knows everyone in town. Other than that, there's not much to see. Just people trying to scratch out a living. Quintessential quaint little town. Quaint little starter town. I love it. Um, I can't wait to go to Good Springs in real life. Could you give me the rundown on Good Springs one more time? No, I don't need it again. I guess you can make characters repeat themselves. Who was it that rescued me? That'd be Victor. Curious fella. He's sort of odd. And I don't just mean because he's a robot. I couldn't tell you much about him. He's real friendly, don't get me wrong. You just get the sense that that ain't the whole picture. Just a feeling. He keeps to himself, mostly. You want to know more about him, you'll have to ask him yourself. He has a shack on the southern edge of town. Okay. Um, any medical supplies? Tell me about yourself, Doc. Uh, anything? Oh, yeah, do you know anything about the man that shot me? I didn't see him or the men with him. You might ask around town, though. Could be someone saw which way they was headed. Your best bet would probably be Trudy, the bartender at the saloon up the road. If anyone saw anything, she'd know about it. Hmm. Okay. I don't need to buy anything right now, so... Uh... 
Okay, there we go. Goodbye. You take care now. God, so many dialogue options in this game. I love it. Real RPG shit. So I guess I can come back to him and I've got multiple options to, to, you know, fix myself. So I've experienced occasional crashes. They're not super common, but they usually happen when, like, you know, situations like what's about to happen. So if the game crashes, it's fine. I'll just restart the game. But I quick save first, just in case. All right. Time to see good springs with these graphics. Are you ready? Are you ready for the to see the beautiful graphics mods I have installed? Took a lot of work to make the game look as pretty as you're about to see it. No crash? I don't think it's gonna crash. Yes! Wow! Old World Blues, you've gotten a fragmented signal on your Pip-Boy, a coded transmission of some sort with a sad, jazzy undercurrent that makes her head hurt. As far as you can tell, it appears to be an invitation to the Midnight Science Fiction feature at the Mojave Drive-In. Please arrive early to catch the trailers. That's the Old World Blues expansion. Okay. Old World Blues loaded. Your level cap has been raised by five. The reunion. Your pit boy has received a signal. Coordinates that lead to the canyon wreckage west of Prim. Following the coordinates are the words Courier 6. It's signed Ulysses. The reunion. Lonesome Road loaded. Okay, so that's the Lonesome Road DLC. Happy Trails Expedition. Your pit boy has picked up a radio broadcast from the Happy Trails Caravan Company. They're looking for one more member for their expedition to Zion Valley. Oh, it's Zion National Park, not Grand Canyon. I just saw screenshots and thought it was the Grand Canyon in that DLC. Honest Hearts Loaded. Okay. Wow. The sky is less blue than it usually is. I feel like that's a less beautiful impression. Oh, there we go. Gunrunner's Arsenal. The ongoing conflict in the Mojave Wasteland has kicked major m weapon manufacturers into high gear. All major and minor weapons dealers in the region are rolling in new weapons, ammunition types, and modifications. Head to your nearest participating vendor to pursue peruse the merchandise. Gunrunner's Arsenal has been loaded. Are we safe? Are we okay? Okay, I think we're good. All right, guys. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, zoom all the way out. Nice. Okay. Look at that, guys. We did it. Oh, Sierra Madre Grand Opening. Your pit boy has picked up a radio broadcast inviting you to the grand opening of the Sierra Madre Casino. Dead money has been loaded. Once again, my level cap is up. Okay. Yo! You! Talk to me! Victor! Howdy, partner! Might the guy who I saved say me. you're looking fit as a fiddle? Bro, you look great right now. I, I, I made you look amazing with mods. You got like a colored TV screen and everything. Yeah, thanks for digging me out of that grave. Don't mention it. I'm always they ready to lend a helping hand to a stranger in need. How did you happen to find me? I was out for a stroll that night when I heard the commotion up the old bone orchard. Saw what looked like a bunch of bad eggs, so I laid low. Once they'd run off, I dug you up to see if you were still kicking. Turns out you were. So I hauled you off to the dock right quick. Damn, what a nice dude. Just, like, they totally just shot me in the head twice and buried me technically somehow alive, and I came back from that. Like, the courier is, like, actually, like, day zero him. Like, he was already him. Uh, do you know who this man, who those men were who attacked me? Can't say that I'm familiar with the rascals. Some of the fine folks in town might be able to help you out with that. All right, question people. Fair enough. How did you end up in Good Springs? I moseyed into town, oh, 10, 15 years ago. Before that, I... Um, I can't quite seem to recall. Odd. Anyway, it's a right peaceful town, and I reckon it's as fine a place to settle as any. Alrighty. I've never seen a robot like you before. I'm a Securitron. Robco Security Model 2060B. If you ever see any Yo, look, of my the little speaker is like bapping. Howdy. That's like a little speaker. It goes up and down when, when he talks, like when you see a speaker like bouncing. That's really cool. I just noticed that. That's really, really neat. That's such a small detail. Holy shit. 
How many of you guys have ever noticed that? That's crazy. All right. Goodbye, Happy buddy. Happy trails. So bro just happened to see it happen and, and saved me. All right. Burb. Oh. Burb doesn't like me, chat. Why doesn't the burb like me? Okay. We're supposed to go in here. <gasps> Easy Pete. So yeah, this guy is li this building is literally real. Uh, that building is real, and there is literally a spot right here where Easy Pete in real life actually sits, or the guy that inspired him. I think his name's really Pete, but I don't know if he goes by Easy Pete. Um, he might though. Uh, anyway, what's up, buddy? Howdy. What can Easy Pete do for you? God, I know so much about this guy just from memes and references. It's impossible not to know so many of these characters and groups and factions because of how much cultural impact this one Fallout game has had. My understanding is this Fallout game is so good that people who don't like the Fallout games love it. It's just like, it's its own game and has its own fandom separate from Fallout to a degree, which is um, a massive achievement. Uh, why are you called Easy Pete? Was a prospector until I decided to settle here to get away from the NCR. Now, we'll just take it easy and help out with the Brahmin and Bighorners. Huh. Uh, what do you use the Bighorners for? Meat and hide, mostly. Can't put a pack on them. They just lay down until you take it off. Like cats. find a bunch of wild ones high up in the hills, but gotta be careful around them. They can put up a decent fight if cornered. Are they like the mutant bighorn sheep? Or are they like... Yeah, because the, the other thing, the two-headed cows are Brahmin. Um, you are a prospector, like digging for gold and silver? Nah, nah. Means I poke through old buildings looking for working tech and such. Some folks just call it salvaging, but never like the term. Way I see it, salvage means it's broken, near worthless. Me, I look for the good stuff. Guns, chems, spare parts. Good money in it. Hmm. It Xanderhalt does not look that great. Uh, compare this to the original graphics. Like, literally, just compare this to the original graphics. Um, do you know anything about the people who attacked me? Um, did you ever find anything good while prospecting? Nope. Had a pretty good claim once, way out east by the river, but got run off by raiders. Eventually got too old to keep going out. Hmm. What's wrong with the NCR? Don't get me wrong. The NCR's got a lot of decent folk in it. Yeah, what's wrong with it? It's just that they make you part of them whether you like it or not. That's not a bad Towns thing. Towns like Good Springs and Prim don't stay independent for long. Not if you've got something the NCR wants. Still, the NCR keeps the Legion away. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to make... I want the NCR making people part of them, whether they like it or not, when the Legion is the other alternative. Because otherwise they get enslaved by the Legion, and then they become soldiers for the Legion, and then they start encroaching further west and enslaving more people, turning women into sex slaves, raping them on the daily, turning them into, like, breeding mares to make more men for fighting and more women for enslaving like the 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 legion is literally just the worst ever everything i hear about it is just monstrous so like yeah no i'm fine with like the no the ncr is neoliberal okay the ncr is not conservative caesar's legion is conservative the ncr is liberal and this wasteland needs some liberalism okay we can bring it, we can bring the leftism, the leftism's already happening on a small scale, I imagine, like, small, like, pretty much communist or socialist communities, but we're bringing the liberalism, okay? We gotta stop the Legion. Tell me about the Legion. I already know they're awful. They're slavers, led by a guy named Caesar, or Caesar. Not sure how you're supposed to say it. A couple of years ago, they tried to take over Hoover Dam. But the NCR beat them back. The NCR didn't or couldn't finish the job, though. The Legion's got its strength back and is getting ready for another round at the dam. 
My money's still on the NCR winning, but you never know. We've been hearing stories about legionaries on the Nevada side of the river, so keep a gun handy. You don't want to get caught by them. Yeah, yeah, I... I remember. When I played this game, up to, like, as far as I could get before, like, I just got distracted by real-life stuff and couldn't continue the playthrough, deleted my save, and we started over. From what I remember... The Legion, once they start, like, chasing you down, it's not fun. They're really tough. They're really hard to fight. Um, okay, what's so important about Hoover Dam? Okay, let's ask the obvious. The dam powers a lot of New Vegas, and then there's all that clean water lying in Lake Mead, too. Anybody who owns the dam owns the territory. Is the water in Lake Mead radiated? It should be. There's sh like, there's no reason to assume it'd be fresh, like completely fresh, and clean. Um, do you know anything about the people who attacked me? Uh, do you know anything about Victor? Well, we'll ask. Do you know anything about the people who attacked me? The one in the fancy suit seemed to be calling the shots. That's as much as I know. Other folks in town might know more. Word of advice, though: if you ever catch up with him, watch out. The man's got cold eyes like a snake. Can't be trusted, I'd say. You don't say. I've watched a fair few Fallout lore videos, and they mention New Vegas frequently. So I picked up on small bits and pieces, but it's so fragmented, I don't have a whole picture yet. You know, like, none of it really makes sense to me. I can't, like, I can't even consider it a spoiler, because I don't know what it's spoiling, if that makes sense. Um, do you anything about Victor? The machine? Harmless. No matter what Trudy says. She thinks it's hiding something. But I think it's just a broken down relic with no place to be. Alrighty. Well, goodbye. Keep your gun handy if you go poking around some of the abandoned places around here. Like the schoolhouse. Critters move in there sometimes. Okay. Well, I'm gonna quick save so we don't lose any progress. And, uh, hope we don't crash going in here. Yet to have a crash. Zero crashes so far. Let's keep the streak going. Let's keep the streak going. <gasps> Cheyenne, nice. stay. Yo. Don't worry. She won't bite unless I tell her to. The famous tutorial woman. Hello, Sunny Smiles. Um. I want to start, like, the conversation reasonably. What do you do around here? I hunt geckos, mostly. The meat's pretty good, and I can always find a buyer for the hides. I also help keep the town clear of rad scorpions and coyotes. Not many people live in Good Springs, so wildlife is always creeping in. Okay. Um, let's talk about the areas around Good Springs. Let's get the lay sure. of land. What do you want to know? Uh, what other towns are nearby? Southeast of here is Prim. Can't miss it. Since it has the giant old Prim. roller coaster right in the middle of town. The NCR's got an outpost there. That's if you follow the, the road north, you'll eventually hit Sloan and Quarry Junction. They mine rocks or something, but I heard they got troubles lately. I wouldn't head that direction if I were you, though. Got critters up there that don't take kindly to getting shot. Yeah, I'm very aware of the famous don't fucking go north, you go south and take the long way to New Vegas. I, I'm, that I'm well aware of. Uh, NCR? The New California Republic. Bunch of settlers and soldiers coming in from the west. Fixing on making Nevada their own. They can be right pushy, but the roads are safer because of them, so I tend to let it go. Not that I got a choice. They bring order. I like that. We like order. What does the NCR keep you safe from? Well, the wildlife for one thing. Rowdy locals for another. They're protecting their own. Just happens to help us. They've been holding off this other group from the east, too. Cool, cool. What do you know about the other group? It's the Legion, right? Got a funny name. Call themselves Caesar's Legion. Never seen them in these parts, so I couldn't tell you much. I hear rumors, that's about it. Supposedly, they keep slaves and they got some real nasty ways of killing folks. But maybe that's just something folks in the NCR cooked up to make themselves seem more useful here. Less uninvited. I don't think that's a lie. What kind of creatures are out there? Around here, mostly coyotes and geckos. The coyotes are pretty dangerous in large packs, but otherwise they're nothing to really worry about. The geckos aren't too tough, but they've got a nasty bite. I've heard about bigger, nastier versions out in the wasteland, but I've never seen them. 
Stick to the roads when you can, and steer clear of the hills north of Good Springs. The critters up there are big and poisonous. Yep, don't go north, I know, I know. That's all I want to know, let's talk about something else. If you want to know anything else, just ask. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I want to start a job right now, because I think there's something else we have to do. Uh, I need to get to Prim, can you suggest a route? Sure can. Take the road southeast out of town till it hits the freeway. Prim is a town with a roller coaster straight south. Can't miss it. NCR patrols do a good job of keeping the highway clear, but I'd keep your gun where you can reach it easily. You never know who you'll run into. Off the road, you'll probably start running into hostile wildlife. My advice would be to stick to the highway when you can. Okay, stay on the road. You won't have to fight as much. Pretty standard, I think. I'm a little short on caps. I don't suppose there's any work available. Okay. Doc Mitchell said you could teach me how to survive in the desert. Okay, after that, we'll do the, uh, we'll start a quest. Nice, our first quest. Dude, you guys can't deny I did not pick Wild, wa Wild Wasteland. No, that's like weird mixed mode or whatever. Um, you guys have to admit, these mods make the game look far prettier than, than vanilla. I saw how it looked in vanilla. This is far better. Uh, Doc Mitchell said you could teach me to survive in the desert. Yeah, I guess there's a thing or two I could show you. Sounds like you need all the help you can get after what they done to you. Meet me outside, behind the saloon. Alrighty. Hey, who are you? Howdy. Hey, howdy. Hey there. Hey there. Yo. Little we'll follower. Howdy. Howdy. All right, let me save my game just in case. No crash arena. Oh, yep, we got a crash. Guaranteed. Yep. Yep, our first crash. All right, start the crash counter. That was crash number one. We got crash number one. That's why we quick save before entering or exiting a door or after any significant progress. That's just New Vegas for you, man. If only they'd had more than 18 months to make this game, I guess, you know? This is why we copiously autosave. Or not autosave, uh, quick save. It begins. Crashes, one. Yeah, if it loads this screen, it doesn't crash. I don't know why, but it's like, it doesn't even load that screen and then it crashes. Okay, Sunny Smiles is here. Now, hey, girl. See the sarsaparilla bottles on the fence there? Take this and try to hit a couple of them. Right. Okay. That's the right idea. Bop. It's on the site. Bop. Start crouching down and staying still. It'll help your aim. Bop. Nice shot. Well, that's a start. But I don't reckon you came to me to learn to fight sarsaparilla bottles. Tell you what. I gotta go chase geckos away from our water supply anyway. Darn critters are attracted to it. Why don't you come along? Oh, hell yeah. We're killing... No, we're not ending the tour. We're gonna go kill some geckos. That's free XP and, and, and meat and... Yeah, we're gonna go kill some geckos. I'm in. Follow me. It's just down to the southeast a short ways. She's pretty. She's literally five. You pedophile. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go so hard on that on that meme. I realized like halfway through saying it how hard that bit was. Jesus Christ. Yo. Sonny, you keep your ass going. As you can see, I've got some mods that increase the amount of foliage. You know, add a little bit of next genification to the game. I think it feels a little better. Yeah, you can do this. You're, you're, you're doing it. You're doing it. You're totally doing it. You're totally doing it. You, green New Vegas. It's not green. There's green cactuses and the occasional green Joshua tree and green leaf. This is literally, like, the vision of the creators. And if you've ever been to the Mojave Desert before, I have. This is how it really looks in real life. And would look 200-something years after the apocalypse. So I like it. I don't care what you say. This is how the game should have looked. And it will look in my playthrough. The important stuff about this game that you guys care about, the story, though, is still fully intact, so it's all good. Hear that up on the ridge behind me there? We got some geckos to clear out. Bunch Let's of little go. monsters is what they are. Seems like Doc Mitchell treats more gecko bites than anything else. Let's kill something. Let's see something. if we can get a little closer. If we move quietly, we can get the jump on them. 
More likely to hit something vital that way. Okay. Yes, let's kill something. Let's kill something already. It's been forever since I've killed something. Okay, you're on. Go give him hell. Sneaky. Ooh, that missed somehow. Ooh, that hit. That missed. That missed somehow. That hit. Nice. Okay, crouching seems to be pointless. Let's just get closer. Yeah, get shot in the head. Uh, what? Sometimes your shots don't go where you think, because I think it's because aiming is actually a skill in this game, not just your own aiming skill in real life. Yeah, we take all that. We take all that. Yeah. Yoink! Okay, game wants me to go back to her. Sure. Sure. Fine. See? You're getting the hang of it. There's two more wells that still need clearing. You want, you can come along. It'd be worth a few caps to me. Oh, yeah, we're not ending this hurt. Let's go kill some more geckos. Shouldn't take more than a couple minutes, especially with two of us. Come with me. Not real life geckos, obviously, chat. We love geckos in real life. They're super cute. Like, look at this. This is added by a mod. Tell me this doesn't make this area look more, you know, unique and cool. The bushes, the grass. It's not green New Vegas. It's are. just not shit brown New Vegas. I get that New Vegas is iconic for its shit brown color scheme, yeah. but, you know, what if it wasn't ugly? Did you ever think about that? Is there an, any, oh, water valve? Yoink. Free water. Oh, oh. Get oh shit! There's a lady getting attacked by geckos. Uh, stay alive, ma'am. Ma'am, stay alive. Don't die. Try not to die. Yes. So, oh, did I shoot her? I might have shot her. I think I saw like a friendly hit marker that was like blue. Wait, really? No, thank you? I just saved your life. You're just gonna walk off? Holy moly. Okay. If you hadn't come here like you done, I'd be a goner for sure. I came up here to draw water, but here, you should have what I got. You look thirsty. See, this is why I play as a good person. Because when you're a good person, people just give you free shit. She's in shock, Zan. Give her a break. Yeah, you're right. I know what reputation is. I don't need to read this. I, I, I've i played other Fallout games. Good Springs accepted. Folks have come to accept you for your helpful nature. Damn, we're already making a good name for ourselves in Good Springs. That's great. I hope to be... Uh, what's the top level? It's like... Uh, idolized or something? I don't know what the term is. Um, but I hope to be that with Good Springs. Uh, ideal, idolized. Okay. Yeah, I want to be idolized by Good Springs. Wait, can I not talk to her? Thank you. Oh, okay. Well, all right. Uh, get home safe, I suppose. I'll save my game just in case it crashes. Now that was some good work. Even got a little exciting there at the end. Here's a little spending money for the trouble. One more thing Sheesh. I wanted to show you. Thought I might teach you about living off the land and making useful things for yourself. Interested? Couldn't hurt. All right, then. We'll need a couple ingredients to get started. Gonna want some Xander root and a Brock flower. Xander root? Now. I know I've seen Brock flowers growing up at the graveyard, and I seem to remember there being Xander root over by the schoolhouse. That goes Bring those crazy. on back to me, and we'll get cooking. This game was made for me, guys. How have I not played this game sooner? This game was literally made for me. That's fucking crazy. Jesse! Jesse, we need to cook! What? Whoa. Ha Am I having a new Vegas moment? I have an idea. 
Guys, I have a crazy fucking idea. Where is it? <laughs> you would think that'd send me flying. <laughs> yeah, you, you would really think that'd send me, like, flying into the distance, right? Huh. Huh. Alright, I guess I'll load my save. See? This is why it's good to frequently load your save. Or, or save your game, because then stuff now like that, that happens. that was some good work. One more. Th okay, we'll skip through that. Couldn't hurt. Alright, so we need to go get the Brock flower. See? You could have tried fast traveling. Oh. Yeah, you're not wrong, but we literally... We're, we're back. Like, we're, we're good now. Crash one, stuck one. Are we keeping a stuck timer, too? Uh... I feel like the stuck timer is gonna be... Oh, is that the same spot? God, that's a tempting spot. Like, that makes me want to climb it. I wonder if that's like a mod retexturing the surface of the rocks. Like, their shape. And it looks like it can be climbed, but it, it really can't be and you get stuck on it. I, I wonder if it's a mod thing. I doubt it. It's probably a new Vegas thing. Knowing this game. Just got so overcast. Holy shit. You know what? Nah, nah. We're not... We're, we're, we're keeping our sunny... Vibes. We're gonna we're gonna wait a whole fucking day for it to become sunny. What is the courier doing? He's just been standing there for 17 straight hours. Oh, now it's raining. Fantastic. No, we'll wait longer. We'll wait longer. Sure, sure. We'll wait longer. Yeah, wait for the sun to come out. He's just standing there. Okay, yeah. All right, well, we ended up making things worse for ourselves. Now we're just in the rain. Great. Ooh, there it is. Oh, oh. What the fuck? Hey, you can't tell me this game wasn't initially meant to be more green when there are literally giant grasshoppers that are, like, green. They definitely wanted there to be more green in this game than there was. Oh, did I miss? No shot. I missed a shot on a grasshopper. That's crazy. Whoa. No, don't hit me. Don't hit me. It's all good. It's all good. Nope, 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 nope. God, they skitter. What the fuck? How do you survive? I get a varmint rifle. How did it survive that? That was a perfect headshot, I feel. These reload animations go hard. Also modded. Is this the schoolhouse? Yeah, it is. Wait. You can go in here. Oh, I'm gonna save my game. Wait, did it not let me? Oh, okay. I guess it doesn't let me yet. Maybe I need to complete this mission. We'll go get the Xander route then. And I'll save my game just in case any fuckery happens. Yeah, the Xander Hall route is required. Oh! Like clockwork. Like clockwork. It's a good thing I hit save right then, huh? That's crash number two. To be fair, I think the rain caused that. Um, I don't think the, the game handles rain too well. I hate that it's even a weather feature in that mod. I wish it could be disabled, but uh, yeah. Crashes, no, we're on two. I'm curious if we'll break 100 crashes playing through this game. I legitimately think we're going to fast travel back. I like exploring, motherfucker. Um, I, I legitimately wonder if we'll hit 100 uh, crashes playing through this game. I feel like we've got to, right? Okay. Oh, we gotta go up to the cemetery for this next uh, plant. The Brock flower, I think she called it. Raw. Gosh, look how pretty this is. Oh, that, that's, that's a... Yo, Minecraft Joshua trees. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, oh. No, don't, don't. Oh. It almost stung me, bro. 
You know, the little ones are more deadly, right? This is where it happened. Wow. Okay, there's some... There's some little guys here. Hello. Hello. Goodbye. Dude, the cinematic kill cam. Fallout and its cinematic kill cams, dude. I love it. Hello. Can I introduce you to my friend Vats? Ooh, get fucked. Shot it out of the sky, bro. Hey, you want some of this? You want some... <gasps> Whoa, it was playing dead! That was not a miss. That was not a miss either. Oh, what? No way you're breaking already on me. What? Oh, it's shooting at me. It's shooting little things at me. What the fuck? Right, I'm killing your friend. But don't run away from me. Little asshole. Yeah, get on the ground. Bloat flies. The classic Fallout enemy. The first Fallout enemy you fight in every Fallout game if it's not rad roaches. Or I guess in this one we fought uh, geckos first. We actually broke the mold with this one. So innovative. Was there another one? Oh. Where did you come from? Okay, well you can occupy what was to be my grave, I suppose. Didn't even drop any meat. You wasted two of my rounds. This is the wasteland. I can't willy-nilly waste ammo like that. What the hell? Okay, we need to bolt our asses back to Sunny Smiles. Here's your grave, Victor. Yeah, that is my grave. Oh yeah, Victor's there. He, he just seems to make a patrol around town. I guess he was up on the top of the hill like that when all that went down. And so he saw me get shot in the head twice. <laughs> in lore, shot in the head twice. And then decided to help out, you know. Alright, so in lore, I have kept Sunny waiting for, like, a whole day for me to get these plants because I waited for the rain to go away, and the rain did not go away. She's gonna be like, bro, what the fuck? It's been a day, and it's raining, and I've been waiting for you. It's funny. I mean, it is the wasteland. Yeah, walking across the entire wasteland turns you into an entire into an entire waste man, as Uber Danger said. Most of what I know about Fallout New Vegas comes from Uber Danger videos about it. And even then I had to cut myself off because there's spoilers. Victor and Sunny should be companions. They're not? I felt like they would be. I feel like this is total companion setup. Oh shit. Oh, a radio. Is that copyrighted music? Probably. My streams never get monetized anyway. Hey guys, to fight against YouTube mercilessly ripping my money away that I would have made off ads for this stream because I heard like five seconds of music in a game. Would you guys maybe uh, donate? It really helps. I really appreciate it. You guys are super based when you donate. It helps so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, let's talk to Sunny Smiles. Let me see what you got. Yeah, these will do just fine. Just fine. All right, now. We're going to be making something folks on the trail call healing powder. Go on over to that campfire now. Give it a try. You don't. You're not the boss of me, woman. But I will do that, yes. Crafting. Your basic... Uh, types of objects in the world can launch the crafting. Okay, yeah, we, I understand crafting. I'm, I'm a gamer. I'm a gamer. We're gonna make our healing powder. We'll make two. Hold on, I'm gonna make gecko steak too. Hold on a minute. Yoink. Hey, that's not bad, see? All it takes to make a recipe is the right ingredients and the right know-how. Sometimes it won't be a campfire you need. Might need to do some work on your guns and ammo, maybe. Important thing to get is it's all the same idea. You just need to find the right place to set up shop. Workbench or reloading bench, whatever. Well, I hope that's enough to get you started. I'm heading back now. Hope I didn't miss anything good on the jukebox. Cheyenne would never forgive me. Hey, do me a favor. Trudy, she's the bartender up at the Prospector. Kind of the town mom. 
She likes to meet newcomers. She'd be cross with me if I didn't ask you to poke your head in and say hi. Yeah. Sure thing. Quick F5, just in case the game crashes. Hi there. Sticking around Good Springs for a while longer? Uh, oh, Okay. Yeah, I'm a little short on caps. I don't suppose there's any work available. Not in Good Springs, no. Damn. But if you're up for a little scavenging, there's always the schoolhouse. Most of what's in there is junk, there. but there's this old safe that even Easy Pete wasn't able to crack with dynamite. If you want to take a shot at it, take these. A magazine on locksmiths. If the lock's too much for you to handle, reading through the magazine might give you the edge you need. Oh, it's a temp buff to whatever stat you consume? Ah, cool. Yeah, that'll, that'll be handy. I can consume those before, like... Okay, so just a temp boost. So I can get that edge. Nice, all right. And the bobby pins. You'll need those to pick the lock. Be careful, though. Put too much pressure on them, and they'll snap. It's Bethesda lock picking. Even in this game. All right, I'll take a look at that safe when I have the chance. Always happy to help someone down on their luck. Goodbye. Until next time. Nice. Okay. Looks like the move right now is to head back to Good Springs. Honestly, I can probably fast travel there. At this point. World map. Yeah. Accepted. Guys, they like me in Good Springs. They like me. They know me. They know me. Guys, they know me there. Oh wait, no, we're not going we're not going into there yet. Actually, I want to take on the motherfuckers in the schoolhouse, but first, I just realized why was I ever using the varmint rifle? What is that? Seven damage? Compared to seven damage, huh? Oh, but this is automatic. And it has a higher crit chance. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather be using this. Yeah, this is the way better gun. It's a literal 1911 over a varmint rifle. You'd think it'd be better. Them got darn varmint. Yo, more Xander root? Win? Success? Alright. No crashy? Enter the schoolhouse? <clears throat> Woo. Oh, more of those praying mantises. Shit. Ain't no way a praying mantis the size of a small dog is shirking off 9mm 1911 rounds. By the way, 1911s don't shoot a 9mm or chamber a 9mm, typically. Like, people give Bethesda shit for not knowing their guns. Neither does Obsidian. This should not be doing as much damage as the Varmint Rifle was. Ooh. Ooh. Wait, what? Cherry Bomb? Are these junk or are they useful? I looted these when I was testing and they had the junk icon. I think these are junk. Are these like actual explosives I can use or are they just junk? Like vendor trash. That's true, Balth. Like, we, this is a real 1911, to be fair, which is, you know. <laughs> the animations are also good, at least with this mod. Craftable? Oh. Craftables. Oh. So, like, you use it to make bombs? Ah, okay. I see. I remember from Fallout 4, I think, had that. No, it's 76 has that, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Scrap electronics. I don't think I need that for anything right now. I'm not going to loot anything that I don't know what use I have for it, like, immediately. Because I, I have a decent memory, and this game's really distinct with stuff. Like, there's not, like, a lot of bloat to it from what I've seen. So I feel like I can go back to stuff if I need it. Take bobby pin. Take bobby pin. Those are big. There's not really much in here besides what's in that safe, huh? Can I open this? Yes! Okay. We have a high enough lock picking. Oh boy, am I good enough at Skyrim lock picking? Oh, turns out I am. 11 bottle caps, not bad. Some Mentats, pre war money, vendor trash, that's good. Stealth boy, and a super stim. Okay. You know, I see this as an absolute win, guys. 
We, 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 we stay taking W's. Oh, I forgot you're not running any house mods. It's going to take a while before you get your house in Novak. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, I wasn't even thinking about getting a house right now. I didn't even know that was a feature in the game by default because I know there are house mods. I thought housing was an entirely modded in feature and not in by default. So just the fact that that's a thing I can do is news to me. All right. I guess we got to talk to Trudy, right? She's the bartender lady who, like, runs the town. That's number three. That's why I always... Dude, I'm so smart on my quick saves, dude. I know Bethesda games. Or, well, I know, but it's not Bethesda, but you know what I mean. It's their engine. I know this fucking engine. I played Skyrim. I played uh, Fallout 4, and I played Fallout 3 as well. I know N76. I Well, 76 doesn't have this problem, but yeah. I know how this engine works. I know when you have to save. Bef otherwise, you're going to get a fucking crash. Dude, I am I am quick on it. That's crash number three, right? I think we're on number three now. Okay, let's hope we don't get it this time. They don't tend to repeat. It's like a one-time thing for no reason. Which is why I just think it's like random... I don't know. I'm done being nice. If you don't hand Ringo over soon... I'm going to get my friends, and we're burning this town to the ground. Got it? We'll keep that in mind. Now, if you're not going to buy something, get out. Oh, hey. What do you want? Bro was running past me. Uh, what was that you said about Ringo? What's been going on in the... I can just start friendly conversation. Let's start friendly conversation with this guy who is, like, giving a hard time to this nice lady. What's been going on in the rest of the wasteland? Same old shit that's been going on for years. The NCR and Legion are still fighting over Hoover Dam for some reason. Holy shit! I can have a whole conversation with this motherfucker! Tell me about the NCR. New California Republic. Nothing new about it. Just a bunch of people with money and power pushing everyone else around. They've got troops all over the Mojave. But it's a big desert, so it's pretty easy to avoid them if you want. What do you know about the Legion? I've run with some tough gangs, but I gotta admit, they all got nothing on the Legion. I hear they stick you up on poles and it takes a while to die. I ain't saying I'm afraid of them or nothing, but I'll be staying out of their way. I love that in this world, the concept of crucifixion is not like broadly known because Christianity's died out effectively, sorta. And so like the average person, when they find out about crucifixion, they're like, fuck! That- they kill people that way? <laughs> like, I love that. It's not, like, broadly known. Like, you hear about the crucifixion of Christ and it's almost been watered down how horrific of a way to die crucifixion is. Um, these guys- like, the- 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 the Legion does it. And in this world, it seems like people hear about that and they're like, Holy shit! Who would do something like that? It's like, yeah, people LARPing as the Romans would. Do you know anything about the Hoover Dam? Never been there since the NCR's got troops all over it. Must be pretty important. Um, what was that you said about Ringo? He's some traitor who decided he'd rather shoot than pay the toll for being in our territory. He's hiding somewhere in town. Oh, so you're Sir, just trying to hustle. Right if me and my guys shot the place up after we got payback on Ringo. What say I help you take over this town? This is the kind of RPG this is. Instead of nice response to, like, end the interaction calmly, like, neutral response to end the interaction calmly, but with, like, maybe he gives a mean or snide response, or I'm gonna kill you now and you kill him. Instead, it's like, say you and I take over this fucking town. Let's say you and I leave this place and we go make a plan to take this place over. I wonder what that path is like. Dude, I almost want to, like, go the evil path just for the intrigue of it. Because I know more about the, like, good path just from my, like, previous experience getting kind of into it. But I want my first experience to be the normal, like, good courier playthrough. And I, I will do a second playthrough where we just go straight bad. For sure. Uh, this area is your territory? It is now. Me and the rest of the guys busted out of the NCR prison east of here and took over. Now we're calling the shots. 
Hmm. They broke out of prison and became a gang. What were you in prison for? None of your damn business. You ought to know better than to ask a man that kind of question. Oh, a speech check. I just need to know if I should watch my step around you. Robbed some people. Burned some things. Killed a few guys. This is why you up speech. You get XP for succeeding checks, too. What say I help you take it? No, we're not doing that. Alright, I guess goodbye. Yeah. Go on. Go on with your day, sir. Hey. Alright, All right, I guess it's Trudy time. What's up, Trudy? Well, you've been causing quite a stir. Glad I finally Ooh, got to meet that. you. Welcome to the Prospector Saloon. After this conversation, I got some levels to allocate, young lady. Um... I overheard your argument. What was that all about? Looks like our little town got itself dragged into the middle of something we don't want anything to do with. About a week ago, this traitor, Ringo, comes into town. Survivor of an attack, he says. Bad men after him. Needs a place to hide. We figured he was just in shock. So we gave him a place to lie low. We didn't actually expect anyone to come after him. Where's Ringo now? He's holed up at the abandoned gas station up the hill. Why not just kill Cobb and be done with it? You mean murder him? That's not our way, even if oh. Cobb is scum. He can bluster and threaten all he wants. I like that the characters have, like, boundaries and morals, and, like, you can't just go, all right, let's just kill him. You know, it's like, all right, we've got to figure this out. Neat. What are you going to do? Some of the others, like Sonny, will probably stand up for Ringo if he asks for help, which he hasn't. Personally, I hope he sneaks out of town one night and takes the powder gangers with him. Powder gangers? Chang gangs, really. The NCR brought them in from California to work on the rail lines. Problem is, it turns out that giving convicts a bunch of dynamite and blasting powder isn't the best idea. It was a big escape not too long ago. Some of them stuck together so they could make trouble. That's what we're dealing with now. Hmm. Let's talk about something else. All right. Uh... Holy shit. Does good, does good Springs get many visitors? Mostly traders looking to buy bighorn or meat and hides. The traders are the main reason the general store manages to stay in business. Most travelers heading south on the I-15 just push on towards Prim, unless they're in desperate need of supplies. I see. Who is that man you were arguing with? He's a convict, just without the chains. Said his name was Cobb. Powder gangers is what they call themselves. Plenty more like him out there. Hmm. Um. I'm trying to track down the people who attacked me. Know anything about them? Not much, other than they're a bunch of freeloaders who expected a few rounds on the house. I was able to get them to pay up, though. Of course, one of the great cons did knock my radio to great the floor cons. by accident, and it hasn't been working since. So Benny hired the great cons just to be his muscle, I'm guessing? It doesn't really seem like he's actually that, like, big of a threat himself. Uh, did my attackers say where they were going? They were having some kind of argument about it, but the guy in the checkered coat kept shushing them. Sounded like they came in from the north through Quarry Junction. If that's the case, I can't say I blame them for not wanting to go back. How the fuck did they make it through the north? Why is that? That whole area is overrun with the kind of critters that just get mad if you shoot them. Merchants avoid that whole stretch of I-15 like it's radioactive, which it could be for all I know. What route was the courier taking? And where did the courier come from? Do we ever find that out? Because, like, we received at some point somehow the the platinum chip, right? That's the MacGuffin. Where did we start our trip? Like, how did we end up in Good Springs? Was that on our path, or did they, like, catch us and just drag us out to that cemetery like, from a distance. Doesn't seem like they would. Like, we, we must have been in Good Springs, or around, or on the road near it. Um, the courier was coming from NCR. We're, we're coming from California. You do know about it later? Okay, so no spoilers. Okay, sorry. I, I didn't know if that was something they actually tell us, or if it's, like, some hidden fan known and circulated lore. I, I don't know, you know? Um, that's what I'm interested in. <clears throat> so where were they headed? I didn't hear exactly, but the leader was talking about the strip. Fellow wants to get there and avoid the 15, he'd have to go east. Take Highway 93 up. Hmm. Okay. 
Oh, want me to take a look at your broken radio? Sure. The outside looks okay, but I think something broke on the inside. There'd be caps in it for you. I do like to hear what's going on in the world. And that Mr. New Vegas seems like such a gentleman. Okay. Do you know about the robot that rescued me? I know that thing as much as anyone else around here. It mostly keeps to itself, which is just fine by me. Hmm. You don't like him? It acts friendly enough, but I don't trust that whole cheerful cowboy act. I find it all very creepy. Hmm. How long has he been in Good Springs? It was here when I took over the saloon seven years ago. Some people have said its owner lived here, but no one knows who it was. Hmm. He said 15 years or something, right? What does he actually do around here? Other than rolling around once in a while, it doesn't do anything useful as far as I can tell. I don't know why it took an interest in you, but I'd be careful. It's never helped anyone before. Hmm. Weird how ominous that is. Like, it doesn't seem like there's a reason to not trust it. It saved me. It's, like, friendly. It's weird that characters are warning me about it. Like, it's never done anything to give them a reason to not trust it, but they just don't. It's, like, weird. Okay. Never mind, let's talk about something else. Like, it's clear Fine foreshadowing, I know. But I'm like, what, though? Like, what could be his perverse motive um, that, like, would be a problem for me, I guess? Um, anything interesting going on in the rest of the wasteland? There's always something interesting going on. But the biggest news has to be the coming dust-up between the NCR and the Legion over the dam. Tell me about the NCR. The new California Republic's got the most power in Nevada. Money, troops, you name it. They do what they can to keep things safe in the region. But if you ask me, they're trying to do too much. They're spread too thin. Hmm. Yep. Hey, hey, that's why I don't disagree with the um, Fallout show saying that the NCR fell. It makes sense. Like, I keep hearing whenever I, I would play New Vegas, they always mention the NCR being spread too thin, right? So it completely makes sense the NCR continues on that trajectory Regardless of the what ending you get, the NCR is on its way to death. It makes sense. Sad, but true. They couldn't sustain their expansionism, I guess. Damn spoilers, Anne. Oh, you hadn't seen the show yet? Who? I, I, okay, <laughs> I guess I'm sorry for spoiling. How can you tell, or what can you tell me about the Legion? Slavers, killers, and all other kinds of trouble. They dress up like Roman soldiers, so there's no mistake in it when you see them. The rumor is, is that the Legion is far larger than the NCR lets on, and that it's been due to luck that the Legion hasn't overrun the territory. That's probably true. That's probably true. They're called the Legion for a reason. That usually refers to a large number of soldiers. Why do you think the NCR and the Legion both want the dam? I'm pretty sure the NCR wants to hold on to the dam because it's one of the few places around that can make electricity. The Legion are a bunch of savages, though. No idea why they'd want the dam. Probably plan on destroying it or something. Hmm. Okay. What happens if I help Ringo? If you were able to get Ringo out of this mess, you'd have a decent reputation around Good Springs. I'd even set you up with a discount. Of course, helping Ringo would also make the Powder Gangers mad. And they've got a lot of friends out there. Hmm. So if I help Ringo... And Good Springs will like me more. What if I help the Powder Gangers? Don't know why you'd want to do a thing like that. Yep, you'd get on their good side, but people around here wouldn't appreciate it one bit. <laughs> I love just asking that question. Okay, show me what you have for sale. Got a special discount for you, after what you've done for us. Okay. Let's see. Is she selling ammo? Ooh, she's not. Ooh, Nuka Cola, yoink. Okay. Honestly, that's all I wanted. Nuka Cola. Um, what will I sell? Binoculars? That's useless. Broad machete? I'm not going melee. Laser pistol? Not going laser or plasma. Grenade rifle? That's useful, but that's also big caps. Not worth selling right now, though. Sturdy caravan shotgun. She doesn't have enough caps to buy that. The spears? Fuck these spears. Ooh, okay, so I can buy some stuff. Ramen steak. 
Iguana bits. Fixing things. Oh. Meeting people. We'll grab one of those. Salesman Weekly. I think that's barter boost. Scroll on a stick. Holy shit. How much can we buy? Some. I guess we'll buy some sunsets. Okay. Now we're... All right. Let's, like, completely rinse her of all her caps and take our, our loot and our lessened inventory space. Another satisfied customer. Our lessened inventory weight and... Be careful out there. Skedaddle. I won. I won that interaction. Okay, it's time to up my shit. Hmm. I want to boost guns. I'm tempted to because more damage. However... Speech up to 35, I feel, is a big early investment. That will help. Because speech checks are just everything. Barter... You're right. Barter should be 20. At least. Or maybe, you know what? I'm going to let speech be 30. Barter up to 25. And then I'll I'll put the extra point into guns. Just, uh, just I'll, I'll slowly trickle my extra ones and twos of points into guns and up each thing by like five or ten at a time. Zan get explosives to 30? <gasps> You're right, because I have to do the thing, right? There's that one quest that involves having a high explosive check for um, Pete, right? You're right. No, that's worth... What's it got to get to? It's 25. Got to get it to 25. Okay. Grah. We basically had to spend everything on barter. Or on explosives. Oh, well. Ooh. Okay, big. Big, big, big. We pick our stat. Swift learner? Yep, we get swift learner, I think. Or is it retention? No, it's it's Swift Learner, right? Swift Learner is the one I get. Bath told me Swift Learner, I think. Oh no, yeah, I have one point, so it's Swift Learner, right? Bath wouldn't have lied to me. Bath would not have steered me wrong. I'm pretty sure Swift Learner is what I want to go with. You guys probably want me to go with Confirmed Bachelor, so I do more damage against men, and then get the what is it, Lady Killer? Yeah, you want me to get these two, so I'm like a bisexual murderer. Why'd they draw her so thick? Like, holy shit. Like, god damn. Like, what the fuck? Like, god... Yeah! Damn! The fuck? What, like, like, Vault Boy looks like this? And then... She's just like, yeah! Damn! Okay. Alright, I think I go Swift Learner. Yeah. This increases my XP gain. Always increase XP gain. That's always a good option. More XP means more levels, and more levels means more XP, which means more levels, which means more XP, which eventually, when you can't increase your XP anymore, means more power. So that's what we do. Awesome. We won. Okay, so our current objective... Is that like a puddle on the ground? What the fuck? Yo, clean your shit. Um, okay, so I think... Okay, I think what our current objective is... Is we're gonna go talk to... Oh, yeah, that's why I save. That's crash number four, am I right? Four crashes so far in the same session. This is better performance than I had, like, vanilla, by the way. That's the funny thing. Like, in vanilla, the game crashes less. Or more. Without the graphics mods and performance mods I've gotten. After every significant interaction or thing, I quick save, and before going through doors, I quick save. Because it's always, like, after a big interaction, or, like, going through a door when it crashes. I don't know why. Oh, radio, you're right. Yes. I knew I was forgetting something. 
You're right, I agreed to fix the radio. Isn't it already on? Is it not something else? Oh, it's the... Oh, it would be over here. Oh, wait, the music's coming from this. Okay. I think I, I, think I was right the first time. You have New Vegas Anti-Crash? I think so, yeah. Oh my god, my nose. Ugh. Uh, repair of 20 or greater required. Repair the radio. I, I, I passed the check? Question mark? Let's go. Let's fucking get it. We're gonna save really fast, and then really quick, I am going to change my camera settings because the gain is super low. Uh, compared to how dark it is, and I need to adjust it for light. I also need to check messages briefly. My mom pretty much has a turtle. Um, wow, holy shit, that is a green fucking turtle. What the hell? My mom rescued a turtle. It happens often. Our, our, like Someone in our family rescues a turtle roughly once a year, oftentimes more. My mom found a little green turtle. Like a really green turtle. It's California is where she's at. So figure out what are the super green turtles in, in Southern California. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Back to it. All right, so we fixed her radio. Where is she? Wait, did she like leave to go home? Ayo, you don't leave on me. The only stable time I've had with New Vegas was when I played it in the Fallout 3 engine. That's crazy. Oh, everyone's going home for the night, huh? Or no, y'all got kicked out because the place is closed. What the fuck? I think these guys are new. I don't remember there being this many people here. I think these guys are part of, like, the more NPCs mod. They got kicked out because it's nighttime. And, and, like, the bar closed. And so now they're gonna, like, sit out and, I guess, sleep on the front. That's a really good atmosphere. Holy shit. Yo, what the fuck? Oh, thank goodness! You, come here! Can you help me? What's wrong? My girl is trapped by geckos on the ridge, and I can't get to her! Please! She's gonna die! Where is she? Go up the path, past the broken radio tower, and go to the right. They're at the top of the trail. I'll see what I can do. You will? Thank you for helping me. Please hurry. Howdy. Dude, what are you doing at... Okay. Fucking hell. All right. Where... Is it up there? Oh, wait, no. Hold on. Do I need to select the quest? Uh... Did they not give me a quest objective? Fuck him, save. Does he mean, like, back here? Unmarked, go to Good Spring Source. Okay, so it's back here. Yeah, I think I know what he's talking about. By the part... So by the spot where me and Sunny Smiles made the powder and the grilled gecko shit... <laughs> grilled, grilled gecko shit. Um, there was a fallen over watchtower, or, or like, like tower thing, um, like radio tower, and should be around here. I think that's what he means. Is that it? I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, it's the thing. Okay. Yeah, I know it's a meme song. I had to I had to listen to it for a second cuz the memes. Okay, so we're supposed to Is this even a path? Oh. Before you venture deeper into the wasteland, you may revise your character, rebuild char No, I'm I'm good. I like my character. We're good. Okay. 
Oh. Oh. Stuff. Nice. I got some Xander Hall root. Yo! Those things be zooming. Holy shit, can they not s <laughs> Bro! Just blasted it, dude. What the fuck? That was cruel. Am I... Oh, yeah, I think this is where I'm supposed to go. Uh. Oh my god, their run. Their run is so good. They look like how lizards run across water. God, if these were real and, like, actual venomous, like, little bastards you had to deal with when you were out in the desert, could you imagine? Whoa! Like, and they ran at you like that? Dude, nightmare fuel. Oh, I missed and hit it in the arm! In the leg! Oh, shit. Ah, uh, get out of here, you little bastard. Yeah, don't come back. Okay, it's coming back. Oh! Oh my god, I ran out of ammo. Oh, boy. Okay, guys. Shit's getting scary. Uh, oh wait, I've got tons of 10 millimeter. I'm a pistol guy, less so than a shotgun guy, so... <laughs> oh my god, this game's so good. This game's so fucking good. Goodbye. I hope your free trial of life was enjoyable, but I'm revoking it. Uh, we hunt them to extinction. Good, good, good. We would have to, yeah. They're kind of like Komodo dragons or something, dude. Like little venomous creatures. Whoa. Whoa. -ho -ho. Damn, they couldn't even touch me, bro. Send death claws at me. I can handle them. These things are basically just mini death claws. How much stronger could a big one be? <coughs> Shit. <laughs> okay. I guess this game has bear- Yep, this game has bear traps. At least I can disarm them. Okay. So yeah, this is one of those games that has fucking bear traps. Nice. Cool. Awesome. Pre-war baseball cap. Fuck that. That's not my Riz. That stuff down there? Oh, there's stuff down there. I see stuff. Take adventurer merc outfit. Maybe. Hold on. Is this drip? Is this drip delicious? Oh, that's not even good. Fuck that. Tribal raiding armor. I mean, that probably sells for a bit, so we'll hold on to it. Oh wait, there's something down here. There's something lethal down here, guys. What the fuck? <gasps> That's a family of the bastards! Okay. We need to stop these young geckos from exuding signs of life. Uh, oh, oh. Oh, little bastards jitter out of your aim. Just another day of killing young child animals. It's best to kill them while they're young so they don't get too attached to living, you know? The fuck? Okay, I think that guy might be hostile, to be honest. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for clearing out them geckos. Now I'll get to that stash. Oh, he didn't even have a girlfriend. I thought that was her dead. Oh, shit. Yeah, okay. So he's just full on an asshole, huh? Yeah, no, get on the ground, motherfucker. Dude thought he could step to me? Bro thought he could step... You sent me in to handle a problem you couldn't deal with, and then you thought you could 1v1 me. What? Where's that... Do you know power scaling? Like, wh why'd you just sacrifice yourself because you don't know how to power scale? Like, what the fuck? Okay, so yeah, there is, like, variant 
quality, it seems. This one does 15, this one's 10, so that's not even close to better. Weather is way better. Usually if it has a title, it's gonna be a better weapon. Those are kind of fallout rules. Time for cannibalism. We're not, we're not eating people. I don't think the good guy courier would be a cannibal. I'm gonna be real with you guys. Maybe it's just my cucked liberal worldview, but I don't think that the good guy courier is, uh, is gonna be partaking in any cannibalism. Wow, nothing all that good. That guy really was willing to kill me over that shit? Seriously? That's how much my life is worth in this place? Ah, this place is brutal. Alright, back to Good Springs. Damn, I've been live for over six hours, guys. I think... You guys think I go for another hour? Or technically less than an hour? But you guys think I go for another hour? I'm pretty hungry. I don't know if I could go for more than an hour. We'll have to see, like, how I feel at the time. Demon Mama hours. Like, I mean, if you guys want me to, like, really push New Vegas tonight, I'd be down. I like doing long streams. But I'd need to take a food break. Would you guys watch if we took, like, a brief food break? Maybe watch a review of New Vegas while I eat. Um, and then, uh... Like, while I eat my dinner, and then we just push into the evening. Because I'm, th I'm down to stream until the point where I end stream, upload my segments to drive, and go straight to bed. I'm fine with that. That sounds fun. Hey there. I already fell asleep once. Hey, fall asleep with my stream on. That's good, good practice. I like when people do that. God, look. Tell me I did not mod this game into some beautiful shit right now. I'm gonna make it daytime for this quest. I like daytime. Nice. Oh, look, a little dust devil. Look at that. Nice morning. I'm doing arts and crafts to your stream. Hell yeah, Heavy Gretel. Arts and crafts are so fun. It's gorgeous, Zan. You did a great job. Thank you. I feel I feel like me and Balth did a good job modding this game the fuck up. By the way, we're actually hey gonna... I think Trudy should be in here for my reward. Oh. So about that good job... Yeah, the game just needed a good crash, I think. That makes sense. The game just needed a good crash. Is that number five? Glitch one. We're not counting glitches, stucks, and crashes. I mean, if you guys keep the counter, we can keep the counter. Like, we can keep that all counts of that. I feel like it's a very in character. Delete extra saves. Real? Okay. Chat gives me the advice of deleting extra saves. Is this save, like, busted now, do you think? Is the game not capturing yet? Why is it not capturing yet? Hello? Bro? Okay, so apparently, like, video game capture is broken. And I have to switch back to screen cap, which has its flaws, to say the least. But it's, it, it, it at least shows the screen, I guess. All right, so let's delete this save and load this one, okay? So we'll delete that one and we'll load this one. Let's hope this that solves whatever that texture bug was. I think the texture bug was just the game being on the very edge of crashing. I think that's what it looks like when the game is at the very edge of being out of RAM because it maxes out at 4 gigs. There's no way to fix that. I think that's what happens when it maxes out, it almost maxes out at its 4 gigs and just needs one last thing to happen for it to crash and like reset and cache everything or whatever. Let's hope things are fine when I go in here. Yeah, see, it's... It, it was just the game being on the edge of crashing that did that, I'm pretty certain. Wait, what? where is Trudy? Why is she not here? Do I need to wait for her to be, be like, in for work? 
There she is. Yo, it's just like Skyrim. Feeling thirsty? I can take care Which of that. Which I also need to do a blind playthrough of. I've literally never gotten past getting to White Run in that game. I really do want to play through that eventually on stream. We've got a lot of other games before that first. I fixed your radio. Yeah, I heard it turn right back on after you got done tinkering with it. Here's some caps for the work. Baller. Uh, ooh. I could barter her up for more if I hadn't high enough barter level. I wouldn't do that, though. I'm, an, I'm a good person. Thank you for the caps, ma'am. You're welcome. So can I get you anything? Uh, apparently not. Have a good one. Be careful out there. All right. Let's go talk to... Um, what was his name? The... I'm forgetting his name right now. The guy who Joe Cobb, the powder ganger guy, is looking for? Let's go talk to him. Let's see what his deal is. What's going on with that motherfucker? Shouldn't the game clear the ram periodically? Bro, this game was made in six, like, what is it, 16 months, 18 months by, like, a team that was, like, treating like beaten dog, treated like beaten dogs by Bethesda, okay? Ooh, free sunset, free nuka, let's go, winning, wait, ah, I thought that was a plant, anything back here? I should probably explore thoroughly, I feel like this game's gonna be one of those games filled to the brim with little hidden things just sitting around in the open. That if you just explore, you'll find them and get good shit. Okay, no crashes going in here, hopefully. That's Let's close go. enough. Ringo. Who are you, and what do you want with me? Oh my god, it's uh, Yuri... It's Yuri Lowenthal, isn't it? That's totally Yuri Lowenthal. Let's hear him speak again. I'm not an enemy, if that's what you're asking. Sorry about the gun. You just caught me off guard, that's all. We got off to a bad start. What say we start over with a friendly game of Caravan? You know how to play? I will never play Gwent. I will never play Caravan. I will never... I, I will never play the little mini card game, in-game mini games in these ga RPG games. These games are already massive fucking time sinks as it is. I would love to be able to get into those mini games. I, you know when I like to play those games in games when I was a kid? And I had like five video games. Like I almost kind of feel like parents not getting their kids a lot of games is almost what makes your childhood such that you fall in love with certain games. If you had the level of available games at your fingertips as you have now as an adult with expendable income, Steam, and a good gaming PC when you were a kid, I'm not so sure that you would have loved gaming as much as you do as you did, right? Like, the work you had to put in to play the game almost made it feel as though, like... And the same is the case for this game. Like, the crashes mean that, like, you're putting in work just to get the game going, you know? Like, it makes you want to play it more. And I feel like that old sort of... It's all you have to play. You have to work just to get it to... Like, you have to work just to get the game to work. And then once you've got it working, it's like... Man, I gotta get the most out of this game. So you'll literally spend... I spent months in Red Dead Redemption 1 just fucking around after I beat everything that there was to do. I rinsed Red Dead Redemption 1 when I was younger. Just rinsed it multiple times over. Like, I feel like a lot of people did that with this game. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that this game was probably, like, the cheaper Fallout game to buy of the two Fallout games, Fallout 3 and this one. And so their parents bought it for them, and it was, like, one of the few games they had, and they just no-lifed this. It's a great game, don't get me wrong, but I feel like a lot of nostalgia has to paint it, right? I'm curious to see if it really meets expectations. It's been great so far, but I don't know if it can reach the legendary levels of, like, hype that I have had, you know, served to me, you know? Thank you so much, Larry Bank 78 um, who donated $5 just now. And said, uh, Zan, the developers of New Vegas confirmed that Bethesda were not as hateful towards them as they as they agree with the 18 months of development and the Metacritic thing was a bonus and they got paid well. Okay. I imagine a lot of the stuff I hear about it is probably memes and misinfo, to be fair. But thank you for the $5. I really appreciate it. Remember, guys, donations still very much help, even when I'm not doing politics. They're very welcome. They help a lot. And, uh, yeah, thank you, guys. 
No, 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 not crash number six. That was just me tabbing out. I, I'm not. I don't have game capture on anymore. So to update stuff, I have to. The game does that anyway. Um, did do you know that there's a man named Joe Cobb looking for you? Yeah, he doesn't look very tough though. I hear he's afraid I'll shoot him down from one of the windows when I see him, and he's right. I'll have a much bigger problem once his friends show up. There's no way I could handle all of them in a gunfight. Probably. Yeah, you're just one guy. What are you going to do about them? I'm going to lay low for as long as I can, assuming the town doesn't throw me to the wolves. I've got no chance against the gang on my own. Maybe I can help. We'd just end up sharing the same grave if it's just the two of us. Now, if some of the other people in town were also on board... I'll ask around and see who, can I, who I can round up. Start with Sunny Smiles. She's been friendlier than most around here. Yeah. Yeah, that's an amazing line. They they made her that name. They must have given her that name specifically. Specifically. So they could have that line. Sunny Smiles has been friendlier than most around here. Yeah, you don't say. So what's going on? Did Sunny agree to help us? I haven't talked to her yet. I want to do our, your other dialogue. Oh. Well, I don't want to make a move until she's with us. Oh, I, I can't. I guess I have to do his quest first. Okay. Uh, oh, shit. Is this not stealing? Oh, bro doesn't even mind. Okay, free shit. Oh, shit. Okay, whoa. Okay, yeah, there's a lot here. Yeah, loot this shit up. This is just free. How many people, like, who aren't... I really need to make sure I search everything in this game. Damn. Oh, I, I guess he does not want me stealing his ammo. Yeah, he'll he'll get mad about that, it seems. Okay. Um, ooh. Ooh! These are empty casings. They don't weigh anything, so I'll take them, because I think I can reload ammo. Ugh. I have a mod that makes it so you can scroll. Uh, through like a thing like this for looting and my mouse wheels busted so it's really hard to scroll I need to buy a new mouse big time. I think I'll probably buy one like tonight I've been putting it off for too long. Ooh new nine mil new, new nine millimeter new. I'm just gonna call it a 1911. That's what it is new 1911 more nine millimeter rounds which for some reason are used in that 1911 36 caps some empty casings a doctor's bag, which restores all body parts. So this is for restoring your being crippled. Um, what the fuck? Speed run, pick lock? I I'm just good at it. I played a lot of Bethesda games like this, you know? Um, duct tape, jet, packs of cigarettes, psycho. Okay. That's the good shit. I am surprised this guy is okay with me taking this stuff, to be honest. Like, you're just cool with this man? All right. I mean, I guess he just kind of, like, is hiding out in here and it's abandoned. This isn't just his house. Like, he didn't just claim this place. It's not his house. Oh, yep. I expected it. I knew it. I sensed it. I sensed a disturbance in the force. Thankfully, this game, like, launches up faster than, like, Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, going to Rouge the Bat's house after she texts him my parents aren't home. So, uh, yeah, we're, uh... We're all good. This is an autosave. We'll delete the autosave. And we'll load our quick save. Maybe I should turn off autosaving. That's probably what's busting our shit. Hold on. Settings. Can I do that? Tweaks. Gameplay, maybe? Save on rest. Off. Save on wait. Off. Save on travel. Off. I think that saved. Okay, I wonder if that does it. I wonder if that'll fix the problem. I wonder if, like, the constant saving has been... Because people said that, like, the auto-saves could be fucking me up. So now it should just be saving one line of saves, presumably? I... Maybe. Maybe. Maybe that helps. Maybe it doesn't. Regardless, we, we, we do everything we can to try and help fix the problem. All right, uh, anyone else we have to, what's our, let me check and make sure we don't have any other things we want to do before we, like, 
Do this. Talk to Sunny Smiles. I think these are all the DLCs, right? Yeah, these are all the DLC starter quests. I kind of like how you could just start them right away. When should I do them? Should I do them, like, after taking out Benny? Or before, I wonder. Should I do, like, everything before I confront Benny? Hmm. Anyway, I guess, yeah. We, we just gotta talk to Sunny. We didn't crash this time. That's a good no or good news. Good sign. Hi there. Sticking around Good Springs for a while longer? I'm going to help Ringo take on the Powder Gangers. I might need your help. Say no more. I'm in. Uh, just like that? Just like that. I have a feeling that I'm going to end up fighting those guys one way or another. So I might as well get it over with. Joe Cobb talks about leaving us alone if we hand over Ringo. But I know his type. He and his friends will come after the town eventually. However, between you, me, and Ringo, we aren't exactly a force to be reckoned with. A lot of people around here look up to Trudy. If you could convince Trudy to join us, some of the folks in town might decide to help out as well. I know Easy Pete's got a stock of dynamite somewhere, and Chet just got a shipment of leather armor we could borrow. Talk to them as well. Finally, there's a good chance we'll all end up with extra holes in us. So if Doc Mitchell could cough up some extra stim packs, that'd be great. All right. How can I get Easy Pete's dynamite? Easy Pete's pretty protective of his dynamite. You'd have to convince him you know a thing or two about explosives before you handed it over. Would Chet be willing to give us his supplies? I don't think give is in Chet's vocabulary. Even with the town at stake, he'd still make you barter with him. I need a high barter. Fuck. Any ideas on how to convince Trudy to join us? A silver tongue would help. Convincing Trudy that we had a good plan to win the fight would also help. Okay. Well, Sunny's on board already. Bye. I'll be waiting. Hey there. Okay, Trudy's at the bar. Good. So you're planning on taking on Joe Cobb's gang. It's a big risk, but I suppose you have to do what you think is right. Um, ooh, sneak and speech check can get me, I guess. Near the saloon and store are good spots to stage an ambush if I had the help. You should take... Powder games, bullets, explosion, lots of fun. Let's go with the sneak option, because I think going with a strategic method here would be good. I don't want people in the town to die. I think they can totally die in, like, this gunfight, and they're just dead. So, I want them to live. So we're going to go sneak. We're going to try to ambush them. That does sound like a good plan. All right, you seem to know what you're doing, so you can count me in. Let me have a word with a few other folks, and I'll see if I can't round up some more members for this militia you're creating. While everyone does own a gun, we could stand to be a little better equipped. The general store probably has what we need in stock. Alrighty. Be careful bye bye. out there. Alright, I guess we gotta go to the general store now. I've been meaning to go there anyway, because we need to buy rounds for our guns. Oh, we didn't crash there. I feel like I might have fixed it by turning off those autosaves. Imagine that just totally fixes it and we get like two more crashes the entire playthrough. I doubt it though. Let's see. Dude, it's actually scary how little it's been crashing. Could that have been it? The autosaves were overloading the RAM? Or, well, m maybe not. This is the first time I've seen anything just fully detextured, but maybe it's just a one time thing? Huh. Huh. There is some stuff in here that's fucked up. Yeah, there is. How much you want to bet it? Cr I, I think it crashes when I open the store. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It still does it. It still does it. Okay. We add that to the timer or to the to the counter. So it seems like once I've done enough stuff, it loads up like it overloads the RAM and then it crashes, you know? I wonder if there's a mod that fixes that. If any like New Vegas modders know or like players that mod a lot know, if there's a mod that's known to fix this that won't break my playthrough by installing it, let me know because I can install that in a snap. Um, like if it's a if it's a mod fix. Yeah. None of the mods are broken, thankfully. That's not why those textures were fucked. It was just running out of memory. See, look, we're all good. See, it's pretty in here. Holy shit, it actually is really nice in here. I assume I can't loot anything. Moot fruit. 
corn. I like how it's just called maize now. Like, people just seem to broadly adopt the word maize for it. Ooh. Vision battery, 75 caps. Two. I just like to see what things are worth in, in like, the shelves of shops in these games, because you can see 15 for pressure cookers. Any magazine seems to go for a lot. Okay. All right, shit. What's up, brother? You must be the one Doc Mitchell was patching up. The way I heard it, I didn't think you'd be walking out of that office. I've got plenty of supplies for sale. Even got some weapon mods and special ammo. Well worth the caps, if you ask me. If you're hurting for caps, I've also got boxes of surplus ammo in the miscellaneous section. They're not great, but you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. Um, let's make small talk so he's not too, like, reserved whenever we ask him a favor. Um. Hmm. Do you know anything about the people who attacked me? The leader was a New Vegas type. Typical city boy. He had a bunch of Great Cons with him, probably hired guns. The Great Cons normally stay in their own territory way up northwest, on account of them being enemies with the NCR. Hmm. Oh, oh no. Oh, it's scrolling outside of the thing. Oh, okay. Uh, anything else? Anything you can tell me about the Great Cons? They're tough sons of bitches. Mean, but not crazy. They'll leave you alone unless you got something they want. The Great Cons deal in illegal chems. There's a good chance that most chems you come across were made by Great Cons. Ah, they're the, uh, the drug runners, I see. Have you ever been to New Vegas? Twice. Both times I drank a lot of liquor and lost most of my caps at the card tables. In that order, now that I think about it. If you ever get to New Vegas, be sure to visit Gamora. It's the best casino in the city. You won't regret it. Word of advice. Behave. Between the NCR military police and Mr. House's robots, you don't want to be causing trouble on the Strip. I'm so excited to see the Strip. Especially with all these mods I've installed. Oh. What do you know about the situation with the Powder Gangers? If Ringo doesn't head out on his own, I think we should hand him over. Bro. The town shouldn't get itself mixed into the problem. Don't mistake that for Cower Talk, though. We're a town of survivors. We'll fight tooth and nail if pushed, but we don't go looking for trouble. Bro, that's such a pussy move. I'd like to know more about Mr. House. I'm afraid I don't know much myself. Mr. House has got his own casino. Lucky 38, but nobody goes in or out except his robots. The other casinos follow Mr. House's rules, How's so he make I money? guess that makes him the leader of New Vegas. As far as I know, nobody's ever laid eyes on the guy. I think that robot who pulled you out of the dirt belongs to Mr. House. If Mr. House is looking after you, it's got to be a good thing, right? Why would he make sure... Why would Mr. House keep his... Why does he keep his casino empty, I wonder? Like... My, the line he gives in the show is there's a lot of money to be made in the apocalypse, which is very in character for him. His whole thing is like, he's a greedy capitalist and he's he had an interest in, in the end of the world because he sees it as an opportunity to be the, the richest man in the world, which he became. Xanat's a spoiler? Dog, dog, you're watching my Fallout New Vegas stream at fucking 8.29pm. You've seen the show already, okay? Um... So it makes me wonder... Oh, it's a spoiler for the show. Or not the show, the game. I thought you were talking about the show, sorry. Um, no, I'm, I'm asking rhetorically here. I'm giving commentary. Like, I'm wondering... Like, why would he do that? It doesn't seem very profitable if he's just gonna not have the casino open for 200 years of people actively being on the strip using casinos around it, you know? It just seems weird. But we'll find out. We'll find out, I'm sure. Tell me about the weapon mods and special ammo. Weapon mods are things like silencers, scopes, bigger magazines. Special ammo includes things like armor-piercing bullets, which don't hurt the target as much, but let you punch through armor easier. There's also hollow point bullets, which have the opposite effect. You can kill unarmored targets easier, but they don't do shit against armor. I see. What makes surplus ammo inferior? It's all about quantity over quality. Trouble is, you'll be cleaning and fixing your gun a lot more than usual when you use those kind of bullets. I see. Sh 
Show me what you have for sale. Can do. Ooh, he's got a lot of caps to work with here. Okay. Let's rinse this motherfucker. The inferior 9 mil gets sold. Honestly, I, I don't see myself not killing myself with the grenade rifle. I'm gonna sell it. The caps are more useful. The shotgun, <clears throat> it's strong. It's real strong. Not a shotgun guy, though. So I'm gonna take the 464 free caps. And the varmint rifle is... Genuinely, well, I mean, it's okay, and it's a rifle. God, I think I'm gonna sell it. Well, nah. Well, the weight, though. The weight's kind of not something I want. 5.56, five, 9 mil, 10 millimeter. I'm gonna keep it just because it gives me some weapon diversity, and I know I'm gonna run out of ammo from shooting shit, and I want to be able to switch to something okay that has ammo. So I need to buy some 9 millimeter, 5.56, five, and 10 millimeter. Just, I'll, I'll buy surplus for, er, for now, yeah. Okay, we can afford that. We're still gonna make a profit off this interaction, you know? Like, as long as we make a profit, it was, we won this, you know? Oh, does he not sell 10 millimeter? Yeah, bro is not selling 10 millimeter. He's selling stim packs? Ooh, super stim. Oh my god, no, I am not dropping that much. No, okay. Bro, pr prices are steep. Fuck, I'll just loot for him. Jesus. Fine, then. Thanks. Alright, I need supplies to fight the Powder Gangers. Now just hold on. I never voted to take on the Powder Gangers. That's a thousand cap investment you're talking about. I just got a thousand caps from you, motherfucker. No. No. No, actually, I have an idea. Never mind. Right. Just keep me out of it. Is there anything else? Goodbye. Take it easy now. I have an idea. It's under aid, right? Speech increase. No, I need a barter increase. Salesman weekly. Plus 10 barter. Will this be enough? Will this be enough? You looking to buy some supplies? This again? Yes! Yes! Fucking magazine did it for us. You made your point. I can provide people with some leather armor and extra ammo. Sure hope it's worth it. And uh, I'll be guarding the store while all this is going on. This game's so good. I have to so put good. my business first. You understand. God, I love this game. Real RPG shit. Real RPG Take hours. Easy now. All right, let's see. Crash or no crash? No crash. But you rain. What the fuck? I wanna know. Have you ever seen the rain? That grenade launcher could save you from the powder gangers. Oh yeah, I could have used it on them, huh? Huh? We'll be fine, we'll be fine, we'll be fine, we'll be fine. Doc Mitchell. Thank you for crashing me, buddy. See, you always save. I don't even know what number we're on at this point, guys. In about 20 minutes, we're gonna take a break so I can eat my dinner, and we're gonna watch like, I think H Bomber Guy did a review of New Vegas. I may be wrong about that, but I think I've seen that in my recommended before. Had no interest at the time, so didn't watch it. I'd be curious to start that video though. Um, myself, um, just to see what the hubbub's about from his perspective. Hopefully he doesn't spoil anything right off the bat, but I'd like to watch that while I eat. It seems like I just have, like, a set number of, like, cells I can go through before I get a, like, just unavoidable crash. You know what I mean? Damn, Zan has taste. Well, this is my first, like, real playthrough of this game. I'm... I'm gonna be playing it entirely blind, besides, like, spoilers I've gotten from memes and cultural references, um, and honestly, not too long. Welcome back. 
I had hoped you wouldn't need to come see me again so soon. What can I do for you? Uh... The town is going to be attacked by bandits. Anything you can do to help? Seems like wherever I go, it's always the same. Folks just never leave each other alone. Oh, I'm not much good in a fight with my bum leg. And my supplies are scarce, but I'll give you what I can spare. You know, the downtime from restarting the game from these crashes is probably about as long as the loading, like, total time will probably be about as long as the loading screens would have been playing this game on console, so not really that bad, to be honest. Oh, Medicine 30! Holy shit, a check! They'll be using explosives. Do you have something for more serious injuries? I ain't got much, but it'll do you more good out there than it will in here. Take what I got. Dude. Upping anything that gets checked with dialogue is just peak. You need to max those things out. Like, y y it feels like you can convince people to, like, that you can make people go from wanting a thing to making them want what you want and believing that they came up with the idea. Like, it's fucking crazy. Um. Okay, what else do we need? Nothing, okay. You take care now. That's all we needed from you, Doc. Quick say before going through, as always. It never crashes on the second one, obviously. I th I think it will be safe going through this door, but then leaving it crashes. I'm pretty certain. We go through this door, we're fine. Maybe we get some buggy graphics. Um, and then we go back out and it crashes, I guarantee it. God, though, it, it is beautiful, though. Holy shit. Like, you can't deny that the mods I've installed make... Like, this is... This is how the game should have looked. This is how the game always should have looked. Oh. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Easy Pete. I needed to talk to him. Howdy. Um. Oh, what do you know about Joe Cobb? Bad trouble. That's helpful. Welcome. A man of few words, I respect it. I hear you've got dynamite. I would it would help us beat the powder gangers. Too dangerous. Gonna kill all yourselves if I let you touch it. Better to leave it buried. Safer that way. Explosives twenty five. I'm familiar with the care and handling of explosives, dynamite included. Uh huh. Guess you know what you're doing. I'll go dig it up and get it ready. You'll have it by the time the fighting starts. All right. Goodbye. Yep. Okay. All right, we've got the dynamite. Oh, I level up. Baller. Okay. Okay, barter needs to go up to at least 25. Or no, at least 30 off the rip. And then... Do we have lock picking? Maybe I should... Should I funnel my extra three points into guns? I feel like I'm... Not... You know what? I, I get to make my own choices. They're also easily convinced. Well, I had to up my skill, you know? We're in the starter town, too. These, these are yokels we're talking to here. Like, we're the smartest person they've ever met, you know? Guns. Yeah, I'm gonna up my gun skill just by three, just for some more passive gun damage. Okay. Is there anything else to do? Nope. We just gotta go back and talk to, uh... Ringo, I guess. We're just gonna go talk to our boy Ringo! Ringo, where you at? Where you at, Ringo? Alright. Now it crashes. No? Okay, it's gonna crash on the next one, though. It guaranteed... Cr guaranteed... It crashes on the next one. No shot it doesn't. Did I miss anything here? <gasps> I missed a fission battery. That thing goes for like 75 caps. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna crash for sure. Oh my gosh. Man. You know, I honestly might want to reload things just so I don't have to deal with this interaction being bugged. Yeah. Yeah. See, we just can't, we just kind of count these as loading screens. We might really be in the hundreds of crashes by the time I beat this game. 
seriously, guys, let me know if there is a mod that fixes this, and I just don't know about it. Um, I would have no clue if there is. So, um, you know, don't hold out on me. All right. Let's yoink. And yoink. Ooh. Oh, wait. Ah, uh, I don't want detergent. What the fuck? Drop that shit. Want that fission battery. Okay. All right, we're good. What's up, Ringo? So what's going on? Did Sunny agree to help us? She's with us. Well, I guess that means we're ready to go. Unless you think there's something else you can do. I think I did everything. Let's do this. All right, I'm ready. I hope. Time to look alive. The powder gangers are here to play. Oh, she... She just straight up shows up. How many are there? At least six. Joe Cobb included. They look pretty mean. Hmm. Shit. I have an idea on how I'm going to deal with them, though. Um... Let's go. Oh, Easy Pete came through with the dynamite. Here's your supply. I really yeah. hope I don't blow myself up. That, I'll be that's... set up near the store. Let's hope that the gang doesn't manage to make it that far. Yeah, that dynamite is important to my plan. I'm going to be real with you guys. That dynamite's kind of like 95% of the plan to be real with all of you. The dynamite makes up a lot of the plan. Dude, my outfit's like glitched out. I think it's because the, the game's almost out of memory again. From, like, entering, exiting, like, loading the world. Yeah. Well, let me check. Boop, 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 boop. Hmm. Hold on. Dynamite. Okay. And then I have an idea. What if... Stealth Boy... What if I think I'm fully hidden no matter what like this. They just can't see me. So if I just lob a dynamite at them, are they just done? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Get fucked. Okay. That did not go as well as I thought it would, but it, I mean, it actually, it actually went really well. That, that actually went really well. That, that actually went pretty much fully to plan. I owe you a huge favor for this. Here, these are technically Crimson Caravan funds, but I know they'll understand once I explain things. Oh, okay, you're welcome. I'll stick around for a bit longer, but I'll be gone in a few days. If you ever visit New Vegas, look me up at the Crimson Caravan camp. The Crimson Caravan, I see. No one died, right? We didn't have any casualties on our side. Everyone's in leather armor, so pretty tough, except for her. Someone got shot. No one's really too badly hurt, except for them. They got very badly hurt, which was the intent. Okay. Loot everything and sell it to the traitor. <gasps> True. 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 Oh, yeah, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Over encumberment means nothing right next to the town. This is going to be big caps for us. Big caps. No cap? Nah. Big caps. For my invisible ass. Can't jump while over encumbered either. Okay. So after a brief game crash, when I go inside the general store, we should be uh, should be good to sell this stuff. You didn't di want to disable carry weight, is that? something that people do typically oh big spoiler message okay 
Um, is that something people typically do? I feel that's kind of cheating, is it not? Hello. I have some stuff stuff to sell, sir. That was a hell of a fight. Let's hope it doesn't bite us in the ass later on. Okay. Show me what you got for sale, man. Can do. Okay. Weapons. Ooh. Wait, hold on. That's that's big. That's big, but I don't have a lot of ammo for it. So I think it's better to sell. Baseball bat, sell. Cleavers, sell. I'm gonna sell half the dynamite. It takes up or almost all the dynamite. It takes up a lot of room. It's very heavy. Single shotgun. Both those can be sold. We'll sell the, le sell the lesser condition varmint rifle. We'll sell the armored vault. Actually, I'm gonna wear that because the... Leather armor bugs out for no reason. Um, ooh, I got a Desperado leather cowboy hat. Okay, cool. Um, leather armor will sell. I'm gonna sell my lightweight leather armor. Sell this. We're already maxed. I'm gonna buy all of his ammo. Fuck it. Oh, I finalized the transaction, shit. Uh, not going shotguns, won't buy that. We'll buy that. We'll buy the better 9 mil rounds. Ammo box? Hell yeah. 38 special, sure. Okay. So that gives us a little more caps to buy back. All right. Besides that, maybe some stuff in misc. Cigarettes. Uh, well, we don't need to sell the drain stuff. Vision battery. Oh, that's... We're gonna waste caps, yeah. Okay. That's enough for Another now. Another satisfied customer. Indeed. Take it easy now. Hey, I'm not a modding expert or anything, but I've been modding Bethesda games for a while. Are you okay if I just send advice and questions? Um, I mean, don't overwhelm me, but I mean, when it comes to the crashes, it would... Like, a mod suggestion on what will fix what's about to happen when I press E would help. It happens roughly every four transfers from cell to cell. You could also use Powder Ganger armor to disguise yourself if you wanted. Wait, the game has that? That goes crazy. You can just dress up like a faction and blend in with their people. That's really cool. I like this game. This game's got the special sauce. Ugh, nose itch. Okay. Alright, let's... Don... Our drip. Hell yeah. Save our game on that shit. Woo! Look at this. How does this chat website thingy work? Hey, Dan Ra Ranado. Welcome. See, I can now see your messages and your chat is on screen. Okay, so what's my current objective? What do they want me to do? Huh. I guess we are leaving town now? Is there anything... Guys, is there anything else to do in Good Springs, or am I ready to move on? Any side quests, any side content whatsoever to do here in Good Springs? 
Like, is there anything else I should do before I leave? I don't like having to revisit stuff unless, like, the game has, like, locked content. Do the schoolhouse? I did the schoolhouse. Is there anything else here? Is that it? I hate leaving a place feeling like there's stuff to do still. I know sometimes the mailboxes have stuff, but that's not too bad. Um. Howdy, partner. You talked to Vic? I did talk to him. Maybe I should search his house. Hey, Victor. Howdy, partner. Nope, nothing new Happy trails. Alright, I'll save and I'll enter his shack. Ooh, he doesn't consider it stealing. Weapon repair kit. Energy cells, eh. Ooh, ammo. Ooh, fission batteries, that's money. Money, big money. Some Braxo. Huh. Rose is not rolling in it besides those fucking batteries. Okay. Man, all right. Is there anything else left to do here? Keep scrap? I, I, it's just, it's so heavy though. You want metal and electrical scrap? Should I put it in the courier box? Oh, I should put it in the courier box. That's like the ender chest. You're so smart, chat. Yeah, I'll just add it to the courier box. Howdy, partner. Okay, let's search the schoolhouse for any, like, scrap and electronic shit that I might have forgotten. Smartest chat, true. Scrap electronics. Bobby pin. Miss that. Bottle caps? How did I miss that before? I, I, I was pretty thorough. Okay, I see nothing notably. Oh, Salesman Weekly. Got a replacement for my one that I used. Okay. New Vegas Anti Crash, but I think that was already suggested earlier. Let me check if I already have that after the next crash. And then if not, I'm going to install it, re redo my load order, and see if that fixes it. If so, then we're cooking, dude. Um, all right. No, none so far. We've actually had a stint of no crashes, which is weird. Be weird if like the crashes had to do with like what point in the game I'm in or something. That'd be weird. How does mod loader lo load order work? Uh, it's got a sorter. It's all good. This was the only Fallout game that ever caught my interest, but I've never really played any of them. Uh, they're really fun. They're just like downright fun, and this is the best one in terms of its RPG elements. Um, in terms of performance, optimization, graphics, not necessarily. But in pretty much every other aspect, I think it's best. Um, is there anything else to do uh, before we leave Good Springs, or is that everything? Oh, look, I think that's Victor on the... Is that supposed to be Victor? Yeah, I think it is. Huh. No wonder he's in town. He's literally on the fucking water tank. Yes, I have the unofficial patch. Anything else to do in Good Springs? Chat's not giving me any positive or negative, so I'm going to assume... Yeah, I know these. They're ender chests. We must discover a second one to use it. Oh! Okay, I think they'll find one pretty soon, though. They're in, like, every town, right? Have you gone to your grave? Yes. Yes, I have. You should have talked to the victor before the gunfight with 25 science. Oh, does he join in? I wonder if he joins in. Oh, you know what? 
Really quick, let's check that out. I wonder what that is. I'm sure we're gonna run into some shit, but... Oh, yeah, we're, we're gonna crash is what we're gonna do. Okay, let's check and see if we've got the crash fix, and then I'm also gonna stop and eat. And uh, we're gonna take a break to eat. I do not have the crash fix mod. Ooh. Let's see if this fixes it, guys. New Vegas crash fix. Let's see. It's an NVSC plugin that implements structured exception handling and sanity checking to reduce frequency of game crashes. That said, make no promises. It's in a cure-all. It only tries to fix crashes related to access violation exceptions at specific offsets and addresses. Since it's an MS NVSC plugin, nvac.dll does... does for New Vegas, you can double check them. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, we're we're gonna be fine. Files. Mod manager download. Downloads. Install. Activate plugins sort yes mod organizer sorts that load order of plugins with loot and we close it okay yep all right mods installed it's that easy and it just works it just works guys what else can I tell you it just it just works dude it just works. You know who said that? A genius. The, the sole man responsible for the existence of Fallout New Vegas. You guys know that, right? It's crazy. Okay, really quickly, I'm going to see. Did, did, um, um, H Bomber Guy New Vegas. Did he make a New Vegas video? He did. Fallout New Vegas is genius, and here's why. 10 million views three years ago. Fuck, do I need to make a Fallout the New first Vegas review video? Dude, should I do that? Once I played through all of it, I used my footage I've gathered from my stream for, like, the foreground footage to put together, like, a big Fallout mega review. Fallout New Vegas mega review. Just ab just just make the, the absolute virality bait. Inject a bunch of lefty politics into it to get people hooked, you know? Get them on the channel. Get, like, a little bit of a taste of the good meth that, a, that like, a dealer would give somebody. Get them hooked. Make them come back for more. Say what you want about Todd Howard, but that guy will get a game to be financially successful. He knows how to market. He is a genius marketing strategist. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to go put, like, I'm going to use the restroom. Actually, first I'm going to put the food in the microwave, then use the restroom, come back down here, uh, we'll watch the first bit of the video, because, you know, and then I'll have to go upstairs, grab my food, put the other pasta in the microwave, because I'm a big boy and I eat too, and then, you know, come back down, watch more of the video, go back up to get the second one, bring it down and eat that, and then we'll be ready to resume the game. I eat a big dinner, and I think I'll have, like, either an hour... Maybe two left in me for tonight. Would you guys be down for more, like, super long gaming after main segments in the future? I imagine you guys are going to say yes. But with that said, um, make sure to donate. Donate sub, gift subs. It really helps a lot. Likes really help, too. Um, seriously, guys, your support, even when I'm just gaming, especially when I'm just gaming, it really helps, and it means a lot. I'll be right back, guys. I'm going to use the restroom, make some food. I'll be back in, like, less than two minutes.
Okay, let's watch the first two minutes or so of this uh, Fallout New Vegas video by H Bomber Guy while my food microwaves, and then I can go get it, and we can I can eat while the rest microwaves, and uh, while we watch uh, a bit more of it. We're not watching anywhere near all of it. Like Christ on a bike, it's long. I don't really have much commentary to give, though. I'm sure I'll stun lock. I'm sure I'll stun lock for sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm excited to watch this. I've actually, like, I, I hope it doesn't spoil shit out off the rip, you know? That, that really upset me. Do you have AIDS? I assure you I do not have AIDS, thankfully. I feel like I'd probably be, I, I, I feel like I'd probably be, um, like, fucked up if I did. Like, dying. Like, falling apart a little bit. Melting. Anyway. Fallout New Vegas is genius, and here's why. The first two Fallouts are still two of the best games ever. Yeah, for those who don't know, it's it's Chud Logic fans. Chud Logic does like a thing where anybody he covers, like in a really negative sense, he says they have AIDS and gets his fans to repeat it until people start to believe it because they hear people saying it, and then it becomes like an actual accusation or rumor. It's it's a uh, he's pretty good at that. It's it's pretty clever. Um, it's a good way of sowing, like, bizarre rumors about people. But he's he does it to a lot of people. He's currently doing it to Dark Viper, too. But I kind of, I respect him doing it to Dark Viper. That's pretty funny. Anyway, let's watch this. Two of the most engaging worlds and stories ever crafted for players to explore. So the developer Dude. went bankrupt. The Fallout intellectual property was then sold to Bethesda. There were those who had minor problems with the direction they took the series. <laughs> But when you shoot a guy just right, his guts go everywhere. So overall, the game... Say what you want about even the worst of the Fallout games, but when you shoot someone in the right spot, they fucking explode. And a game can't be that bad if that's a thing you can do, right? ...did very well. A lot of people liked Fallout 3. Then again, a lot of people liked Clerks 2, so humans aren't really viable as a species. But then, Ugh. less than two years later, Fallout cheated death. Developed by Obsidian Entertainment with a team including That's people who worked one. on the original games, Fallout New Vegas represents everything great about the original series, along with all the good stuff from 3 that was worth keeping. In addition to being one of the most incredible games ever made, it's also really interesting to talk about from a design perspective. It's not just a game, it's a flipping game design doctor, and it's here to put on a clinic. I didn't write that line, it just appeared in the script. New Vegas is the sort of game where you can open a manhole cover, expecting, like, a sewer level, and instead discover that the local people have formed a cult dedicated to blood and retrofitted the sewers into a fighting arena. Come on, there has to be a boring quest here. Oh I'm fine with like vagueish spoilers like this by the way guys like where it's like i don't know what this like where this is or like this will still surprise me when it happens you know i'll have forgotten about this by then i i like this i'm fine with like minor weird pseudo spoilers like this that's fine okay the lady who runs this place wants me to find her some mantis eggs fetch some eggs that's got to be the most boring quest there could possibly be okay the eggs are in this abandoned vault great looking for eggs in some gray corridors that sounds wait it's overgrown with plants and there's environmental storytelling warning me not to go in oh man this vault is cool it's overgrown Ooh. and there's a bunch of stories on the computers this about the experiments cool. that went on in there and it's creepy and it's way green. more visually interesting than you'd expect a vault to be and is that oh oh One of New Vegas's best features is its ability to make you invested in its quests and locations. Vault 22 is one of the many parts of the world that sounds on paper like somewhere familiar, which then goes out of its way to be completely unlike you expect in every possible way. Players of three will already have an inter- Okay, very quickly, chat. I must go get my food. I know, I hate to cut it off. I'll be right back, chat. I'll be right back. I will not be long. I'm just grabbing my food, putting another thing in the microwave, and then coming down with my food. Then we eat and we watch.
All right, I'm back, gamers. Back on that grind. Fuck, I need space to eat. Oh. Okay, here we go. The most awareness of how zoom. vaults can be, having been forced to walk around in one for an hour before the game even starts, and several side quests also take place in very similar vaults with slightly different aesthetics and different enemies in them. Instead of Officer Mac, you get Officer Gary. Gary. The Gary. most interesting vault in 3 is full of people called Gary, who yell Gary at you. Uh, uh, Gary. I mean, it's pretty funny. On a surface level, it's easy to see How'd why Vault 22 happen? is a more compelling place to explore. It's a bit nicer to look at, How'd with the its Gary spots of overgrowth happen? in the halls and plants everywhere, the cave network it gives way to in its more run-down areas, and it's populated with enemies unique to this one location called Spore Carriers, which look like humans, but creepily hide in foliage and can't be targeted by vats while they're hiding, meaning you have to be able to spot them through oh. their camouflage in order to fight them, which makes them genuinely creepy and- oh! And while the unique aesthetic and cool enemies are fun, what makes Vault 22 a good case study in Obsidian's design philosophy is the ways it creates a strong narrative experience for players, and uses its mechanical elements to enhance player engagement with the story. Firstly, just for convenience's sake, the vault can be discovered in more than one way. Six different quests lead you to this vault. You don't necessarily come here looking for those delicious eggs. One guy wants you to find the secret of how they're growing all these plants so easily, since, you know, growing plants in the wasteland is a pretty big deal. Somewhere on a computer system in the vault are files on how they managed all this. But on your way out of his office, another scientist stops you and says he sent like ten other guys there already and none of them have come back, and asks you to find out what happened to another researcher who went there. This is a trick the game pulls often with its quests. Hmm. Even something as simple as download some files for me please is given extra layers of narrative meaning. You're actually being sent to a dangerous place without proper warning and other people are missing there. This creates a sense of anticipation to the level. Huh. The vault has tons of That's computer neat. logs detailing the work they did, the events with mind controlling spores that led to everyone's death or infection, and a bunch of new logs left by the researcher who went missing when she came here. And because you're actually trying to find out what happened to the researcher, it's much harder to ignore the story that's going on here than it would be otherwise. The player is also being given mechanical rewards that really incentivize exploring and engaging closely with the material. There's a unique laser rifle you can't get anywhere else in the game hidden in this vault on some poor guy's corpse. The game never draws mm. attention to it. It's not like a reward you get for beating a boss or something, it's just hidden in a corner We're somewhere. Going here. And the genius of this kind of design is that once players have found something like this once, they're gonna realize there could be stuff hidden anywhere. Suddenly they're paying that much more attention to the environments that they're traveling through and partaking more in the stories of the place. You might not really care that much about the story of little side quests like this, but if you know them- That's a big true. Once I find like one thing hidden in some crazy ass nook, it's like, oh, so that's, that's how this game does its shit, huh? I had that moment with Resident Evil 7 when I, like, barely saw, like, the texture of the ammo box item, which I recognized at that point, sticking out between, like, a shelf and a knocked-over window, like, like, painting frame. You had to crouch down and, like, get the right angle to look under to be able to see and loot that item i was like oh that is how well hidden stuff is in this game so i'm wondering if if they do that here might be a cool gun in here somewhere, you're paying a lot more attention than you might have been. Some of the quests technically put an objective marker in the corner leading you to the necessary part, but when Vault 22 has worked its magic, you forget it's there. The true beauty of great game design is when all its artificial justifications, quest indicators, loot to find, experience points to earn, melt away, and you really feel like you're in a creepy place looking for answers. Eventually you find the researcher is alive and can help them flood the lower floors with gas and blow up the spores so they don't pose a threat to anyone else. Good. You survived. Then she decides to delete the computer Why is records. That goal so the person busty? you optionally saved as a result of exploring wants to delete the data you actually came here for. If you already downloaded it, she asks you to delete your copy too so this mistake can't be repeated. And if you refuse, she attacks you. Even simple seeming fetch quests have twists and the sense of a story you're hmm. taking part in and making choices about. Because there's a real moral dilemma here. Do you really trust this guy with research that killed a bunch of people already? We're with the government for goodness sake. Have a little faith in us. True. You have to be good at science <laughs> in order to reason out with her that it's probably good to have a record of the mistake so people don't repeat it. What could have been a simple fetch quest to find some data ended in making an ethical decision about whether the information you found deserves to exist. The advantages of this design are clear when you contrast with the Gary Vault in 3. The enemies are kind of cool for a little while, but there's no quests or story or choices to make, so the experience isn't particularly involving. You don't really have any reasons to be here. There's a really useful piece of loot in this vault, a bobblehead that permanently increases your charisma. And even though it's technically quite hard to miss, it's just sitting on a table 
table deep in the vault. Getting to it requires trawling through the rest of a location that has nothing else worth finding, and enemies whose gimmick was wearing thin after Gary 3. I'm willing to bet most players got bored and left before they found it. If you found this, be honest, you didn't find it because the location was so cool it made you want to look around and see all of it. You found it because you were using a guide to find all the bobbleheads. Thanks, Carl. Eventually, players lose interest in picking through empty buildings full of locked easy safes in case there's- You know what's crazy? Never once in all of my time playing New Vegas have I felt lost. The world is so well designed, environments and locations so recognizable. I feel like everywhere where I've been, it's like, I know exactly where that is. That might just be me having a good memory and good, like, I'm not, I don't really get lost, but, um, I, th I think, like, that's more so a testament to this game design. There's something interesting in them. Oh boy, a bottle cap! Meanwhile, mm -hmm. Vault 22 isn't even the coolest vault in New Vegas. Vault 11 is straight up an incredibly well-written piece of fiction, and it's just hiding off in a little nook, waiting for you to be sent there as part of a quest for the Brotherhood of Steel. I need you to go on this important quest for me. Our air conditioner's broken. Yep, yep, yep. Great, great! I'm going to destroy this faction. This approach to quest design is all over the place, offering you very simple and straightforward seeming things, and then pulling the rug out from under you. Honestly, there are probably too many. It's at the point where if you happen to pick up enough cute little bottle caps with stars on them, you stumble into a quest to discover a legendary treasure, you get random encounters with people murdering each other over them? After you find we your first that. one, this guy Malcolm eventually tracks you down and tells you about the quest. We had that, that, uh, that interaction with that guy, Malcolm Holmes, when we played this the first time. We found, like, the star bottle caps, a couple of them, and this guy came up to us, and I think, like, you guys convinced me to kill him, and he has, like, six of them on his body, if you kill him and take him. But, uh, you guys told me, if I remember correctly, they're not fine- they're not finite, or maybe there are finite, but it's not like you don't have to get every single one. Like, I don't have to get them from him. So, killing him, pickpocketing him, apparently not necessary. I can get the star caps other means by not hurting people. Which is good for my good guy Xander playthrough. Because we're, we're good guy Xander on my first playthrough of New Vegas. We'll be bad guy Xander on my second playthrough, and it'll end with me, like, conquering the entire Mojave Wasteland or something. Absolute mad lad arguments that too many loot containers can exist. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like looting a lot of things. What do you mean? Okay, I will be right back. Gonna go get the other pasta. I'm a big boy. I have to eat two pastas for dinner. Oh, I am back. All right, everyone. And now, back to it. He's kind of notorious for doing it Boy, at really unexpected times. You might notice he seems to be at a weird angle looking down at me. That's because on this playthrough, <laughs> I was crouching, preparing for a fight when he found me. Hello there. It was actually kind of terrifying, but so I admire his dedication. Make a meme now give me the caps. Of like the Pepe thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, yep. I'm gonna be nice about Fallout yep. 3. There's yeah, some good stuff in there, and some of these quests are genuinely good. Like when a talking tree asks you to kill it, in spite of its existence bringing people hope, or resolving a dispute between two broken people masquerading as comic book characters and harassing a town, or when an old woman asks you to find her the world's last remaining Stradivarius violin. A handful of the quests in Fallout 3 end up being genuinely good, funny, and even touching at times. If anything, they annoy me in a particular way because they made me see how amazing a game would be if it was filled with quests like these. <clears throat> I've I always thought the concept of New Vegas is just the best Fallout game concept. Like the setting, the setup, 
for all of the factions characters and like what you need to do in that world and the way that like it it's affected by you even though it's relatively small from what i can tell it feels like it's going to be so packed full of character it will be unnoticeable like its size compared to modern day open world games <clears throat> New Vegas is a game filled with quests like these. But hey, maybe it's a quality over quantity type thing. I mean, even if you don't like the quests in 3, at least there's a lot of them. Obsidian only had 18 months to make New Vegas, so there's no way they could make that many quests. Oh. But hold on. To really oh. explore what makes the gameplay in these quests so much more engaging, we should cover some of the more serious core mechanical changes between these supposedly similar games. And to do that, we should go back to how in the quest, having a high science skill affects dialogue. Actually, no, we should probably go back to the beginning of the game. <sighs> Let's just start again. To the town of our free road, Chronological. Find okay. Get it? It's like a clever reversal of the chapter in the Fallout 3 video. Ah, it doesn't matter. New Vegas' opening character creation process and first area one. are just the best I've ever seen a game introduce itself and its core gameplay. Let's take a look at some of the things it does. It's clean. The Pressing the new game button causes the player to get shot in the face. New Vegas seemingly goes out of its way to begin with the logical opposite of something as cliche as the main character's birth. You're then revived by Doc Mitchell, who put you back together after a robot cowboy- Yes, I said that right! Robot cowboy! This is the best game ever! Dug them out of their shallow grave. The opening gives the player a deliberate barrage of questions. What- Hmm? What is that cinematic? Was that a trailer? Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. New Vegas' opening, character creation process, and first area- the Pressing the new game button causes the player to get shot in the face. New Vegas seemingly goes out of its way to begin with the logical opposite of something as cliche as the main character's birth. You're then revived by Doc Mitchell, who put you back together after a robot cowboy- Yes, I said that right! Robot cowboy! This is the best game ever! Dug them out of their sh- Where is this cinematic? Is this- Is this a- trailer for the game or something that he spliced in here I never saw this this is new to me hmm part of the promo I think okay yeah I need to look at that stuff that's cool shallow grave. The opening gives the player a deliberate barrage of questions. What was I shot over? Who was this guy? What was he saying about a delivery? Why were the guys with him so differently dressed? He referred to them as Khans. Who are they? Or, if you've played Fallout 1 and 2, what are they doing here? These mysteries are a really compelling hook. You know how a lot of players ignore the main story in open world RPGs and go do something else? That's because the story didn't interest them. Going in search of Benny and the platinum chip he shot you for sounds really cool, so a lot more players are gonna want to find him. Even the way Benny talks in like an old 50s Vegas style. But I ain't a fink. Dig. The fact he's wearing a cool checkered suit in the post-apocalypse? All of this stuff really makes you want to track him down and find out what his deal is. What in the goddamn? Benny and his motivations what and personality are really cool to learn about. It helps We're that he's voiced by Matthew wine. Perry too. John Gonzalez, the lead writer for New Vegas, did a really fantastic job with him. And while I'm at it, Gonzalez is like an unsung hero in all the games he works on. Like, he co-developed the Nemesis system for Shadow of Mordor? You know, like the best thing in that game? What? Actual quote from Gonzalez's LinkedIn. I was the lead story guy on Fallout New Vegas. Thank you, God. <laughs> no, John. Thank you. Did I just imply that I'm God? Players are much more likely to actively take part in a story if they have questions they actually want answering. Also, did I mention the robot cowboy? My rambling days were through. Fallout 1 and 2 had the right idea when character creation was one screen long, and then the game just started right away. There you are, in the world, have fun. Try to get further than Ed did. Granted, the character creation screen was also evidence Black Isle didn't have a UI designer. Literally every first time Fallout player has accidentally named their first character Non, because they were supposed to type it into here, but still, they were onto something here. One of my biggest gripes about Fallout 3 was how long it took to start. The opening sequence deciding a character stats and learning the basics now. of the gameplay takes 19 years of in-game time, and honestly it feels that long, before eventually your father realizes he's forgotten to do the main quest and escapes, and you go after him. It's only when you finally leave the vault that the game properly opens up to be explored. Fallout New Vegas' opening is as smooth as butter, and not the butter you keep in the fridge, the butter your parents keep in a little dish by the table so it's already smooth and melty when you need it. And it's just so spreadable, and every time you visit them you make a mental note to get one, but you forget again as soon as you- After the opening cutscene, you're talking to Doc Mitchell where you make your character and then walk outside his house and BAM! The game begins! Well, Fallout 2 opens by forcing you to complete a dungeon- How many Fallout games are there where you don't play as a vault dweller? Just New Vegas, right? Maybe like a spin-off game? But New Vegas is special in that respect. It stands out for that reason alone as like a base premise for a Fallout game. Brotherhood of Steel? I guess so. I mean, spin-off games is what I just clarified.
action that's pretty repetitive after the first few times through. It's one of the few things most people don't like about 2, and players often use mods to skip it entirely. Can you imagine having like a decade of hindsight on all the criticisms people had of Fallout 2, and then making a game where the opening is like three times as long? That would be a bit silly, wouldn't it? Uh, I'm sure they'll learn the lesson for Fallout 4. <laughs> The character creation process is really fun too. You pick your starting stats through a really cute device called the Vigor Tester, and then you get a psych exam, which involves an honest to god Rorschach test, which is just great. Some I players actually one. modded in what they saw as options. That's tester. it, that's all it does. It lets you pick two bears high fiving for one of the images. 22,000 downloads, including me, that's definitely two bears high fiving. When you get to mm -hmm. pick your tagged mm -hmm. skills though, you'll mm -hmm. notice the list of skills is a little different from three. Big guns and small guns are missing, for example. There's just guns now. But in addition to this, all these skills have much more uses than they did in the previous games too. When you say I. I love you. Okay, look, we all love speech, right? Kudos to the series for making a video game where talking was a skill worth putting points into at all. But a problem plaguing Fallout games since the beginning was that one skill made you the master of half the game's main form of interaction, which really wasn't ideal. Games have tried to section off speech into different types of speech, but let's be honest, none of them have really worked. New Vegas goes for the opposite solution. It keeps speech as is, while giving other skills the chance to influence dialogue. The game is also cleverly using its opening area, like Good Springs, to great effect in tutorializing players about this feature. The first real quest in the game is to prepare for an attack on the town. This quest has multiple optional components where you can Tutorial, ask the townspeople okay. for help, and each of them needs convincing using a different skill. This whole quest is basically the game showing you how many different ways you can play it. Like, hey, if you were good at barter, you could have talked this guy into helping. All the players who took this quest know that barter can influence dialogue and not just how much things cost. And minor spoilers, barter can be used to beat the final boss. I'm not even kidding, that's how many options you have here. If you want Easy Pete to share his dynamite with you, you have to prove you wouldn't blow your head off if he did. He doesn't need $10 words to convince him, he needs you to prove you're better at throwing explosives than these clowns. Now that's what I call a... He blew himself up. Checks like this for other abilities are all over the game. Speech is still really useful, but conversations are so much more varied in what they ask of player characters, and that's great. Medicine, a skill I ignored in every other Fallout game, now unlocks some of the best dialogue options because it turns out being a doctor in a post-apocalypse is really, really good at opening doors oh, for you. What other game lets you do hard. therapy at a cannibal chef until he has a breakdown and quits his job? Players are more likely what? to feel like the type of character they made this had game. a tangible impact on a conversation, which creates this a game. rewarding sense of control. On top of all of this, I feel like just watching a bit of this review. I'm even more hyped for this game now. Let's fucking go. All right. I'll probably watch the rest of that review off stream. But for now, let's boot the game back up. Now with that crash fix mod and hope it fixes the crashes. Um, not going to get my hopes too high. Let's hope it worked. If we go, like, five or six cell transfers without a crash, I'm going to assume it worked. We'll still get crashes, even if it fixes the constant ones, because, like, they just happen. But <clears throat> hopefully that helps. H-Bomb is indeed very good at making videos. By the way, if you think I'm good at making videos, maybe consider donating. It really helps a lot, seriously. All your support really does go a long way. Oh wait, I gotta click. I forgot. Otherwise it spends forever going through the menus. Alright, no crash Reno. We're gonna check out what this cross is. Okay. We're gonna find out... Oh. What the dog's doing? Yeah, they aren't doing anything anymore. Coyotes! You ain't shit. This is my desert. I own this desert now. Beautiful desert. It's actually really pretty. Whoa. Oh, you think you own this desert, don't you? Yeah? You don't. You never did. Oh, ooh. My eyes, they keep getting drawn by... That's a person. Whoa. Oh, I've discovered a fast travel location. Is that sunny? That's sunny, I think. What the fuck? Dog? 
Hunter. Hey there, need anything? Oh, she just looks similar. Oh, I'd like to see her wares. Sure, here's what I got. Just a random hunter out in the out in the woods. Doesn't have many caps, but I'll take what she's got. Hi, ma'am. I'm gonna force you to buy my shit. Uh, is is the venom used for anything? Probably not. Anti venom? Yeah, I should probably hold on to that. Um. Oof. I'm gonna sell cram because it reminds me of spam, which is disgusting. Misk is probably where. Uh, gecko hides. How many of these can I afford to sell? Or can she afford to buy, I should say. Whoa! Let me read that dono in a second. Thank you. You guys are so kind. I love gaming stream generosity. There's something in this hole. All right, we're going to find out what's down there in just a second. First, though... <clears throat> Larry Bank 78 thank you so much for the five dollars I really appreciate that it says if you ever do a, a, do play Fallout 3 and want a video to hype you up many a true nerd made a good video called Fallout 3 is better than you think and it's just as good as H bomber guys ooh okay well thank you for the five videos maybe I or five dollars sorry the five dollars maybe I'll listen to that video while I fall asleep um, not a crash guys like I said this game forces itself minimized whenever I tab out um, to read like stuff to read like donos and stuff so it's not crashed it's just it's just minimized like I said again um, all right yeah if, if I pause before it happens good chances are that I just I just paused it um, happens with Fallout 4 as well that's annoying as fuck okay let's find out what this is. Let's see. There's got to be something useful down here. This wouldn't exist for no reason. I don't see any... Oh, yep, there it is. Magnum rounds. 20 gauge. Ooh. Ooh, that's a star bottle cap. Is that it? I guess that... Ooh, motorcycle gas tank. $25, but heavy. Hydra. We do not hail Hydra in this house. Ooh, microfusion cells. Anything? Nah, no yummy loot up there. Urgh. We'll quick save and we'll head to the cross. I want to find out what's going on over there. What's... Oh, that's a dog. Okay. Man, my gun skills need to be higher. A clean kill. Took three shots to take it down with the 9 mil. A clean kill. Oh, I think that's the death. That's the death barrier. If I go past, past that line, it's, it's where all that death is. There are nothing actually... Ooh. You'll need a shovel to dig here. Ooh. Okay, so I can dig up graves if I have a shovel. <clears throat> That's a coyote, Zan. Coyotes are like dogs, basically. You know? 20 gauge, 5.56. Five, Might be an upgrade varmint rifle. Camera, not really needed. Don't really need a medical brace. Okay. Let's see. Oh, let's listen to Radio New Vegas, just just to get a listen on the news. What's the news? The women of New Vegas ask me a lot if there's a Mrs. New Vegas. Well, of course there is. You're her. And you're still as perfect as the day we met. It's just about time to get you some news. Troubling news from Prem, as merchants report a large presence of armed, unsavory figures patrolling the town. Residents are nowhere to be found. Well, that's all I have for you. This is Mr. New Vegas 
Wishing you ladylike luck tonight. Okay. We're not going to listen to, like, the music. Because, uh, you know, copyright one is going to get me bad. And two... Oh, oh, oh. You know, maybe... Maybe if we're a little sneaky, we can... Loot the abandoned shack? Ooh, okay. Alright. This is looking promising. Let's hope this stuff... Oh, good. It's not considered stealing. It's fully abandoned. Jet? Yo, they were making drugs in this thing, I bet. They was making drugs! White horse nettle. Electronic scraps. Corn. Rat away. Dirty water. Toilet water I can drink. Awesome. Could heal myself up with some delicious ice cold toilet water. Refreshing. Didn't crash from that. That goes hard as fuck. We love we love it not crashing. Okay. Um I'ma be honest. I think we got everything there is to do in, in Good Springs. Chat, did I miss anything in Good Springs, or is that is that pretty much everything? Also, if I may, how much longer are y'all streaming tonight, Zan? Um, how much longer am I streaming tonight? Um, at least another hour. I, I think probably another hour 20 minutes is a good ballpark. Hour 20 minutes, roughly. Who are you, Hunter? Hey there, need anything? Oh, I guess he's just like... There's, he's another one of the hunters just wandering sure, the world. Sure, here's what I got. I think this is from a mod I added. Where you'll find, like, very low-tier um, vendors out in the world. Which is kind of nice, because it means, like, say I pick up a shitty varmint rifle. That's nearly broken. I can sell it real fast. Oh, wait, actually, I hey can there. sell Need one anything? of my fission batteries, too, I think. Sure, here's what I got. Misk. Oh, he, he can't even accept. Well, no, I can sell one fission battery. He can he can take that and maybe a couple hides. Yeah. Think he can handle one hide? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Rinsed. Cool. Cool. The crashes seem to have at least slowed down. And I honestly feel like the performance is better and more things are loading in, so I wonder if that's... I wonder if that's what was broken before. Like, not having that mod and now it's fixed. We'll see. We'll see. Ooh. Ojo Bueno. That's the, um, the texture pack I'm using. I wonder if that's, like, the texture pack's named after that license plate, or if the license plate is named after the texture pack. Which came first. Okay. <clears throat> so I believe there's nothing left here, right? We are good to leave Good Springs and start heading that way. I think it's towards Nipton, right? Prim? No, it's Prim. Yeah. My bad. Also, this entire, like, path we're about to take to get to New Vegas, all of this is the real layout, geography, shape. Like, everything's just scaled down the real-life, like, road you would take to take this path to New Vegas. Like, you could start in Good Springs. Instead of going straight north to Vegas, you can literally go all the way down past into the into California for a while. A good amount of the map is actually in California, uh, as we consider it today. And then you go all the way around, back up into Nevada, and around back in, into Vegas, you know? It's like one big loop you take, because if you go north, you'll just die. Like, all this kills you that way, so... We're gonna go this way. Actually, I'm gonna wait until daytime. Does this game allow you to find plans for your bases? Um, I don't know. I know you can have housing, it turns out, according to Balth. I'm gonna wait for daytime, because I like to travel during the day. It's, you know, it's a desert setting, you know? What the fuck? I, I guess I stopped the wait, maybe? Hmm. 
This time it just gave us like the pop-up for out of memory. Okay, so I'm gonna check and see if it crashes again, it gives us the out of memory pop-up. That means it hasn't fixed the crash. It's just added an error whenever it does crash, I have to click out of, which is extra time when the crashes happen. So I'll uninstall the crash fix mod if it happens again like that and it gives the pop-up because then it's more time in between crashes. So yeah, no fix for the crashes. We'll just have to live through it. It's Fallout New Vegas. This is life. It'll never be in a playable state. That's the reality we live in. Not unless it gets fully remade. A remaster isn't even enough. It, it has to be a remake. Because a remaster is taking the old game and working on it. That isn't enough. It has to be a remake. Hey there. Need anything? Like sure. Here's what I got. Oh, wait. No, we already... Okay, good. So we're good in that department. So yeah, let's wait... Let's hope we don't get any crashes. Wait for daytime. And head on our way. What? Why? Hello there. It's oh. good to see a friendly oh. face. I almost I picked... took you for a raider, I did. Name's Malcolm. Malcolm Holmes. Don't suppose you'd care to trade. I'm missing a few essentials and... Ah, oh, screw this. Lying just ain't in my nature. I'll tell it to you straight. I've been following you for a good bit now. Why were you following me? It started off innocently enough. I was traveling, as I often do, and happened to observe you picking up one of those blue star caps. You didn't show any reaction to it, so I figured you didn't know what you'd gotten your hands on. What's so special about these caps? There's an old wasteland legend that says somewhere out there is a fabulous treasure from before the war. Those caps with the blue star on them, the tale goes, are the key Already to that it, treasure. Betsy. They're called Sunset Sarsaparilla Stars. Ooh. So you collect, the, collect these caps, too? Nah, I gave it up years ago. Too dangerous. And even if I he did three still watches collect, on. I'd tell you the same. There's people out there so mad with the idea of treasure that they'll attack strangers just on the suspicion that they have some of those caps. Maybe the three watches are time zones? I don't know. Hey, Jazz Dog. Oh my god, you're playing New Vegas? I've been playing Fallout 4 and I'm addicted. Yeah, I'm playing New Vegas. I'm uh, very, very addicted to it so far, I'd say. I'm loving it. Um, I've spent the last three days just testing it and modding it with graphics stuff with my friend Balf, and I've finally gotten it looking pretty fucking nice, I'd say, with um, graphics mods. It still crashes, like, all the time, but we're, we're fine with it. You know, we're working past it. And, um... Very soon I'll be caught up with where I was when I originally played through it on stream. Um, I didn't get very far, and so it'll be mostly a blind playthrough. New Vegas' peak story in IMO gameplay was best in Fallout 4. Yeah, gameplay, I think, in Fallout 4 is very clean. I, I definitely like Fallout 4's, like, world and gameplay a lot, but man, what I would do to, like, see a remake of this game. Maybe one day, you know? Like, imagine a 2030 remake of New Vegas. How ma Like, a, a New Vegas that looks way better than, mo like, current best graphics games that are out right now. That's a potential future ahead of us. That, that would go hard. <clears throat> Where can I find more of these caps? All over the place. The easiest place to find them is unopened bottles of Sunset Sarsaparilla. You'd think they'd all have been picked clean by now. But somehow, new bottles keep appearing in the machines. Some say it's old Festus that does it, hoping someone will finally collect enough caps to earn the treasure. Other than bottles, you'll just have to scavenge. You can find caps in the unlikeliest of places, and Blue Star caps are no exception. So, they th the Nuka-Cola machines and the Sunset Sarsaparilla machines aren't just like randomly unlooted when we find them. They're restocked. By someone or something. The soda machines are being restocked for hundreds of years after the nukes drop. And there's an old legend that it's a guy named Old Festus. Hmm. That's interesting. Did they not, like, make, like, kind of, like, reference that plot line in, like, Adventure Time with the purple soda shit? Like the soda company operating underground, like the institute in the, in yeah I I think that was a Nuka Cola reference. I'm pretty certain it was. 
Um, you mentioned someone named Festus. Who's that? It's said that the treasure is guarded by a man named Festus, and he's the one who asked for the blue star caps. It's also said he's been around since the war, standing a lonely vigil, waiting for someone to come and take the treasure off his hands. That'll make him pretty damn old, but I've met a few people in my travels who claim they actually met him, and they weren't the lying type either. What kind of treasure are we talking about here? No one knows. Money, weapons, water. It is, or maybe was, something of value, and that's enough to get people motivated. Thanks for the info, but I'll be going now. No problem. If you do end up trying to collect more stars, watch out for a man named Alan Marks. He's killed several people for their stars already. Alan Marks. Not like Karl Marx. Like, marks on your report card. I see. Okay. So we need to keep an eye out for him, I suppose. Alright, let's... See if the game can survive us waiting until daytime. It did! Yay! Look at that. I'm so proud of you, New Vegas! What? I just heard gunshots. What the fuck? That's a hunter up on- What a shot, dude. Look at that crazy-ass shot. What the fuck? The sun rising over the hills, the silhouette walks, like, perfectly along it. This game is beautiful. Dude, this game's got some moments, man. That- that's art right there. With the, the the cross there and oh man. This game this game This game is art. Assuming I'm not missing anything in Good Springs, I guess we're just okay to continue on. Head south. Everyone tells me, head south. Head south or you're gonna get your lily white ass kicked. Hell yeah, brother. What sort of character are you working with? Damn, that was the Texas Red? Yes, I am the Texas Red right now. Ooh. Any loot here? I've also modded the fuck out of my game, Larry Banks. Like, trees. Stuff like that. Better textures. Better lighting. Better roads. And textures for those roads. The graveyard has a snow globe. Son of a bitch. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I just realized the Good Spring Cemetery is a whole ass fast travel location. Silly me. Ooh. Coat of tobacco chew. Barrel cactus fruit. All right, brother. All right, where's this? Oh, there it is. I was so... Ooh, limited edition Mojave landmark snow globe. These are rare pre-war artifacts, and they're widely considered to be useless baubles. But rumor has it some collectors will pay dearly for them. Okay, cool. All right, well, here's the grave I was going to be buried in. Is the dog still here? The dog is not still here. Shit. Okay. Um, there's something by the grave. Look around. Oh. Distinctive cigarette butt. Okay, this is what you meant. Well, I guess I have those. I Maybe I can DNA test them to get the Benny. Okay. Well, it's a beautiful, bright, blue, sunny day. Is that a living scorpion? I can change that. Okay, I think it's dead. All right, well. Onward we go. Is Mr. New Vegas on? Let's let's hear what Mr. New Vegas has to tell us. Ladies and gentlemen, this next song goes out from me uh, to you. He's uh, playing music. I thought we could get a little news. A little update on the state of the world. Yeah, no real big game-changing mods uh, on my mod list. Uh, this is pretty much vanilla Fallout New Vegas outside of the visual overhauls and enhancements. 
Um, I wanted to get the true New Vegas experience, but to, you know, have a little bit more vibrance and color in the world, a little more life in it. Um, one of the mods I added does add, like, hunters and caravans and higher populations of, of like, non-important NPCs just walking around the world and populating towns, buildings, and cities. Just so that, like, when I enter a place, it's not like five people are in an entire town, which I heard is a problem with New Vegas. So now I'll walk into, say, like, the Strip, and there'll be, like, 50 people in view immediately, you know, which is how it should be, I think. God, this game's so pretty. Like, just having the no yellow tint and having blue skies contrasting the yellow ground of sand is, is just... It's a vibe. Because, like, I lived in the desert for a while, so... I know what it's like there, and it looks a lot like this on most days. A little less cloudy, to be honest. The mountains, damn. Yeah, I've, I've got a uh, LOD mod on here. One that, like, overhauls the way LED, LODs work, so they look prettier. Um, and they're also better performing. So, ooh, this is like a whole... This seems like it's a whole area I can maybe loot up. Okay, nothing here. But th this is something. This is a whole camp... Campsite area. Ooh. Let's make some healing powder. Some gecko steaks. Every friend on my friends list, every time I see them pop up playing a game, it's a Fallout game. New Vegas, 76, 4, pick your poison. It's always a Fallout game. Ever since the show dropped, it's really funny. Everyone else is also on the same, the same kick, you know? <laughs> We're all playing the same shit after watching the show. It reminds me of the win- it, like, the last time I felt this way was when The Witcher show came out. The other time was when, oh, we've been here. This is where Sunny helped us set that stuff up. Okay, so we're, we're not even that far away from where we've been before. I see. Okay. Um, oh, there's a, th there's people over here. What the fuck? Yo, we got people. Whoa! They're not friendly. They're not friendly, guys. You like that? I shot you. Incoming. Yeah, I did like it. Look out. Incoming. Oh my god. Holy shit. Okay, what if I... What if I just did this? What, how would you react if I just did this? Oh my god. Oh, this is scary. Wow, they're not really doing much damage, though. Come on. You can't hit this. When in doubt, run up to them and use vats. And then blow their head off if they survive it. And I gained a karma for it, too. Because they were bad people, and they deserved to die. Whoa! I did not panic there. I did not panic fire. That was you. That was in your head. That was entirely in your head. That was entirely in your head. Hold on. Do Stimpaks heal you entirely? I think they do, right? Or is it... Yes, it does. Okay. Um, let's eat some of our... Let's eat some of our food for now to get a nice food buff! Dude, everything wants my dick out here. What the fuck's going on? Are these people friendly? No, those are also powder gangers, aren't they? Yeah, they're powder gangers. Okay, cool. More. A lot more. Okay. Okay. You like we can handle enough? this. We can handle this. We can. We got this. Whoa. Okay. Goodbye. Yep. You're good. 
Say goodbye to existence, sir. Oh, my... Vehicles explode if you damage them too much, it would seem. Whoa. Victor? What? The fuck? Howdy, Did... partner. Why are you here? You need to be careful. It's dangerous out here. How did you know I was in trouble? Heck, I can smell trouble a mile away. Some trick without a nose. I'll try to remember that. See that you do. Are you threatening me? Are you following me? I saved your life, so I kind of feel responsible for you is all. Oh, these are both so rude. Goodbye. Well, happy trails then. Yeah, uh, he's he helped me. That's so weird. I think if you're near Good Springs or I guess anywhere that Victor is, if you end up in a fight that gets like too tough, Victor starts beelining it to help you. Huh. The fact that people in my chat that love Fallout New Vegas are reacting with surprise to this kind of speaks a testament to the quality of Fallout New Vegas. How is it legal and not bad for me to kill these guys and loot their bodies, but looting their crates? Now, that's... That's unconscionable. Yeah, homeboy needs a super stim pack. Honestly, I could down a... Sunset. Oh, tank that. Tank that radiation. Yes. Love it. Xander Root. True. Xander Hall Root. Silence 22 pistol goes crazy. That's the stealth gun. Yeah, why can't I loot the powder gangers? Is it, like, do I have to be vilified with them for it to be morally acceptable or something? Whoa. Bugs. There are bugs over there, guys. Whew. Am I hearing like a... There's a gunfight happening over there. Oh, Victor's in a fight. Victor might die. Victor's like possibly dead. Can Victor die? Oh, oh, maybe not. <laughs> maybe... They killed him. Damn. Maybe like... Maybe Victor can't die more in the uh, practical sense. Like, bro's built different. Holy shit. Okay. I accidentally robbed his clothes, so that's extra weight I don't need. Let's check apparel. Weapons. How do I have the highest durability pistol? All right. Yeah, for sure, show. Oh, is that a crash plane? That that goes hard. Surely crash plane must have something. Huh. Nothing. Oh, ooh, lootable? No, come on. Really, I can't. I can't rinse the powder gangers. It's illegal. John John Skydiving. Is this a skydiving company? Oh, I guess that makes sense because the crash plane. Environmental storytelling in my Fallout game? Sunset Sarsaparilla Star Bottle Cap right here. Holy shit. Sky John Skydiving Key. What's that gonna be for? I didn't see anything around here that looked useful. Let's... No crashes in a hot minute. That's nice to report. Is there anything around here that would be used on? Key to the plane door, maybe? Is there... That would be crazy. No, there's no interactables here. This is just an environmental... This has been here for 100 years. This is like 200 years old. Sun bleached and like nuclear fire bleached as well 
Like, that's not even close to a thing that can be interacted with. That's environmental clutter. And storytelling bits, yeah. Okay, I guess there's nothing really here worth looting? Ooh, there's a little ammo in, the, in that little drawer. Sexy sleepwear? Okay, no. How many of the trans people who played this game started out wearing that on their male character, ironically? And then it just kind of all snowballed from there. How much longer am I streaming for? Let me check. I've been live for eight hours, so about not- or not nine hours. About one more hour. A, like, about 57 more minutes I'll stream for. Obviously, I might stretch it or cut it slightly shorter if I reach a really good stopping point. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go a while longer. I've been live for nearly nine hours, to be clear. I would not be... I would not be acting lazy, okay? It would be completely justified. Oh, shit. I gotta watch the VOD tomorrow? Oh, oh, there's shit up there. Ho oh, ho! Did this game think it could hide stuff from me? <gasps> I swear I saw a fucking star bottle cap. That would be a crazy fucking place to hide one. Just sitting with some junk. Okay, that trash is radioactive, I guess. If there's radioactive trash around, there's gonna be radioactive animals around. Oh. What? Oh. Oh! Oh, oh. How did you survive that? Oh, you little biter. Oh my god, I love how the ragdoll in this game just... This game would not be as good without the ragdoll, dude. Oh. It's so satisfying. It's so satisfying. Okay. So there's something up this hill, for sure. I saw it. I peeped it with my eyes from... Ooh! Is this fresh water? This is just full-on fresh water. I can heal up here. Oh, I, I get rads. Never mind. It's not fully fresh. It's like fresh water, and you can drink it for health, but... It's still irradiated. Like, all bodies of water in the world at this point probably are. Like, is there any not irradiated, like, surface body water in all of the world at this point? Like, maybe somewhere, but fuck. I, I think the implication is, like... Fallout's nuclear war is the worst case scenario, like all the nukes. Lake Mead? Wait, is Luke, Lake Mead isn't nuke, like radioactive at all? I haven't seen it myself yet or swam in it, so I, I wouldn't know, but... Okay, so it's fresh water. Can you dive and like swim around in it? Is there stuff at the bottom? Fish from battery? Fallout 3 uh, has pure water as a quest line? Huh. Ooh, caps. Big time caps. Is there any more I'm missing here? Seems like I might be. Sensor modules. Okay. Raw. Raw. Okay. I'll save. Still no crashes. I don't want to jinx myself. I think they're inevitable, like, they've got to happen every once in a while. But, like, the fact one hasn't happened in all of this outdoors exploration, and the game looks prettier since I got that mod, I think that crash happened because I tried to skip time while that guy was trying to talk to me. I think that was a fluke crash. Just because of, like, me attempting to skip time while an NPC wants to initiate conversation. I think that's what caused that crash, because it didn't happen the second time. And now I've been running around, I've skipped time, I've, I've been loading constant stuff, like... Th there should have been a crash by now. I think the mod fixed it, and that one crash was just a certain confounding circumstance, if that makes sense. Oh, I saw a, ge a gecko up ahead. I'm gonna see if we can get the free kill on it for, uh, XP. Where is it? 
Oh, oh my god, it ambushed us. Holy shit. Oh, it dives straight through our, our <laughs> shot. Oh. Fucking wild, dude. Oh, it crippled me, bro. Alright, we'll use a stim pack. I've got a lot right now. We are not hurting for them. What is that? What is that? Oh my gosh, that's another gecko. Hey, little guy. Oh, you're nasty. You know, if these things didn't, like, rear themselves up and, like, ready for an attack before they just did it, I feel like they'd be far more lethal. Is there anything in that direction worth checking out? Probably not. Let's just head on to this town. I think this is Prim. Yep. Los Angeles straight ahead, Nipton straight ahead, and Prim. Oh. Hey! Hey! Okay. I think one of the mods I add adds more enemies to the world, just generally. Like, they'll just be roaming around. So it'll make the world a little harder. Oh, yeah. A random rad roach. Like, I think that, like, yeah, it adds just things like that out into the world. And they'll fight each other and die. They'll, they'll, you'll encounter them randomly. They'll start fights with things. It, basically, I got a mod that adds more life to the world. Helps it feel a little more like it was made recently. I hope you guys don't mind. I hope you don't think that, like, ruins my first hey, time experience. where the hell do you think you're going? Prim is off limits. I have not, Jazz Dog. Uh, okay, NCR Trooper, let's go, my boys. All right. Um, thanks for the warning. I'm gonna be very kiss-ass. All right, be careful. You'll want to talk to Lieutenant Hayes. He's in a tent just down the road. Just stay on the west side of the overpass if you don't want to get shot. Is that a threat or is that a warning? Like, is that warning me not to get shot by... Like, whatever's going on, or is that them warning that they'll shoot me? I honestly don't know. Okay, we want to speak to Lieutenant Hayes? We got a new quest. I guess not. Okay. Yo, NCR flag! Is there anything to loot here? These ruins seem quite empty. Like, I feel like you can kind of get a view when you play Fallout games of what ruins are just this. Like, absolutely fucking nothing. And which ones actually have something. Usually whether or not, like, you can see containers inside and whether there's a door within a loading cell instance. Um... I do hope eventually Bethesda games are able to break free of that. Oh, a courier box. Oh, it's just a mail drop box. Never mind. I need to sleep, but I'll watch the VOD? Hell yeah. Lieutenant Hayes' tent. Okay, Pog. Wait, whose tent is this? Metal door to NCR tent. So I guess that's just like a barracks. All right. We'll save. Let's hope no crashes. Still no crashes. We're keeping a good streak, guys. Hello, Lieutenant Hayes. I'm Lieutenant Hayes of the New California Republic Army. 5th Battalion, 1st Company. What's your business? I like the NCR. What are you doing out here? What's the New California... Let's ask the most basic question. What's the New California Republic? Where do you come from that you haven't heard of the NCR? Never mind. It doesn't matter much. If you haven't heard of us... You must not be from the Legion. Put simply, the NCR is the greatest nation currently functioning. I agree. Can you tell me more about the NCR? Sure can. The NCR was founded from the survivors of one of the Great Vaults. We started as a small settlement called Shady Sands. We now consist of five states that make up the greatest nation since the Great War. It's a, I know about that from the show. Hehe. <laughs> People are going to be so mad that I know more about Shady Sands from the show than anything else. Fuck. Um, what's the Legion? Caesar's Legion. A bunch of degenerate slavers led by a madman who calls himself Caesar. Every one of them a barbarian to the last. I've even heard of one of their leaders, the Legate or something, 
He goes around with a human skull on his head. Savages to the last. Is that Lanius? That he's talking about? Why is the NCR interested in this desert? It's no secret. Our interest here is twofold. First, we want to remain in control of Hoover Dam. It supplies the Republic with power. It's also a source of fresh water. Second, we want to prevent the Legion from advancing across the Colorado River and endangering the home states. Yeah, the Colorado splits the east from the west and would be considered, like, the most important natural border in this time. It makes a lot of sense that Lake Mead would be, like, this sort of central spot due to the existence of the Hoover Dam being such a perfect combination of things. It's a bridge across that natural barrier... It's basically like a fortress. It's power generating. It's fresh water producing. It is like, I love the way that Fallout, this game, Fallout New Vegas, takes places like New Vegas, the Hoover Dam, and other real life landmarks and makes them into like cool fictional lore things. It's in that are like, this seems plausible if that region fell into this scenario. Even today. It's so cool. I, I really love the vibes and setting of this game. It is, so far, settings, setting and vibes-wise, one of my favorite games. I have some other questions. Ask away. What are you doing out here? We were sent out here to hold back the tide of convicts from the correctional facility. As you can probably tell, we aren't doing the kind of job we could be doing. What's the problem with your mission? The mission isn't a problem. The problem is with supplies. The convicts are better armed and organized than our intel initially suggested. I'm trying to get some reinforcements here. Maybe some guns with some firepower. But, shit. Things are just going slow. Hmm. Tell me about the correctional facility. Most people just call it the NCRCF. That's NCR Correctional Facility. A while back, the convicts there staged a coup killed the guards that weren't able to escape, and have been ransacking the area since then. Do you have any information on the convicts? Not much. They've taken to calling themselves powder gangers. They've been using the explosives meant to clear boulders as weapons. They got organized faster than I would have thought, most of them at least. Thankfully, the small group in town here seemed to have split off from the main force, so they aren't getting anything in the way of support. Okay. I have some other questions. Ask away. Uh, well, I guess that's it for now. Goodbye. Okay. Patrolling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter. Yes, it does. That's the meme. All right, crash. Holy shit, are we crash free now, guys? Did we do it? Let's see if it crashes going in here. No shot. All right, it's going to crash going out here, right? Dog, are we... I think we're home free, guys. Oh, Sergeant McGee. This guy's name. I'm Sergeant McGee of the New California Republic Army, 5th Battalion, 1st Company. If you want to talk about something, speak to Lieutenant Hayes. That is a crazy name. Where are you from? I'm from Hub originally, but it's been a long time since I saw it. I'm on my second tour here. Most non-commissioned officers are. Huh. Well, goodbye. See ya. Unfortunate he doesn't have more characterization. He seems like a chill dude. Especially with a name like that. Sergeant McGee? What the fuck? Zan, do not get complacent? What do you mean? I'm... What do you mean, complacent? I'm not sure you should be here. Bro, what do you mean? I'm, I'm helping out. Oh. 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 Thank God, I really took a, g a gamble there. Okay, there's more, dude. There's more. Oh, there's more. Oh, any more? I think I got them all? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got them all. Yeah, I won't jinx it. I am being wary of crashes. Don't worry, I'm still going to periodically quick save just to make sure we don't lose any progress. Oh, I see something... There is hostiles on the map. What's going on? Uh -huh. Oh. Oh, hello. Damn. Huh. 
pop his head real fast. Oh. Oh, you're pulling out the crowbar, are you? Well, you just brought a crowbar to a fucking gunfight, dude. You're about to get your brains blown out. Who's shooting me? You? Really? You? You think... You think you're him. Bro thinks he's him, guys. He thinks he's him. You like that? Yeah, you thought, you thought you were him. He just threw dynamite at me. Crazy son of a bitch. These are not doing as much damage as it says it'll do on the bats. Oh, no, you get back here, motherfucker. I'm not letting you get away. What? What? Bro thinks you're... Yeah, you're not running. Get back here. Get back. There we go. No survivors. I hope I gained karma for that. No, I didn't. <laughs> okay. You don't lose it, though. Game doesn't consider that an immoral action. Oh. 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 God, my mouse wheel. I need a new mouse so bad. It's gonna revolutionize the looting experience with this uh, add-on for uh, New Vegas. Okay. All right. So I guess we go in here. I know that there, I remember there being like a robot in there. Oh, there's a, there's a dude over there. Is he friendly? Nope. He is also a dick. My armor condition, dangerously low you say. Yeah, it's about to change in just a second. Don't worry. Dude, the falling on the ground and staggering is so cool. Oh god, I ran out of ammo. Okay, let's pull out an even scarier weapon, ideally. This does more damage, sure. Dude, I love how I shot- I shot him in the neck and it looked like his head just kind of like... What? Over. More shots. Oh, fuck. Okay, okay, level up. Okay, we're we're popping off. Okay, um... Hmm. Let's get repair to 50 for no fucking reason. Um... Science, let's get up to 35. Sneak, let's get up to... Th no, sneak doesn't need to be much higher, honestly. Not now. Um, speech and barter, lockpick... Lockpick to 35 for sure. I've got four more points. We'll trickle those four more points into guns, I guess. Get our gun skill a little higher. Ooh, and we can get Swift Learner too. Oh, educated. With the Educated perk, you gain two more skill points every time you advance in level. This perk is best taken early on to maximize its effectiveness. Gib. 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 Mole rat meat, vodka, cases, dynamite. Okay. Where are these gunshots ringing off from? I hear them over here. What's doing that? Where are those coming from? What's going on? What the hell's going on over here? Y'all best not be lollygagging. Whoa! Oh, I see you, motherfucker. Oh, you think you- Oh, I got you in my sight, you stupid bastard. I'm a Floridian with a gun. You can't do nothing to me. This shit ain't nothing to me, man. I'll fucking kill you. God, Dracula flow goes so crazy. Like, if it weren't for Dracula flow, I don't- I don't know where we'd be today. As a society, Frank, like... Okay, that's... That's cringe. Oh, uh, this gun is not accurate. Oh, but when it hits... Not accurate, but when it hits... Alright, save up. 
Get our progress locked down just in case we get a crash. You never know. Okay, I don't think there... There's a... That's a camp. What the fuck? There's a full-on camp over here. That's what that smoke is. Oh, these are the powder gangers. They've they've camped out all over town. They've just made themselves at home, have they? Oh, is this not a powder ganger? Oh, it's a prospector. Okay. Just a nice prospector, dude. Escaped convict here though. Oh, this the I bet the prospector handled this guy. Nice of him. Especially to leave the loot there for me. Oh, more comp- Oh, oh boy. More powder gangers, that makes sense. Oh my gosh. I'm hit. Yeah, you're hit. You're about to be even harder hit. Look at that. Oh. Calm down, calm down. Come on. How high do these shots go? What the fuck? My courier right now is arrow ace. True, canonically. Oh, that was a bad shot, man. You should have saved that. You should have saved that when I came up here. Oh, now now you lost your head, man. Was it worth it? You lost your head. I'm collecting all your 1911s. I'm gonna sell them. I'm actually gonna pick out which one has the highest durability and damage and go with that one. Okay. Weapons. 10, 9, 9, 8, 8, 8, all that. Okay. Drop, 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 drop. And we go with this one. Yoink! See? Now we have maximized our gains. We'll eat some. We'll eat something real fast, though, because we are a little. We're a little peckish. Eat some maize, some... Won't drink a new... Well, I'll drink one Nuka-Cola, sure. Adds a cap. Honey mesquite pod, a healing powder, some iguana bits. There we go. That'll heal me up right quick. You can use guns to repair? Wait, what? Like, I can combine guns to repair? Is that a... Dude. Wait. That's... Valuable knowledge. That's very valuable knowledge, and I thank you, Alley24. I thank you a lot. How do we do this? Holy... Holy fuck. It's full condition now. That's fucking crazy. Well, I have learned a new mechanic that is absolutely game-changing. That is going to help in our journey a lot. Thank you, guys. See? Streaming these games is better because then people can tell you stuff like that that you didn't know. That makes things better. I can repair a varmint rifle. Okay. Oh, wait, another one? Yeah. Let's repair up our varmint rifle. Why not? Well, no, that's not. Right then. Okay. That is big. That is so helpful. Thank you. Wow, seriously. All right, if we're going to get a crash, it's going to be here. The crash will be right fucking here if we're if the crashes are going to persist. If we get in fine, I think we're good. I'll be astonished. I always crash first time when I was testing. When I'd run here, because this is my, my, where I'd run. I'd just run. Yep, there we go. We got the out of memory. I, I knew the crashes weren't gone. Still much rarer, though. I think it helped. I really think it helped. The game's still open, too, when it crashes. That's weird. It definitely helps, though. That's way less crashing with the mod. Like, that, that was a while before we had a crash. Granted, we didn't go through many cells. We went through a few, to be fair. 
but like that was a while and we're loading a specific place there that every time I've tested it crashes me once at least once because of it's a lot of stuff in there I have made this run back from prim and uh, good springs like 20 times in the last three days just testing the uh, visual mods, seeing how the game looks and testing crashes. Hey Xander Hall, can we get more watch parties in Fallout gameplay? Well, of course, we're going to be doing more watch parties, uh, or I'm going to be doing an another watch party of From Tomorrow, assuming Balthazar is available. If Balth uh, is available and a pillow is available, and uh, obviously I'll be there, um, and Heavy Gretel's available, uh, then we will uh, do the watch party of From. If they're not available, then I'll do my regularly scheduled segments, and then we'll just do more Fallout. Does that sound good? I feel like that's a good way to handle things. Alright, let's test it again. I don't know what it there was brought you to Prim, youngster, but you might want to rethink your plans. Town's gone to hell. Who are you? Johnson Nash is my name. Husband of Ruby Nash. Lived in Prim going on eight years now, thick and thin. I'm a trader primarily, for what it's worth with things like they are. I also run the local Mojave Express outpost. Hey, I work for them. I'm a courier with the Mojave Express. Well, I don't got any work right now, sorry to say. I lost a package I was supposed to deliver. I'll tell you whatever I can. You have a delivery order you can show me? What can you tell me about this job? Show delivery order. Oh, so you're talking about one of them packages. That job had Strange written all over it, but we couldn't turn down the caps. What was Strange about it? That cowboy robot had us hire six couriers. Each was carrying something a little different. A pair of dice, chess piece, that kind of stuff. Last word I have in the office, it looked like payment had been received for the other five jobs. Guess it was just your chip that didn't make it. First deadbeat we hired to do the job canceled. Hope a storm from the divide skins him alive. Well, that's where you came in. Is that the California-Nevada divide? I think that's part of one of the DLCs. He canceled? The, yeah, there was like a previous courier that was supposed to take the job and canceled. So it's possible I'm not even the guy who was supposed to get shot in the head. Yeah, I got this look when he saw you next down on the courier list. His expression turned right around, asked me if your name was for real. I said, sure as lack of rain, you were still kicking. Then he turned down the job, just like that. I asked if he was sure it was good money. No, let Courier 6 carry the package, that's what he said. Like the Mojave'd sort you out or something. Then he just up and walked out. Hmm. Do you know who he was, where he went? No idea. Sounds like you two had a history for him to act like that. And turn down the money, too. Hope he didn't see any a trouble history. in that okay. package of yours. Maybe he thought your name was bad luck. Enough for me to say. Hmm. Some men stole my package. A man in a checkered suit and some thugs. Did they pass this way? Well, now that you mention it, a few nights back, one of the townies was out scavenging for supplies. He said he saw a fellow with a daisy suit come through with some of them great con misfits. They was talking about a chip. One of those men shot me. I need to know the best way to get to them. Well, for that, your best bet is going to be talking to Deputy Beagle. Since they came to town, he was keeping a good bit of notes on them, and he was slinking around Bison Steve when your pretty boy friend came through. He may have heard where they were going. I'd like to ask you something else. I guess I don't have anywhere better to be. Um... What can I do to help Prim? Right now, Beagle is the closest Prim's got to any organized law. But he's still stuck up in Bison Steve. Deputy First thing Beagle. I'd say is get his sorry butt out of there. Okay. I have some questions about Prim. Well, I'll answer what I can. Do you know? Oh, gosh. Okay. 
Do you know where I can find the courier office? Sure do. I run the courier office out of my shop. Leastways, I did before things went to hell around here. Oh, Beagle Bagel, Deputy Bagel. Sheriff eats the donuts, Deputy eats the bagels. Yeah. I have some more questions about Prim. Ask away. What happened to Prim? Let's see. Been tough around here for a good while now. Worse since them thugs kidnapped our deputy. Yeah, it's getting taken the over by from criminals. The up the road. First, there was just a few thugs rolling through town, but then they got organized. Now they call themselves powder gangsters or something, and run around throwing dynamite and shooting people. A little while ago, a good chunk of them left whatever kind of organization they got up there to squeeze all the food and drink out of us they could. I have more questions about Prim. Ask away. What's at Vicky and Vance? That's where, That's where we, we are. are. Yep, there This here little casino brought some cash and bodies into the town before them powder gangsters came in. Now, they can't rush us without eating a good bit of hot lead, but we are in a kind of box canyon. Guess this is a fitting place for that as any. I reckon that if they thought hard enough about it, They'd realize they got more bodies than we have bullets. But for now, we're safe enough in here. Hmm. More questions about Ask Prim? Ask away. What's the Bison Steve? It's an old hotel and casino here in town. Old Laura used to rent out rooms there, but she took off months ago. Across the way from the Vicky and Vance, the other old casino. Can't miss it. Hmm. More questions? Ask away. Yeah, something else. I guess I don't have anywhere better to be. Uh, where can I get information on the man that shot me? A beagle had some notes he was taking while he was eavesdropping around the Potter gangsters. He'll be your best source of information on that subject. Uh, I want to ask you some more about the delivery I was supposed to make. Sure, I'll tell you what I know. Uh, that's something else. I guess I don't have anywhere better to be. Is that everything? Oh, nope, we've got more. You saved the Powder Ganger's kidnapped Prim's deputy. Well, you can call Beagle a deputy so long as you don't harbor too high an opinion of the word. Boy was about as useful as tits on a rad scorpion. Only qualification he ever had was That's to crazy. be brother to the wife of the sheriff. Still, yes, I suppose Jenna. he don't deserve what's befell him. We would have considered paying the ransom. If we'd had caps to spare. Interesting. Why do you keep calling them gangsters? I thought they were called powder gangers. Gangers, gangsters, all sounds like trouble to me. We're not playing a hand of caravan. All right, goodbye. Yeah, bye. <laughs> I love how casual that is. Like, yeah, bye. Raw. Dude, they got their guns out and ready in case those dudes bust in here. Respectable. They were about to bust in. Hey there. Okay, you're just some guy. Who here's a guy and who's here? Who here's a guy? Who here is a guy and who here is a guy? Oh, Prim Slim. You're a guy. Howdy, partner. Welcome to the Vicky and Vance Casino and Museum. Okay. Who are you? Prim Slim at your service. Authentic cowpoke and official spokespot of the Vicky and Vance Casino and Museum. Yeehaw! I love him. Who were Vicky and Vance? Where have you been, partner? Hiding under a rock? Vicky and Vance were this nation's fourth or maybe fifth most infamous celebrity outlaw couple ever. That's Whoa. who they was. Prim Slim here can tell you the whole story, if you can spare a minute to hear the tale. Tell me the whole story of Vicky and Vance. Yahoo! I ain't had a chance to tell their tale in a mess of years. First things first, any boss you've heard about Vicky and Vance being copycats ain't nothing but ill-tempered slander. Fact is, they begun their crime spree two days before Bonnie and Clyde robbed their first bank. So who was copying who? True. Now true, Vicky and Vance didn't exactly cut a wide swath of murder and bank robbery across the central US like Bonnie and Clyde did. It was more like a narrow swath of shoplifting check cashing fraud, and gas pump drive-offs. But crime is crime. They drove reckless, too. <laughs> Having lived by the gun, 
Well, man's old one anyway. It was only fitting that the duo of desperados would die by the gun. I love this. Perhaps it was fate itself that accidentally drove them into a crossfire between police and a gang of bank robbers in Plano, Texas. Or maybe they just didn't notice until it was too late. It's been said that Vicky would have tried to cash a bad check in that bank had she lived. We'll never know for sure. All we know is that the crossfire tore the car and both occupants to pieces, and the police issued an official apology. You can put your eyes on the genuine death car just over yonder, and there's Vance's machine gun in the case next to it. <laughs> Tell me about... No, we're not hearing it again. Tell me about Prim. Prim is a thriving resort community located in Clark County, Nevada, right along Interstate 15. He's reading the Whether Wikipedia you Vegas to entry. try your luck, or want to hit one last jackpot before you leave Nevada, Prim's your place. The town's premier attraction is the world-famous Vicky and Vance Casino and Museum, so you came to the right place, partner. <coughs> <coughs> What about the Bison Steve Hotel across the street? <clears throat> the Bison Steve is one of Prim's less impressive casino hotels. I'd steer clear of that place, partner, if I were you. Rumor is the dealers over there cheap, and that rickety roller coaster is liable to fall down any day because it wasn't built to cold. Hmm. What is this place? <clears throat> Why, this is the Vicky and Vance Casino and Museum, Prim's premier tourist attraction and resort destination. Yeehaw. Yeehaw! I love him. Alright, that's all I think he's got to tell me. Happy trails, partner. Happy trails. Alright, anybody here who's like a guy who I gotta talk to? Ain't that a kick in the head? Oh, Ruby Nash. Hello there. What brings you to Prim? Uh, who are you? I'm Ruby Nash. Pleased to make your acquaintance. My husband and I are prim long-timers. He fancies himself a traitor, and I know my way around a kitchen. Hmm. What do you cook? My specialty <laughs> is a rad scorpion venom casserole. It's more appetizing than it sounds. That's insane. The venom has a sharp, smoky flavor, and it numbs your mouth so fierce you'll forget you ever had a tongue. I'm sure. It's perfectly safe. Long as you don't have sores in your mouth for the venom to find your blood. Cause that'll kill you dead. <laughs> I love how she says it. I like some of that rad scorpion venom casserole. Does sound good, don't it? How many rad scorpion glands you got? I don't have any. Guess you'll be needing to find some, huh? Come back when you do. Now tell me about Prim. My mother taught me never to say something unless it was nice. So, I don't have nothing to say about Prim, for the time being at least. It's a sad state of affairs. Discuss it with Mr. Nash if you care to. Just makes me want to cry. Alright, see you later. Bye. <clears throat> Eepy. Okay. Um, ooh, oh, can't, can't loot that. Alright, I think everything here is gonna be, you're in trouble if you loot it. I th think that's everything. I don't, Howdy. everybody actually looks quite distinct with these, like, new NPC mods, so it's kind of hard to tell who I've actually talked to and who's Sarando, you know what I mean? Hey, Dipster, what's up? Blind Fallout New Vegas playthrough, I've heavily modded it. So, uh, if you played it before, then you may be wondering, why does it look so fucking pretty? Uh, it's because I, I'm very good. Very good at modding things. I did not have any help. Balthazar did not help me at all. Not a little bit. Not even at all. Not even a little bit. Ah, shit, it's raining. Oh my gosh, look at this. Look, look. Clean. Okay. Time to go into this murder hotel. I'm sure this will go fine. Oh, yep, oh murder God. hotel. <clears throat> Call an ambulance, but not for me. I've been told a million times to play this and never have, lol. Oh, it's, it's really good. Oh. Yep, lose your head. Get domed. 
I think I'm shooting them in the neck, and it's like ripping their head off. I'm pretty certain that's the mechanism that's happening here. Okay. Oh man, do, do not like skip out on the trash cans, it seems. <clears throat> Ooh, I can terminal this. Okay, hacking. Some terminals are protected and can't be accessed without a password. If your science skill is high enough, you can attempt to hack the terminal. Selecting the correct password will grant you access. If your guess is incorrect, you will be shown how many letters match the correct password and in the correct location. You have four tries to guess correctly. If you fail, the terminal will remain inaccessible until you own the password. You can exit hacking at any time and try again. However, exiting the terminal will force its security code to reset Delaying your in your ability to start hacking again. Okay. I never really did get the hang of this, but now I know it's you guess your first one, and then it, based on your first guess, if it's a lucky one, you can go from there on knowing how many of the letters were correct in the same spot. Weird ass way of hacking. Okay. Hmm. Let's start with dragons. Uh, how about beliefs? That's got, like, a lot of nouns in it. One out of seven. Ooh. Weapons? Two out of seven. So definitely an E is the second word. Healing? No, because it would have been three. S that, no, can't be feeling. Useless? What does that match? No. Reading. Well, yeah. Yeah, it does. Well, no, it would be three out of seven if that was. Implies. Hmm. I suck at these, chat. Pillows. That's definitely not gonna be it. Hmm. I wonder if it could be related to the building we're in. What is this building? It's a casino. Or, it's a casino and hotel. Selling. Five out of seven. Okay, our last chance. And we know five out of seven characters. It would have to be useless, right? That doesn't make sense, though. Decline... Dealing! It has to be dealing, right? ING. Yep. Yeah, it's dealing. No! What? 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 Dude, I hate terminal minigames. I will never understand them. I will never understand this minigame ever in my life. I've never once passed a single terminal minigame in Fallout. I will never understand them. Locked hard door, bro. Never getting that shit. That's locked from, away from me forever. Yeah, no, I, I legitimately have never once and will never, ever be able to crack a terminal in Fallout. It's the worst designed minigame of all time. I actually hate the minigames for the terminals. Like, I think it's bad game design. Like, they're, like, the fact that it's still, after, like, what, 24 years of my life of me playing Fallout games, I've yet to be able to get it, like, figured out. And, like, find a way to do it that's consistent. Like, it's just random. It's just <laughs> luck. It's gotta be just luck, right? Is it literally just luck? There's no skill to it. There cannot be any skill to it. I have literally poured over those terminals for, like, an hour before. There is not any skill to it. There cannot be skill to it. There's no way I am, like, somehow so bad at it that I'm breaking any chance... Of, like, just randomly getting one right. Like, it's gotta be, like, an RNG thing, and I don't have a high enough science skill, I think. 
pick three, hit the red button, try again, it will never lock you out that way. Oh, okay. So it's so badly made of a mini game that you're meant to cheat. Cool. Good to know. Name a better combination than Bethesda and weird ass fucking archaic bullshit. Oh! Sunset Sesperla Star Bottle Cap. Yoink! Can't be too mad, I got one of those. Oh, at least I can open this. We really need to up our lock picking so doors like what I just encountered. I need to never have to do a terminal, that's the thing. I've got you now. Hi. I, oh. Rip. I think I just realized it doesn't matter where the dot is, what matters is where the iron sights are pointed. So it's like shooting a real gun, so. Neat. I'll make my my aim better. Pork and beans, purified water. Oh my god, you're spoiling me, escape convict. The higher your science, the you have to guess that the correct answer is in the terminal, unless you have to guess. Ah. Bagel. I've got you now. Oh my gosh, you're the leader. In that case, allow me to delete you from reality very quickly. Stagger, please. Stagger onto the ground. This is a 1911. Has more stopping power than this, I know that. Blow his brains out. Fuck you. Shoot him in the face. Stagger his ass. Get down. Oh, hi. Yeah, get up. Get up for your sum summary execution. <laughs> oh, he popped. Oh, he popped on that one. Holy shit. God, this game's fun. This is the kind of game you can just stay up all night drinking Monster and just, like, destroying your eyes and brain on, you know? Just, like, everything burns. It's like you've been up all night playing video games for an unhealthy amount of time. This is one of those games, and I feel like that's what it was on release day for, like, a lot of people. I wish I could have been a part of the New Vegas hype train when it was coming out, you know? I hope they do a re-release at some point, and I can be excited for that, you know? Have that, like, be like, so you see in the original, we had to do all this stuff, because I had that experience with Dark Souls, where I got into Dark Souls just, like, a few years before they dropped the full remake that um, made the game super accessible and run really well and graphically super clean. Before that, you had to get DS Fix and install a bunch of fix mods, just like New Vegas. And even, like, once you did that, the game looked like garbage because of all the compressed textures. So you had to get mods that decompressed the textures. So you had the same game textures. It wasn't a texture pack. It was just a mod that decompressed the game's textures, immediately making everything look, like, be way prettier. Um, yeah, dude. Oh, my God. Prepare to die editions like Dark Souls was fucking shoddily put together. So I hope that New Vegas can get the... Uh, prepare to die treatment as in like they make a remake of this that I'm sure people will nitpick just like people did the Dark Souls remake but that Dark Souls remake was a game changer it, it made it so like oh I want to play Dark Souls 1 I don't have to install a shit ton of mods just to get it running you know that's big it's a big improvement I know that's where I'm meant to go but no. We, we we check what's up here. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm hit. Yeah, you, yeah, you've been hit. Damn. Pop. Haha. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, by the way, oh Zan, by the way, uh if you don't know, you can use faction armor as a disguise. Yes, I'm aware of that actually. It's a really neat feature I heard about. Um, I really like that that's a thing, but I'm not going to take advantage of it simply because uh, I want to 
run and gun. I really like running and gunning in these situations. I'm sure it's got its uses. Oh wait, New Vegas Remake? Yeah, I'm playing it right now. Um, I would love if they made that though. A New Vegas Remake, yeah. That would be a dream game remake for me. That and the infamous games. That'd go hard as fuck. We really need the infamous games remade. Oh. Or remastered, but frankly, I, I want remake. Full full stop remake. A very easy locked door. Why are there very easy to pick locked doors in this world? Like, who's making the easy to pick locks? Huh. Okay. Hello. I think after we clear uh -huh. this place out and <coughs> free Beagle and talk to him is when we'll wrap up stream. Bro got his Found fucking you. brains blown out. Okay, we're just gonna do it this way because fuck me. Okay, there we go. Varmint rifle. Dynamite. Buff out. Come on! I've got you. Okay, let's hope this is enough to, to do it. Oh! I can see the round flying in the air. Oh my gosh, what are you doing, brother? What do you think this is, a game? You think this is a game? You like that? I'm hit! This is not a game, whoa! This is not a game, man! What do you mean? You think this is a game? This is not a fucking game, bro. It's actually literally a game, but you, you guys know what I mean. Yoink, yoink. Actually, no, we, we loot them like this now. We break our bad habits. Wait, oh, he had a pack of cigarettes. Fuck. Now I'm over encumbered. Bison Hotel cabinet key. That's going to be used somewhere for sure. Got that NCR money. Bottle cap, spear. Oh yes, and now we run as fast as possible over here. I love encumberment in games. It's my favorite feature. I wouldn't play video games if it weren't for this feature, frankly. It's a selling point. Okay, weapons. I guess in that case, if this is repaired, the rest of these can just be dropped. Oops, that's full. And I'm still over, well, no, I'm not overweight now. Okay. That does it. Oh, Sunset Sarsaparilla, yoink. Nuka Cola, yoink. God, I'd half expect like a star bottle cap just like somewhere on a random shelf. Or... Ooh, we are getting close to the memory limit. The game wants to crash, it seems. Oh, fuck. Things are looking low detailed like that. The Vanta Black cabinet. I wonder what that's. I wonder what that's hinting at. Ooh, pack of cigarettes. Open a door. Ooh, bottle caps. Yoink. Ransom note. Oh shit. On oh, miscellaneous. All right, hold on. Data. Miscellaneous. Oh, Mojave to Express Delivery Six of Six. Instructions. Deliver the package. 
at the north entrance to the Vegas Strip. Hold on, they sent me on the north road, like the way that you should not be able to go, like the death road. By way of Freeside, an agent of the recipient will meet you at the checkpoint. Take possession of the package and pay for the delivery. Bring the payment to Johnson Nash at the Mojave Express Agency in Prim. Bonus on completion, 250 caps, manifest this origin. One oversized poker chip composed of platinum. Contact Contract penalties. You are an uh, authorized agent of the Mojave Express package until the delivery is complete. Mm -hmm. In process, contractually obligated to complete this con transaction and materially responsible for any malfeasance or loss. Failure to deliver the proper recipient may result in forfeiture of your advance and bonus. Criminal charges and are pursuit by mercenary reclamation teams. The Mojave Express is not responsible for any injury or loss of life you experience as a result of said reclamation efforts. Dude, fuck. We might be in trouble for just getting our package taken. Vance Gun Brochure. One of the highlights of the museum at the Vicky and Vance Casino is the authentic gun that Vance used in their cross-country crime spree. This gun is proudly on display at the center of the casino near the car they died in. And then ransom note. Mr. Peterson. <gasps> Jordan Peterson. If you want to see your wife alive again, bring the cash and small unmarked bills to the Bison Steve on Tuesday. Oh. Fuck. Can we, like, intervene in whatever the fuck that is? Interesting. I think we're due for a crash when going through our next loading door. We certainly are. Jet. Bobby pin, pre-war money, yoink. These are big yoinks, big yoinks. We like it, we like it. We love to, we support that. That's all collapse, that's all... That's back out to Prim. We don't need to go out there. This is all looted. I don't know why I didn't open this before. Ooh. Anything in there? It seems so. Okay. Neat. Seeing how this game executes like a really good first person experience RPG. Makes me really excited to play Cyberpunk 2077. I can really see how, uh, how well, like, a modern sort of cyberpunk aesthetic, but this type of gameplay, like, essentially, uh, can kind of work. I didn't like the first person at first, you know what I mean? Oh, this is the cabinet. 10 millimeter rounds. Is this a substantially better pistol? I don't think it is. I think it's worse than what I have. Okay, that's the... That's the good shit. That's where the loot was. Oh, more. Ooh, cigarettes. I guess I can't take them because they're on a table that wants to be looted. Good, cool. Holy shit. Won't take those outfits, can't afford them, can't take, well I like can't afford to take them, like I don't have the room. And I'm over encumbered, see what I mean? Don't have the room. Items. What do I have that I really don't need? Probably some of this dynamite, to be honest. We'll drop three dynamite. We'll drop two dynamite. Okay. We're at carry. We're at carry weight. We should be fine. Okay, I think we're 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 good to Oh, Nuka Cola. I couldn't resist chat. We'll drop these frag mines, fuck it. Oh what? They're, okay, apparently they're not that heavy, but they're worth a lot. But where are the others? No, wait, where, where are the others? Wait, but...
Oh. Well, that that's a raw deal. Thanks, game. Um, long fuse dynamite. I drop those. No, those neither. Th those aren't those aren't heavy enough. Is is just the normal? Is just the normal? I don't want to equip it. I just want to drop it. What? What? Why am I? Okay, I can now run. Yes, we're back to full capacity. We have to jump down a hole, and then we can go down and oh, get me through. We can crash. We do have to crash before we we are able to rescue Beagle. Sadly, we can kind of consider it like an extended loading screen. Okay, chat. When our game crashes, it's not. The game crashing necessarily. It's just we 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 have a extended loading screen. And it's not my PC's fault, by the way. My PC is like a monster in comparison to this game. It's like a lion up against a kitten. Um, performance spec like spec requirements are n in no way the problem here. It's just this game was coded in 32-bit, um, which is awful, and means that the game itself has bottlenecks that keep it from. Uh, like being able to handle certain amounts of uh, RAM being used. So once it ma once it passes four, then what I think is about to happen once I go through this door happens, which is a crash. Oh, it didn't crash. That's surprising. Are the textures like not fucked up anymore? Huh. I guess occasionally when loading through, the game's able to like. Sanity check, I think is the term for it. And, um... Fix stuff instead of crashing out the game. Huh. So it's like constantly cycling out, like, unneeded data that's being taken up by resources. It won't completely prevent the crashes, but it'll reduce them, it seems. Xan, you could put those in a container so they won't despawn after a while? Ah! That is handy advice, but not really going to take advantage of it. Oh, my nose. So itchy. I don't know why. It's like it knows when I'm streaming, and, it, and like my, the top of my lip, too, and the left side will do it. I almost think it's in my head, which I think all itches might be to an extent. Not all of them, but, like, you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, fuck. It's not pleasant. Okay. All right, Dippy the Beagle. Let's talk, brother. I don't suppose you came here to rescue me. I'd cross my fingers, but my hands are numb. You must be Deputy Beagle. Why, yes, I am. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm in a bit of a predicament here. I'd be most appreciative if you'd set me free. How do you end up being a hostage? I must say it's been the low point of my career in law enforcement. The powder gangers stole into town at night and murdered my sister and her husband, the sheriff, in bed while I was sleeping in the office. I watched them for a bit, waiting for the right moment to pounce and arrest a lot of them, taking careful notes as I watched. To my dismay, they found me while I waited in the shadows and brought me here. I hear you may have information on some cons that came through here with a guy in a checkered suit. Indeed I do, good sir. And I would be thrilled to share that information with you as soon as I am released from captivity. Alright. Damn, I can't... I can't speech him into telling me now. I'll set you free now. Oh, that's just marvelous. I think I'll be making my way outside now. The air is a little close in here. If you try to run away instead of fighting at my side, I'll kill you myself? Jesus, that's just an outright threat. I didn't cut you loose so you could run away. Stick with me. Now, sure, run away. You don't look like you'd be much help. Then I'll defer to your superior appraisal of character and prowess in contests of arms and see you outside. Bro's a coward. What was he, a Nepo baby? Look at this guy! Look at him stealthing through the hallway. Holy shit. This guy's a goober. Bro, Deputy Beagle, you're a fucking goober, man. 
I've killed all of them. You were literally doing. You're doing the most for no reason. This place is clear. Clean as a whistle. All right. Well, let's see if we get assailed with a crash when we step through this door. Yes, we will. There it goes. It's already crashed. All right. Alt F4. And launch again. Zan, you could have gotten XP to make him follow you. Oh, that's true. I didn't know if that would, like, be considered a rude thing, though, Larry Banks. Like, that kind of, like, a lot, like, threatening someone's life. Like, I will kill you if you don't come with me. Like, that seems like the kind of thing that the community might not like that or whatever. L what the fuck? I hope we still have my save. That's worrying. Oh. You guys know what that means. That's the entire playthrough fucking gone. I don't know what did it. I don't know what did it. Maybe not having the backup saves. That's probably what did it. Having backup saves could have stopped it, but I turned them off. So I thought it would fix the crashes. People recommended it. Yep, it's gonna crash every time I try to load our only save of the playthrough. Do you not have other saves? I turned off the other saves and deleted them at your request, chat. At your request. Instant crash. Well, guys, I will restart my playthrough. Um, not tonight, but in the future. Um, I will restart my playthrough. Unfortunately, the entire save is corrupted. Uh, for no reason. Which ding several dinguses suggested it. Earlier in stream. They've since left. They didn't stick around long. I guess they uh, just wanted to light the fuse and run off. Anyway, um, that basically broke my entire playthrough for the day. So that was like five hours, six hours of co of, of progress made. Fuck, man. This happens every time I try to stream a game. Something just destroys the entire cadence and flow, and just it's just like, do I even want to stream this game anymore? Like, why not just, like, I don't even want to stream it anymore. Because, like, it's just, every, every attempt I've made has been repeated failed runs towards, like, 5% of the game or something, and then some nonsense happens. Like, I've never had a full-on corrupted fucking save before. I definitely need to make sure to turn on um, uh, uh, auto-saves again, because those things are lifesavers for sure. Oh, that is a nightmare. All my night wasted. Oh, fuck, that hurts. That hurts deep down. Do I just skip all the dialogue when I do it tomorrow, guys? Or, or next time I play it, do you guys want me to just skip all the dialogue? Or do I just play through it again, like, from the get-go, listening to every line? Do I, or, or can I just skip the dialogue I've already heard? I'm not playing more tonight. Like, we're done for the night. Um, Damn. I mean, I guess we can consider that a trial run, I suppose. I'll, um, I'm will i going to see if I can get Balth on Discord and see if they can help me figure out what's causing the crashes. Um, not the dialogue of the entire game, just up until we get caught up, you know? Like, we got to get caught back up uh, fast because I, I, we made so much progress. That, that was insane. Um, fuck me, dude. Fuck me. Wow. Well, I had a feeling this night would end on a bad note, but it is what it is. Bethesda games, we keep on giving them billions of dollars a year to scam us and break our computers and brick our hardware on their fucking cheap garbage. But, you know, they just keep getting their billions and billions and billions and it just works. It just works. And Todd Howard's going to get another yacht or or a, a winter cabin up in the alps or a, a a vacation home in hawaii or in like costa rica um on like his own private island his his 25th private island 
uh, because we just keep shoveling him the money. We keep accepting Todd Howard's fucking shit being shit down our throats. All right, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm sorry Fallout New Vegas got absolutely fucked and we lost all of our save progress. Uh, we'll start from the entire beginning of the game and speed run back to where we were uh, next New Vegas stream, which will either be tomorrow or the day after the day after tomorrow. Um, we shall see. Maybe it'll be the day after tomorrow. Maybe, like, on my day off, I'll do, like, a little just gaming-only stream. Who knows? In the meantime, I'm going to see if I can get on Discord with Balth at some point and see if there's a way I can address these crashes because, like, fuck, man. Fuck this. The crashes were fine and completely manageable until they were like, oh, you're okay with just continuously dealing with the crashes? Say goodbye to your save. It's like, okay, well, that I can't deal with. I can't restart the entire game now, like one out of every hundred crashes. So anyway, um, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You guys have been so nice. You guys are very kind. Your, your support has been very helpful and very generous. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, have a good one. Bye-bye.